Welcome back to Ark Knights. Today's the day of the event. Welcome home, Doctor. Mike was on its side. I'll pick you up for your own sake. Okay. So, this is me logging in the day after to the, dev, the video that just went up today on Friday. It's Friday. The event came out. I'm going to play it a little bit and see what's going on. Doctor, let me touch your head. Inspiration can strike, you know. Why would you want to touch my head? Oh shit, my headphones are falling off my head. Great Sharagander. Sharagander. We walk beside her. The clouds, her feathers, the wing, the wind, her wings. English. Uh, she bestows upon us sunlight and sweet rains, flesh and furs. Benevolent Sharagander. We hold her love for her. Uh, hold her love for her. <laughs> the mountains of her bones, the rivers, her tail. We walk upon her back. We sleep soundly in her arms. That is creepy and weird. I don't know who Sharagander is. Merciful Sharagander. We sing praises to her. When we are afeard, it is she who soothes us. Soothes. When we are imperiled, it is she who saves us. Oh, by the way, I was told not to skip it by Finley. So, here we are. Sharagander blesses her faithful, blesses her mountain beasts, that we may live in peace apart from calamity and eternal serenity. Sharagander. Who the fuck is Yaragander? Sharag. Polaroche territory at the foot of Mount Carlan. Oh? Dogs. Faster! Don't forget what we're here to do! In the back, keep pace! I Halt! Gather up! Form up! <laughs> okay, same thing. Sir, reporting in. Second squad information, sir. Very good, then. That's third squad reported in. Sir, not yet, sir. They're dead. Sir, it's possible that third squad has run into trouble. Should we wait for them to catch up to us? No. I had a feeling something like this might happen. Whoever's here first has to be the first to strike. I. <laughs> I don't think I need to go over the plan again. This is an expedition. A right, proper Victorian battle. A battle for glory! For solving go Oh, wait. Wrong game. Stay alert. Do not underestimate the enemy. We will prevail. Failure is not an option. Yes, sir. Good. Keep those spirits up. You gonna say I again? Oh, no. <laughs> Second squad. March on. Our objective? The stock herd... Stock herds? Inn at the foot of the mountain. Why are they going to an inn? We must not let... These... We must not let these provincials drink us under the table. This time, it will be them who taste defeat. Yes, sir! Soldiers. Common Jarek, man. What are those Victorians up to this time? Testing their alcohol tolerance. Oh, that's a woman. It's not happening. Testing their alcohol tolerance, I think. It's been a whole lot of times. What? It's been a whole lot of times with R Riley's boys. I hear they're always drinking till they vomit. But Karagander, by Karagander. Victorians, if they got all this free time, then what are they even doing? The female voice wasn't happening. No, this one's no good. Dream mommies. What? <laughs> Doesn't sound half bad. What do you think, Yucatan? How do you like the Dramamis? Dramamis? Sounds good. Don't you have anything else to say? 
Every name I suggest you just say there and said sounds good. Really? But I really do think they all sounds good. Oh, okay. Oh shit! I just launched it at the cat. It's okay. I spooked. I spooked the cat. Sorry, I'm messing with this thing again. The little ring. I put it on my thumb and then I let it go and it shot off and it scared the cat. Sorry, Otto. I really do think all, all the names that you suggest sound good. Russ? Russ? Serious? <laughs> These names are going to be butchered. Nope. That... Nope. Can't trust you. What the fuck is happening? Nope. Can't trust you. I'll need to go over them again. I mean, we're talking about our first. What I'm trying to say is I'm definitely going to pick the best name. Dramamis. This is the one of the best. Tamiops. Sounds pretty good, too. Alright, we can also pick a nickname, like Nut. Rotatos! Pipe down already. I can hear you from, sh you from shouting from outside. Rotatos. Oh, that's the name again. And what's this about a nut? Picking out names for your kid? Good day, Matriarch. No, definitely not. Oh. Mind your own stupid business. Business. No more teasing. Garagander's statue is done. We'll have a ceremony in a couple days. And I'm afraid I'll be very busy with everything involved in that. You two are going to have to handle everything that might pop up in our territory. I can handle it. Just relax. My darling little sister is handling it. There's no way I can relax. <laughs> I'm not going to mess anything up this time. You won't get... You won't get to yell at me. Yucatan. Yucatan, do make sure your wife doesn't wear any gormless... Wear that gormless look on her face out in public. Aha. Uh -huh. Less echo, hopefully, too. It is echoing in here a little bit. Ha <laughs> ha. Whipped. <laughs> Laugh it up, I'm telling you, Rotados. <laughs> I've got my own plans this time. When it comes to fruition, that and what? Enkyodes is going to owe us brown tails a favor. Just you wait and see. Oh? Well, I guess I'll just have to wait and see. I'll put my faith in you for now. But here's a word of the wise. Here's a word to the wise. Try to keep a level head. Yaragonder statue, the Victorians, not to mention Enkyodes scheming. How the fuck do you say that? Okay. Oh, I didn't read it! Fuck. I'm afraid we're not exactly fitting for a peaceful time here. Unfortunate. BEAR! Outrageous. The Victorians have gone too far. Arctos. You need only say the word, my Saintus. Oh! It's the Bell Lady that I had the option to take earlier. What is she? A Snow Leopard? I'll gather my men and chase the louts out of Kyarig. Please calm down, Sir Ar Arctos. The Victorian soldiers are only here to congratulate us on completion of Kyarangander's statue. What kind of congratulating needs 2,000 men? It's a pretense. Yeah, that sounds a little suspicious. Like, they're, they're preparing something, almost. Almost. They set up a camp. At the foot of the Mount Carlin. Those faithless bastards. Surely it would anger Kyarangander. To allow blasphemers at the ceremony. My Saintus. Are we really going to let them do as they please on our land? You are not wrong. I am well aware that they have no reverence for Kyarangander in their hearts. Then we should. And she cuts him off. <laughs> That's precisely why we should not. Do you believe that our statue of Karangander was built on the only for the faithful to revere? I well, he's the big dum dum. Look upon the statue. Let's see this bitch. That's their god. <laughs> Three years ago, we accepted the proposal of the Silver Ash Clan, and it was decided that atop Lake Silburn Silburnhead's what the fuck am I supposed to say for that? Silber. <laughs> Atop Lake Silber, 
we would build a statue of Karangander. She would be solemn and stately. She would be merciful and magnanimous. Magnanimous. She has become that she's become that which lifts the spirits of the people of Keurig. She has become a symbol of Keurig to the outside world. As anyone should have predicted, there will be more visitors to Keurig in the future, and with them will come many unavailable challenges. You say that, but there is no but, Sir Artaz. The people I thought the dog should start barking. People of Kyarg's faith is Kyarangander is in Kyarangander is unshakable. That is incomprehensible to outsiders. Faithful, faithful or faithless? Faithless. The one who comes before the statue will find oneself bathed in her light. Bathed. But great saintess, that isn't what's happening here. If they were just ordinary tourists. I wouldn't be sounding the alarm, but those men are the Victorian army. It's not the same. Are they an army? Or are they just the normal's guard? Noble's guard? Or might they be Victoria herself? They've come to Keurig on a mission to congratulations. Of congratulations. I need to learn how to read again. I'm a little, a little dumb. We have no reason to refuse or rebuff them. They're clearly up to no good here. So just in case. What are you going to do, dude? Is he gonna go fight them and see what they did say? As it stands, I still not endorse some of certain NCO's overly risky decisions. Let's hit skip and see what it says. The statue of Karen Gonder nears completion as the mountain snows draw close. Leto's travels take her to Keurig, where at the train station she happens upon an invited Victorian Viscount. Yeah, that doesn't really explain anything that's happening. It's so, like the armies are approaching and they said attack but then they said that they won't let them drink them under the table so are they attacking or are they gonna fight with drinking competition I still not endorse some of Sir Ancio's overly risky decisions despite all the growth that they have brought to Keurig what has Ancio's been up to these past three years he's been making smaller moves on the mineral export issue could this Victorian business be another one of his disastrous schemes? I cannot say. You cannot say? I cannot say, sir! Arctos! I can't say his name. Whatever, sir. Encios is plotting behind our backs. It will all be in the manner that he most he sees most fit. I and the Vine Bear Court alike would not be familiar with his line of thought. Sometimes knowing too much is not a good thing. You mean to say, I'm just stating the facts, nothing more. The ceremony must go off without a hitch. For now, we'll make our preparations. Whatever we can do, as we can, as best as we can. I understand. You need not be so worried. Whatever may come, Kjorngander will protect her people. What a name. Bro, there's so much stuff that is just, holy crap, hitting skip is not get you even the gist of it. What's on your mind, Saintus? I was pondering about what Artaz said about Yarangonder's statue. Oh, the ceremony goes so smoothly. It will. She just knows. Yarangonder will protect her people, no? I still hope we won't need to bother her this time. You wish for her to simply watch? Kira must learn to face risks and challenges. A child can't spend its whole life in its mother's arms, Kiar. That much is true. Ah, yet another chat has turned rather morose. Morose. Speaking of the statue of Karagander, I have half a mind to give that Arctos a slap. Why? <laughs> he got that big statue's face out of some ancient records, correct? The one it's got right now? He did... <laughs> did he really have to say Kierangander's appearance is preserved in these books? You are not to deviate from them. Who says my 
Who says Kieranganer's face is so wide? Definitely deserves a slap or two. Is she Kieranganer? Sanctus? Enya? Why'd you turn so quiet? No, you're just teasing me again, Shirley. Could I... No, could Kieranganer actually have such a wide face? <laughs> Uh, unfortunate. Whoa. Who are you, Enciods? Oh, this is... Oh? He's also cat person. Is he this brother of that girl? In two days, the Saintists will, the Saintists will perform the early morning blessing in celebration of the completion of Karagondor's statue. Here's your invitation, my lord. I keep fucking yawning. It's so annoying. Victorian Viscount. Oh, it's... He was in the splash art. Ah, Sir Ancio... <laughs> that is how... That is how Kyrgyz folks address you, yes? You are far too kind. We had come specifically for this purpose, and I would not... To, to, to trouble you for a special invitation. Worry not. My boys and I will arrive on time. All to celebrate the completion of your, our statue of Kyrgyzander. Oh, blessed Karagander. This is going to be an annoying thing to say a lot. <laughs> uh, you seem to be have definitely... You have seemed to have adapted well to life in Karag. Karag scenery is a beauty. Her dish is unique and her people most lively. What's not to like? Not for nothing does her grace so often praise Karag's natural bounties. I dare say it's lived up, lived up to the reputation. Lived up. Her grace flatters us to have esteemed guests from far, from far pray. Jesus Christ, to have esteemed guests from afar praise us in such a way is an honor for Kerrig and the Silver Ash Clan both. No, to be modest, Sir Antiotes. Though we came here to congratulate you on the comp completion of the statue, I say that I've been thoroughly captivated by Kerrig's charms during my stay. I hope that her grace, magnanimous, magnanimous. As she is, will allow me to extend my pleasurable stay in Keurig after the ceremony. Sure, NCOs, surely you'll permit me to do some sightseeing, yes? But of course. <laughs> Considering that my lord is eager to gain a deeper understanding of Keurig, I see no reason to refuse. Though I would note that this is that in this season, Keurig's winds are bitterly cold, and many unseen dangers lurk atop the mountains. You and your guards will need to bundle up warmly. I would also request that you steer clear of certain dangerous areas during your uh, your tour, so as to avoid blizzards and frostbite. I, I need to stop. I need to stop playing. Oh, I can't. I can't. I already know I can't. Truly, a most considerate warning. Kerrig really is a bit cold. <laughs> Kerrig really is a bit too chilly. But don't you worry, Sir Antiodes. That's hardly a problem for us. Thick coat would do a trick. Of course, speaking personally, I prefer to relax in a warm cavern. Cavern? A cavern with a roaring fireplace to traipsing around a snowy wonderland atop some mountain with some fondue afterwards. Oh, that flavor. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm relieved to hear you say that, my lord. Relieved? Oh, heavens no, I wouldn't go that far. I'm afraid you can't feel too relieved, Sir Anciodes. You should keep your wits about you. Please elaborate. Oh, your relationship with her grace and with notwithstanding, I'm afraid that you are that there are many things that I'm not at ease to speak about. Our friend's so kind to those of lower station, with such affection for Keurig. But is this affection returned by the worthy? Patience certainly has its limits. And if our cooperation with Ke within Keurig continues along with a rough path, well, should her grace decide to her patience has reached an end. I'm sure we would both rather not let things come to that, Sir Anciodes. Is that a threat? <laughs> I understand your meeting, my lord. As for that cooperation, I'll give you my response within the next few days. I will not keep her grace waiting too long. Alright. I'm looking forward to de hearing some good news from you, then. You'll be the first to know. Having handed over the invitation, I have no further need to trouble you, my lord. 
I look forward to seeing you at the ceremony in two days. Uh, that Keurig fellow didn't even offer a hello as he passed. What a stuck-up prick. <laughs> it's just a show he's put on for me. A show? You m men of learning, spending your days playing your games. Harold, I can tell you... You've been in a bad mood these past few days. Is he giving you trouble? Perish the thought. Sure, the lad's got some skills, but nothing to lose sleep over. Alright, enough of that. No use trying to hide from what's to coming. What's to come is what I was gonna say. So, let's go do what has to be done. Good to hear that you know what you're doing. If that's all, I must hurry off first. <laughs> I'm counting on you to handle those fancy knobs, Harold. <laughs> He's drunk. <laughs> Wait just a moment there. Did you just... Did you let go drinking without me again? Just one moment. Set the drink aside. Did you finish the fondue I was only halfway done with? <laughs> this poor man can't get his fondue. Damn it! Keurig? Grosierte. Okay. Don't worry. I can do it. Unintelligible Keurig. Snore. Oh, bear! Whoa. Who's there? Who has the guts to ambush me? Oh. How long have I been asleep? Oh, my butt hurts. This ride's real bumpy. Just like my whole body's shaking apart. Bro. Mmm. That's much comfier. The girl sits upright, picking up the book she is using. She was using the past the time. Who past the time? They have a typo, guys. Which had rolled under the chair at some point and stuffing it into her bag. She was a big stretch, spotting something out of the carriage window. So this is... This is... Keurig? It's just snow. <laughs> and mountains. It's got a few more of those than Ursus. But other than that, what's the difference? Snow everywhere. Dry and cold. I don't see what's worth you always going on about. Attention passengers, the train is arriving at the terminal, the base of Mountain Mount Carlin, Keurig. All passengers, please prepare your luggage in a light in, in an orderly fashion. For those passengers continuing on to the city, transfer at platform two or take the bus. For those passengers continuing on to Lake Silver, Silver. Burr, 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 burr. Or to see the newly completed statue of Kerengonder, please transfer at Platform 3. Welcome to Kering. We wish you a pleasant journey. Woo! Here at last! I should have got a drink ready, but this is a lot of reading. Excuse me, pardon me, sorry about that. Holy fuck! And all of this... ...fit into two sentences. <laughs> and it's not even... Ugh, oh, okay. I see why they said that it's not good to just do this gift now. Because this is a lot of, like, information that's just missed because I was lazy, yeah. Excuse me, pardon me, sorry about that. Woo! Finally made it out. Wow, crazy. The station is way too crowded. Alright, let me see. Oh. Get off the train, turn left, leave through the ticketing gates, and then... Hey, what's the deal with this map? Whoa, what the hell? Oh. What are you, a burden beast? You're adorable. Oh, I heart Keurig. I'm special. Huh? A burden beast? Why is there a burden beast in the station? You look like a real tough one. Ho oh, ho, young lady. Could this be your first time in Keurig? Not bad. I'm not even gonna try. How'd you figure that one out? I mean, I foreigners. I pick them out with a glance. You could say that the burden beasts are our own cure specialty. One named by the great Santa's herself. They're called, uh, what was it again? Alright, they're called Bang Bang Burden Beast. Bang Bang Burden Beast? <laughs> 
That's right, that's what they're called. Look here, young lady, over here. If you want to take a burden beast for a ride, just press this button here and the pen opens. <laughs> All right, settle down, settle down. We've been taming these beasts for a long while now, each and every one of them handpicked, and they're smart to boot. Wherever you're heading, just put the fare on that pouch on the burden beast when you get there and you're solid. Sounds fun. Can I really ride this burden beast down the street? That's super cool. I'm in. I am, once again, not even going to try. <laughs> Mushina. What happens if someone just doesn't pay? I think you'll find, young lady, it's not quite easy to cut and run in Kyarg. Did you see the disclaimer over there? Let's take a look. In the case of any breach of contract by the customer, the company holds no responsibility for attacks by the supplied burden beast or any other bodily injury or loss or slash damage of property. Will the burden beast take the cash itself or something? Moo moo. Uh huh. Well, all right then. It's exactly how you handle these fair dodgers. Oh. You should handle these fair dodgers. I'll definitely give it a try if I get a chance later. That's great to hear, young lady. Well, I won't keep you any longer. Welcome to Kiru. Oh, wait a second, Mojina. Let's see what let's see what Google Translate has to say about that word. Pronounce Mojina. Moshinai? Okay, <laughs> Moshinai, apparently. Now the dogs are barking. If I cross over there, hmm, that should be right, right? Platform three, platform three, huh? My madre should be home now. Halt, gather up, form up. Yes, sir, I'm gonna see what's going on. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. The dogs were barking at my mother. She just got home. Why are the soldiers at the train station? I should have grabbed water while I was out there. Did something happen? Dot dot dot. Attention! I. No need to work. Last time I saw them buy some knickknacks at home to take home. Uh, maybe they just came for some sightseeing? <laughs> Though it looks like they're. What the fuck was that? Oh, look that thing over. It looks like their uniforms aren't very warm, you see. Young fellow over there is so full of notes running. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Damn it, wipe your nose already. Where are those coat I bought you? Why aren't you wearing them? Harold, please. Those coat you bought? They all got high heart snow stitch on them. What's the problem? I think they look great. I think they look great too. All right, you keep wearing yours then. Hey, wait, who's the kid? Was it Leto? Oh, that's cute. Me? Oh, don't mind me. You guys keep talking. I was just curious as to why there was such a big crowd blocking the way, so I had to look. I had a look see. When I heard you all were talking, I couldn't help but join in. I need to apologize. You are a lady of excellent taste. Excellent taste. You mean me? <laughs> you sure can call them what? You sure can call them like you see them. I was just looking at those coats myself. The I heart snow. It's a little kitschy. The fuck does that mean? Let's look up how Google likes that word. Pronounce kitschy. Kitschy? A kitchen knife, but they are really super warm. I gotta say, Harold, you're right. The lady really does have excellent taste. Tadushka. Say Tadushka. <laughs> you're not so just ordinary tourists, are you? What are you guys doing in Keurig? Tadushka? Ursine for grandfather, I believe? Uh, fair enough. I suppose you're not, you're about the same age as my no good daughter back home. As for what we're doing here, 
We're just here to, for sightseeing, same as you. I'm not here for sightseeing, though. Oh, right. Do you know how to get to Platform 3? Platform 3? Yeah, I'm supposed to transfer there to get to Lake Chilbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburbaburb
<laughs> Things are looking bad at the front of the mountain. We can't handle it on our own. On the front of the mountain? Where are we? It's real serious, man. You should head right over. Oh, mission start? Nope. Whoa, it's starting to move. <laughs> Mom, hurry. Whack! That's why I told you not to run around on the train. Are you hurt? No. Look, Mom, I'm a foreigner with a funny hat. Don't say things like that. <laughs> Don't point at people. The scientist has no patience for rude children. Now apologize. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry, sir. You have to forgive my boy. Oh, fuck. Why would a kid walk up to this guy? Foreigner with a funny hat! What are the... Is that a gun? Yeah, it's a fucking... Okay. Okay. Please excuse me. My seat is just up ahead. He has a mini gun on his back and the kid's just like, he has a hat. <laughs> oh. Oh, I thought I had to look around. That's funny. The train is evidently above capacity. Roughly half locals and half sightseers. Killer for a sightseeing train. Sacks in the corner of the back is, seems strange too. There's movement inside. Contraband livestock, perhaps? Livestock? Uh, no other more abnormalities. No strange strangers. No strange characters, even. Worth keeping an eye on. Intelligence mentions nothing other than a train ride to Lake Shilbar. Indeed, there are no apparent clues. I should find the opportunity to inspect the cabins. Boom. Boom, boom. For the past few moments, he's been feeling a kind of strange tremor in his seat back. Or perhaps some strange beast that kicks seat backs on Keurig's trains? It's a child. The strange creature is a child. As though dissatisfied with his indifference, the kicking intensifies. It's definitely a child. After a moment, the kid sitting behind him pokes his head out. Mr. Funny Hat, Mr. Funny Hat, are you some kind of train freak? I saw you two days ago, too. You saw me? Yep. Mister, did you fall in love with trains because you had never seen tracks or trains? <laughs> Mister, why could why'd you clear your throat? It's okay. I'm not gonna make fun of you. <laughs> this train is really amazing. I love it too. Mom told me that's all thanks to the amazing Saintus Saintus and Surish Shields and how Kiragander has blessed us all. Cause Kiragander is just the best. How about I lend you my model train? We can play trains. We'll drive a train together. Put your toys away. Go back to your seat and stop bothering strangers. I'm truly terribly sorry that he bothered you again. Rest assured, I'll teach him some manners. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't hit kids. This hat. Does it really look so strange? My lady. Why are y'all wearing, like, fedoras? There it is again! I see that's not a fedora, but... There are quite a few passengers today. It seems this new Karangander statue is very popular. Every time I get on the trains here, it reminds me of the arenas of the Kyrgyzmir's ma Major. Yow! Something bit my toe! This is a foul beast? <laughs> Runaway foul beast biting hard. Ow, ow, ow! Please have mercy, foul beast! Hey! This song is good, man. What the hell? You're going to just let it go? Sure, that's all right. I'm pretty sure pets aren't allowed on the train. Indeed, that's the rule. But not everything is inspected so closely. Uh, speak sh Fuck! Why does the green screen keep moving? Indeed, that's the rule. But not everyone, if everything is expected so closely. They do cut their fellow countrymen some slack every now and then. Relax. This kind of foul beast is usually kept in sacks. Should be no problem. Let us speak of uh, other things. Let us speak of other things. Come, young lady. My cabin is just ahead. Oh, it was full of the soldiers. Right. Whew. Ah. 
finally a seat. It was so crowded back there. I didn't expect tickets for this train to be so hard to come by. Thanks for the help, Dadushka. It was the least I could do, young lady. No need for a fancy title, just call me Rosalind. As the young lady wishes, Rosalind. It's a name that suits you well, a riveting sound to it. It is pretty great, isn't it? <laughs> I'm a Mamoshka. Mamoshka? Picked up. I don't know how to say that. It's all Russian. What do I call you? My name is Harold. Of course, you can also keep calling me Darushka if you please. You're very lucky. Had <laughs> you missed this train, you likely would not have made it to uh, Lake Silberner's Silber in time. For real? <laughs> Good thing I made it then. You're heading to Lake Silberner too, aren't you? What are you doing there? I believe I've already answered this question. Kerrig's landscapes are truly magnificent. Of course I must feast my eyes upon the sights she has to offer. You can't fool me. There's not a single guy in our whole gang, in your whole gang, who looks like a tourist. We don't look the part to you? Nope. You look more like you came looking for trouble. Huh, huh. Us? Perish the thought. I'm so enamored of Kyarig's scenery and culture. Culture? Even. <laughs> I'm even contemplating spending my retirement here. Yes, right, so long as there's no major issues. We shall remain nothing but tourists, naturally. And what if... How about you, Rosalind? You speak the Keurig tongue fairly well for a tourist. Is this your first time here? Somebody's changing the subject hard and fast. <laughs> oh, whatever. I didn't get this to this part, did I? Is he sweating? You could call me half Keurig. <coughs> Keurig. Sherig. Shrog. Even if I don't really feel like one at all. I grew up in Ursus with my Momoshka. Oh, so your mother is Ursine. Yep. She told me I was born in Kerrig. My papa is from here. I don't remember much about anything that happened when I was a kid. I guess you call this a vacation. Huh. I see. By the way, I've been meaning to ask since we met. What is that box you're holding, Rosalind? Oh, this... Forgive me if that intrudes on your privacy in any way. You need not answer. It's okay. It's not really a secret or anything. Just figuring out how to explain it. It's something that my muchka left for me. My... Please accept my condolences. Bro! <laughs> Don't dig into people's pasts. Come on. I'm sorry to raise such a painful topic, Rosalind. I'm truly sorry. Uh, what's so painful about this? I'm here to fulfill my muchka's wishes. Meet her daddy? I shouldn't have said it like that. <laughs> uh oh, here's the deer bitch. Madam Dragon Rusher, I. Everything is okay now. I've taken care of everything that needs taken care of. Burden Beast Herder, thank you so much, madam. If it wasn't for you, who knows what would have happened to me. Thank you, Gondor, I'm still alive. This is all that I can do. Sorry, it's not. A pretty sight. There wasn't any other way. Ma'am, you have blood all over you. Maybe you should clean up first? Later. Time is of the essence. Even though I am solved problem for now, I can't guarantee this will be the end of it. The most important thing is to find the ones we're looking for. But ma'am, we got news that they're already leaving the station. Asking the railway to stop the train would only cause a panic. Stop the train? Show me for that. Whew. What else can we do? Uh, look down. Wait. The train is about to pass right under us? Yes. Correct. Jumps. <laughs> Ma'am! Her figure has, uh, as she descends upon the train seems both lighter than snow and heavier than stone. Stone. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> My ankle. <laughs> right then. Where might they be? She looking for the... The aristocrat guy? What was his name? Harold? In my memories, I see vast fields of snow. I remember when I was little, I sat on a wooden bed. The fireplace crackled while a snowstorm blew outside. 
The sound of the wind whispered to my ears. There was a large hand stroking my head and there was someone putting me to bed. I drifted off to sleep in a warm, calming sensation. I used to think that was Ursus. But Mamoshka told me. Nyet! Rosalind! That wasn't Ursus. Why did she go by Letta then, if her name is Rosalind? That was Keurig Wind. That was Keurig Snow. That was where I was born. Why did she go by Letta if her name is Rosalind? So it wasn't until you entered secondary school that you learned you were born in Keurig? That's right, Mamoshka never told me before. Why do I keep going, Mamoshka? I thought she was kidding at first. I don't remember much of my childhood. All I can picture was snow everywhere. There's no, there's snow everywhere in Ursus too. How was I supposed to know? Hmm. Oh, well, you mentioned it. They are alike in that way. However, from what I remember, Ursus is colder than Keurig. Hmm. That's true. Ursus is colder. Have you been? <laughs> Many years ago. <laughs> I didn't have much of a chance to sightseed, though. What a shame. You got medals all over. Then I'll be your guide the next time you visit. We got the rest of Ursus. Deity. Deity Greiferberg is a sight in itself. Very well, then. Seems I have to get myself a couple of coats to keep me warm. But until I have the opportunity to visit Ursus and take you up on that offer, let me be your guide instead. I'll start by telling you about this train's destination, the newly built statue of Kieran Gonder. It was built atop the island in the middle of Lake Shilver. Very conspicuous. <laughs> You'll see it as soon as you step outside the station. Of course, for you, this statue is not the point of your trip. You came to Kieran for something more important than sightseeing. Yeah, sure did. I need to take a good look at Kieran Gonder's statue for my Momoshka, though. It's something she stressed before she left us. Then I'll head up the mountain next to the lake. So blah, 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 blah. I need to take the box to the peak. What's inside? No idea. Never told me. She just said I had to dump what's inside on the mountain. That she'd be satisfied if I did. Coming from your foreign land all by yourself, only to fill your mother's wishes. What a kind, faithful daughter. It was my very soul. That's really too much. <laughs> What are your plans after that? After I take this up the mountain, I'm not too sure. Might travel around a little. I might look for my papa. Our papa! Is your father still in Keurig? Perhaps I could offer my assistance in searching for him. For real? But I don't even know his name. I don't remember what he looks like. But Momochka told me that he is very handsome. Ah, a handsome fellow. Yeah, I guess he used to be a famous handsome guy. Like, pretty popular, too. Alright, show me my eyes are just like his. That soldier dude? Handsome man from Karag. Do you know anybody like that? Uh, I have a daughter of your age. He could only have done the deed while studying in Victoria. No, no, no. That'd be far too outrageous. Ursus is in those days. Could it be? Could it be what? Uh, I must give this some more thought. I really hope you'll be able to find him. You're hoping for a touch, touching father-daughter reunion? Ugh. Not exactly. All I want is to see what this bastard who's been gone for over a decade even looks like. Angry. Don't piss off a bear. Oh, it's gonna be that guy again! Welcome aboard the new Saintist Express. Our train has reached a cruising speed. You may pro you may appreciate the finest natural sights that Kirik has to offer through the windows on both sides of the train. By the way, I know I'm probably butchering that. Cherig. We have a variety of local Cherig del delicacies available for purchase. From all our favorite treats like yogurt snacks to the ever popular Burden Beast blind boxes. And even Carlin Trades limited edition mountain ice waters. Everything we have to offer is produced locally, handpicked by the Saintess her herself. Saintess. I can't finish that sentence. And guaranteed to be the finest quality. Please feel free to browse our selections. Excuse me, I have a question. And what can I get you today, good sir? I'm not buying anything. Those delicacies are not to your fancy? How a limited edition mountain ice water. 
This is the Tri Clan's official drinking water, and it's Saintus's personal favorite. We don't have many in stock today, a rare opportunity. It can be yours right now for just four francs. Holy Saintus, four francs? Francs? I could buy out a restaurant for that price. It's a little pricey, but just look at the packaging. This clean, pure sensation. It's a perfect fit for your splendid appearance. I'll pass. I'll take a blind box. Thank you. Thank you very much. How long until the next station? This train is a non-stop limited express. The next stop will be in the terminus, Lake Sub. Uh, we're about two hours from our destination. If you would like to stop somewhere during our journey to better take in the sights along the way, we also offer regular trains that stop at every station on the route. Okay, thank you. You are very welcome. Da, 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 da. Line box. Are these trinkets really so popular? Just a meaningless ornament. No matter how I look at it. Still, two hours to go. It's more than enough time. Next. Hmm. Run away, foul beast. It's the bird. Foul beast. Pecks fiercely. What? My hat! Fly everywhere! Attack all over! Hey, my foul beast! How do they get out? Where? I'll help you catch them. I'll help too. Mom, I want to catch foul beasts. Not good. Hey, mister. Where are you going? Da da da. Why don't you help? Catching foul beasts is so much fun. The kid did it. Da 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 da. I think mere foul beasts and a toddler can be so fierce together. Since Charag, 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 isn't to be underestimated. Yeah, me with my minigun. <laughs> well, this does give me a legitimate excuse to check the train cars. Good afternoon, sirs. Have you seen any runaway foul beasts? No? Thank you. Sorry for disturbing you. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Nothing strange in the car up ahead, either. Only the last few cabins left. Looks like this will be another futile advent journey. Adventure. Adventure journey. Oh? Excuse me, have you... Uh, if I find them, I'll make him pay for that decade. Look at this. Before I came here, I had Natalia and Anna. They're my friends, you see. I asked them to help me math all this out. Living expensive, education, medical, oh, and emotional absenteeism fee <laughs> that Natalia came up with. It's all here. Oh, there it is. Ah, doesn't matter how good looking he is. It's not like that ever fed me. Oh? My mouse died. <laughs> I'm like, why is nothing working? I forgot to charge it today. <laughs> Emotional absen absenteeism. Not bad. Very good. I approve. Hmm. I guess. Please come in. Have you seen any escaped foul beasts? Foul beasts? Oh, I saw one earlier. All right, of course. We did see one. Come, come, good sir. Let us head outside and discuss that foul beast in the greatest detail. Oh, what detail is there to... What the heck? Why are they acting so funny? Hmm, Victorians. Hope everything's okay. Oh my goodness, my throat is going away. Throat? My voice. <laughs> my throat hurts. Alright, kind sir. Shall we discuss the foul beast? I'm very curious what kind of foul beast required Trilby Asher coming to me in prison. In person. Prison? I did not expect to find you on this train, Lord Viscount. Oh, please. I can say the very same, minus the Viscount bit. Why is it that I've never noticed that the Trilby Ashers had such an interest in sightseeing? Or is it that your early retirement has finally been approved? Trilby Asher. Okay. Seems not. No need for the interrogation, my lord. I'm merely doing a routine investigation on certain rumors that I've heard. Now, I can't say I buy that. You and I both help lift the weight off her grace. We should 
have more trust in one another. What about you, my lord? What is your purpose here? And the young lady with you? She Arsene? She looks a little bit familiar. Truby Asher. I must say, if that was an attempt to make a move on the lady, it's rather behind the times. N no. <laughs> that is not my intention at all, but thank you for the reminder. As for me, I am, of course, sightseeing. Are you? Mind your words now. We shall have more trust in one another. We should have more trust. The Jaragonder statue. Jaragonder statue is in two days. Ceremony is in two days. I received an invitation and I thought I ought to do a little sightseeing before the unveiling. I bought two small saintist sculptures and that I am bringing with me one of the day. Pretty well made, if you ask me. Anyway, enough chit chat. I see no foul beasts here. You should get back to work, Trilby Asher. You too, my lord. I hope you haven't forgotten why we're here. Is Harold a bad guy? I don't want Harold to be a bad guy. He's funny. This last one, nothing out of the ordinary. Except Viscount Kragavon and the girl with him. That one traveling with the Viscount. Who is she exactly? It seems like I must look into this when I get back. First, I should finish checking the last cabinet. Pardon. Ah! Cool. Hmm. Please excuse me. That was cool splash art. Oh. No, that's impossible. The intel says she is training new recruits in the mountains. She can't be here. She shouldn't be. Whoa, that's cool. That's her sword. That's so cool. I don't know. I just like how this... Needs something. If you need something, out with it. Or is it just fun to open random doors? Hmm? It really is her. The Black Knight who works from the Silver Ashes. There are bloodstains on her hands. Who forced her hand? This is bad. But this also means that the intel's not wrong. There's trouble on this route. No. Before I consider that... Who are the intelligence officers in charge of watching Degenbrecher? There we are. For them to miss such an important piece of information, they can expect to see a court-martial. Intelligence officers, you say? Don't blame them. There aren't many who can keep up with me. Thank you for speaking up for them. It's the truth. Now, tell me what you're doing here. Surely you must have already come up with an excuse or two. <laughs> or it'll be Asher. Let's do a tenpole. That's why I did that, so I can get a tenpole out of this one. Alright, 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 alright. Okay. Right. Oh! Oh! The gold okay. lights. Two five stars. Two five stars? Oh, damn, okay. I am Ansel, okay. a medical oh, intern. Okay. Next. I'll be assisting Next. with surgery and don't internal skip, medicine. Be strong. I know. I know. I have to stay strong. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. I'm I'm cool. Cool. Oh, doesn't even have English voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, he's, not, he's not there yet. I have to say, I'm a little biased. I'm not a huge fan because I told him that one time I was trying to get another banner character. Um, but he's pretty cool. Okay. Um, he's a pretty cool guy. He'll be a, he's a I'm pretty glad to be cool working guy. with you. Okay. At least story-wise. Like... Hello, I'm Hayes. Hello. I like relaxing work environments, and an employer who knows better than to bother me with too I'm many questions. You're a little biased, yeah. So I was going to Hi, hi! Oh no, stop, I'm please. I'm Bruce. Bruce. My name is Plume, formerly of the Pontifical Cohors Lateran. Okay, Plume. I will be your sword and your wings as Listen, I defend you. This is actually fucking cracked. Um, this is? I'm Scavenger. Bruce? Leave the dirty oh my work God, to me. 
Just pay me like my other employers, and we'll be good. God, this is such a fun. I'm having so much fun. I don't know if you're having fun. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening. I don't know who's good or not. Mer, shiny and beautiful. An herbalist. Yeah. Doctor Calcet gave me this title. She said Mer symbolizes the ephemerality of life. And yeah. Pleased to meet you. Don't worry, the game will be louder than both of us. Not do if I was to forget my introduction. Yes. Who the fuck is this? I am Skinogi. Formerly a part of a small yet She's very pretty. Group she's, in she's not apparently considered. It is an honor good. to work under you. Um, at least according to other YouTubers I've watched. Um, I don't know. I've never pulled her. I think she's hot. So that's all I can tell you. Okay. Thanks. Four star. Oh, another gravel. Okay. Hmm? Fuck What's Fuck wrong? Gravel. Your face is beat red. Oh my god! I skipped Let's it when she talked last hello. time. Yeah, she kisses you when she uh, gets pulled. Anyway, okay. I'm Gravel. Yeah, a knight of Kashmir. It's a pleasure. Kashmir. <laughs> Look at go. It's all so okay. shiny whenever you look at it from this screen, though. Yeah. Hannah's first ten pull had six star, five star, five star. Wow. Yeah, it was like a three star, six star, five star, five star, and then four star, four star, and then three, 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 three. Like it was actually like lined up, except for the first one, obviously, because it was like a three star. Right. Wow. Good Lots eye. of free shit. At midnight. <laughs> That's the honey drink I'm talking about. It's got a sweet taste at first, but I didn't expect it to hit me so hard after. Ricardo and me. Okay. Thanks for subscribing? I should probably turn off that alert, huh? Let's see if it was YouTube or not. Again. It was! Why is this connected to my YouTube? Maybe I should turn that off. Alert box off. If you subscribe during my recording, I guess it tells you me. That's the honey drink I'm talking about. Got a sweet taste at first, but I didn't expect it to hit me so hard after. It wasn't really all that bad though. My friend said I was honey drunk, but in the end, I was as sober as I can be, and she was totally wasted. <laughs> I guess bears being addicted to honey is still true in this universe too. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hey, Dadushka. Hey, are you listening? Hmm. Oh, forgive me, Rosalind. What did you just say? She was totally blitzed on honey. <laughs> oh, right, right, of course, on honey. Ugh, come on. You have something on your mind, you should just deal with it. You're barely even here. How are we supposed to have a conversation? No, no, there is nothing more worthy of my attention than your story right now. Please, tell me more about honey drunkenness. If I recall correctly, they do offer specialty beverages made with honey on this train. Alright, that's enough. My eyes are pretty sharp. You've been acting weird since that guy in the hat showed up. Is he your friend? No, you don't look like friends. So you must be enemies? Not quite. Perhaps the two of us can just barely be described as colleagues. We don't work for the same department of the company, however. Okay, so he's a colleague you don't get along with. Bumping into you on vacation. I love the way you describe it. <laughs> right then, Rosalind. I'll admit... Oh. You can skip the text? Wait, can I rewind? Nope. Heh. <laughs> if I accidentally hit the, the, the mouse wheel, it will skip. So I shouldn't do that. I'll secure you a honey beverage. Its main ingredients is... A Cherig specialty, Highland honey. Each and every drop is Cheringander's blessing, pure and undulterated. Really? I'm pretty much desensitized to all the Cheringander marketing talk, though. Uh, without a doubt. But you did tell me your friend said you got honey drunk, so I'd like us to make a promise to one another. One bottle per day at most. Let's keep you from actually getting drunk on your trip. Our trip. Ours. Bom, bom, bom. Sorry. There's no need for things to be so tense between us, Madam Dagenbrecher. Her grace's heart lies with Carlin Trade. 
and she is also keenly interested in Cherig's continued development. It is my job to keep an eye on all aspects of the country. Trilby Asher. This is no different. Uh, there's no reason for you to be on alert. So your job description includes visiting train cabins. The changes this place have been through are quite shocking, are they not? From what I understand, they've deployed Victorian rolling stock on this route, extending from the foot of Mount Carlin to Lake Silberner River. Silberner's. Silberner's? I don't know. I'll figure it out eventually. I'll say it right at the end. And if I just said it right, I didn't. But this series of trains has gone through significant modifications since its initial development. As the first to sow the seeds in all this, her grace is struck with admiration for Carlin's, Carlin Trade's technological improvements in these short three years. If Gnosis, Gnosis, Gnosis hadn't done all this, then Enciods would have been in deep trouble after speaking up for him. You're going to discuss technology with me? You're talking to the wrong person, then. Better find Gnosis yourself. He you might be interested. Most curious, madam. I did not expect to find you here, much less under these circumstances. Who exactly is that necessitated your personal intervention? What kind of situation could be so urgent and precarious as that? Precarious as that? You haven't even the time to change your bloodstained gloves? Dot dot dot. I dealt with a small issue. That's all. This is not the right time for your curiosity, Trilby Asher, and I suggest you abandon it. I'm here for looking for someone, and I don't want to dirty another pair of gloves for the time being. I mean, no offense. And I don't mean to interfere with your work in any way. It's just, surely there must be someone important aboard. And if there is, if you wouldn't mind divulging some details to me, perhaps I could be of some assistance. After all, finding people is one of the tasks that we handle on a day-to-day -day basis. You seem to be mistaken. I beg your pardon? Enciods might be willing to turn a blind eye to you sticking your nose here. That's his choice, and none of my business. But I don't share his patience. Do you know what's so much nicer about Cherig than Kazimir's? Kazimir's, I think? place is cold, but consequently, there aren't many insects around. The flying ones buzz around you until you can't help but squash them dead. Now you'd best behave yourself or I will act in NCO's stead. Thank you for the advice. This is not advice, it's a warning. Enough chit chat. Are you through wasting my time? She's kind of evil, little sounding. <laughs> he doesn't sound like the good guy here. What luck. The man I'm looking for is eavesdropping on the other side of that door. Ah, Harold. Er Madam Degenbrecher. Before he could finish the sentence, a flash of cold, white light sweeps past his field of vision. Pressure the Trilby Asher managed to exert is suppressed within himself. The signature hat on his head is suddenly split into two down to its rim. Wait, right there? So she like cut it right there. The last revealing a hint of the fear the sky spy is feeling. Woman's hand rests upon her weapon. Apparently casually. Her gaze makes it clear to Trilby Asher that sorry one second. Right now, he is prey to a ferocious beast. It's funny that the big scary one is the fucking deer. <laughs> I don't want this train decommissioned. Don't make it me say it again. Out of the way. If you'd rather I make my own way, that would be fine too. Oh, are we in a fight? No peril is running for his life. <laughs> This has certainly got to be a joke. The Black Knight in the flesh and Casimir's? They would print print the image of bloody Black Knight on rare foil cards. Set the Trilby Asher aside, even the Black Knight is on the train. Oh, and me, a Victorian Viscount, personally named by the Black Knight as the one she's looking for? What a star-studded cast! Inconceivable. 
I need somebody to tell me right now this is all some kind of impromptu entertainment. That's what I need. A joke. Lisburn. I need you to check. I need you to check for me right now if Carlin Trade has made any strange moves. No, never mind. First, make sure our men is safe. Our men are safe. Our men? They're all fine in the barracks. We all went back. Oh, did she kill one of his guards? We all went back after we chauffeur chauffeured you to the station. Saw nothing strange whatsoever. But Jefferson and the lads are not yet back from the drinking contest. I'll have someone find them right now. What's the matter, Harold? The way you're talking, is something up? Everything is fine for now. For now. I hope I'm merely overthinking this. Anyway, confirm their status and have them report in immediately. Even if they've drunk themselves to death, pick them back up and get them to report in before they drop dead again. Understood. I'm on it. Oh, Jaragander. If you're really omnipresent and omniscient, as the people here say, now is the time for you to appear. Please don't abandon a faithful traveler. I can't be a good, proper guest. I may have no choice but to be an unwelcome guest. So that's the gist of it. The signal here is kind of wonky. I gave it a try, but I almost got almost no signal at all in the cabin. It's a little better than the corridor. Good thing Aurora set up this, set this up. Jesus Christ. Set this up for us ahead of time. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have a way to get in touch. What could happen to me? Relax, I'm fine. All right. I'll leave it to you to get in touch with the lead, la land ship. Land ship? Okay. Say hello to the others for me. I'll hang up now. Later. This should take care of it. Rosalind. Rosalind! What? <laughs> oh, I see, he spooked me. What are you doing? Are you running from somebody? Terribly sorry, but now is not the time to discuss this. Rosalind, why aren't, didn't you stay in the cabin? Uh, I wanted some fresh air. Got a problem with that? Oh, not at all. Fresh air isn't a fine thing. Uh, it's just... What happened? Shame. Seems we won't have much time for an explanation. Rosalind, you can go back to the cabin. No, you can't. The Trilby Asher has already seen you. Besides, he said she looked familiar. Trilby Asher? You mean your colleague with the weird hat? About the hat again. The funny man in the hat. Or no. Guy in the funny hat. That's what it was. Yeah, exactly. That's him. I ran into some small trouble, Rosalind. Let me say this now. It might... It was not my intent to bring you into this mess, however, I don't want some strange man to come propositioning you because he's failed to find me. Huh? Propositioning? I just ignore those weirdos. If they can't take a hit, I sock them right in the nose. I think it's supposed to be hint. They can't take a hint, maybe, but I don't know. Not a bad idea. If you ever find the chance, please do. But there are certain men who don't give up simply because they've been punched in the face by a young lady. So I'd, rather, I'd like to offer you an invitation to the dining car. To sample the honey beverages there and evade the stubborn flirts. Hmm, so you mean you want to drink some honey with me? Yes, let us proceed to imbibe the honey drink. <laughs> you want to run all the way there? Huh, yes, let us proceed to run all the way there. Oh, they've almost caught up to you, haven't they? I can hear their footsteps. You really aren't hiding none of it. I said as much. I would never lie to a lady. Alright. I've got no idea what kind of ruckus you guys are stirring up. But it sounds pretty fun. I'm in. Pleasure to have you on board. Then without a further ado. Now quick, we have to run. Shh. We're going to get de de degenerate. We're going to get the degenerate right now. <laughs> Watch out. Degenbrecher. A code name? You can just use that. I looked through the contract and the scope of my work seems unchanged. I am still a bodyguard. Just the employer's different. What the fuck? 
Yay! Oh? Spirited tourist. Look, you can see the mountain outside. Oh, er, oh my god! It's way too close. Is that what the Cherigs call Carlin? What? Is that what the Cherigs call Carlin? Oh, Mount Carlin. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's gorgeous. S say, can you close the window? Huh? The wind's too strong. I'm starting to have trouble even speaking. Okay, wimp. Come on, exaggerating much? It's not that bad. You can take it. Really? You seriously don't feel cold at all. Look at you. You barely have pants on. <laughs> hey, watch what you're saying, you hooligan. The tights I'm wearing are thick enough to keep me warm. Not like that lame getup you're wearing. <sighs> Fine. Whatever you say. <laughs> now get in here. I'm about to take a selfie. Huh? Hey, did you hear something just now? Ta! Ladies and gentlemen, good day, good day. Rightfully sorry for interrupting your leisurely sightseeing. Please head back to your seats for the moment and make way we... All right, cut it out with the fancy talk. We don't have time for that. Sorry, everyone. Out of the way. Rosalind, that's no way for a lady to speak. You just get punched in the stomach. Off, oh, Rosalind, not so rough. You're about to tear my sleeve off. What kind of sharing tradition is this? Should we run up the train like them, too? That can't be a tradition, can it? Sounds so stupid. I'm not doing it. Whatever. Let's take our selfie. Look at the camera. Three, two, boom. <laughs> there you go, Rusher. I have her now. She's really strong. Never been one for tag. I can't say I'm a fan either. Perhaps we can sit down for a nice conversation. You're the guilty ones trying to run. And you'd better keep running. Don't stop. Oh, by the way. The segment coming up in five minutes offers the best views. If you want to take a picture, better opportunity coming up. Enjoy your trip. Oh, she's not mean. She just, I don't know, chasing us for some reason. <laughs> and who were those people? <laughs> no clue. But you might just be right. Maybe Cherry has some kind of tradition of running laps up and down the train. Well, when in, when in Londinium, <laughs> as the saying goes, wrong babe you've been spacing out for a while my picture my picture what about it the lady just said we should wait another five minutes for better scenery might as well listen that's not what i meant look i got a picture of that lady's face she looks kind of familiar like i've seen her before somewhere that's not the point the important thing is her outfit is just so cool i'm going to treasure this picture Degenbrecher has a fangirl now. Let me show you all something. Hospitable villager. This is the famous Sherig fondue. Made with the finest local cheeses to give it, give it its full-bodied flavor. You won't find this taste anywhere outside of Sherig. Is it really that amazing? Come on, hurry up! Wait, Rosalind! <laughs> Pardon me. Ladies and gentlemen, the fondue's taste is fine indeed, but I recommend adding some pepper for a richer flavor. <laughs> he just had to give a little tip on how to make their fondue. Who was that? Again? So is this how train trips go in, Cherry? It's just like my friends told me. Very unique. Man, this is something else with pepper, though. I love it. They're all here. I caught them all. Thanks to all of you. I finally caught every last foul beast. I don't even know how to begin to show my appreciation. Make sure our, your sacks are tied tight, Sim, old man. I'll pretend this never happened, but only just this once. Remember, no pets are allowed on our trains. This can never happen again. Yes, of course, of course. Birds everywhere! Oh, youngin, what's the rush? Man, please don't run on the train. Tren. The train. Ah, No, the birds! You with the funny hat, watch it! Oh no, my foul beast! 
My Bowlby's gonna lose again! No, funny hat guy, why? Right? <laughs> what the hell is What? What the hell is it with these blind boxes? I'm not pulling the limited one at all. Just one more. Just one more try. Gotcha in the gotcha game. Hey, watch it, morons. You'll break my blind boxes. Ah, it's the limited one. He fell right on it, didn't he? Really tragic. This is the end of the line. The last car. Let's call it quits with the like, game of chase. Madam, you've won. The outcome is all but certain. Hope we can... You talk too much. I don't have time. Don't worry, Trilby Asher. I won't forget that you want to talk. I'll be back later with the one-on-one -on -one chat with you. Now. Out, or I'll get you out. Uh. Uh, um, hey, lady, I'm over here. <laughs> All this dust on the ground. So did you need me for something? It's not you that I'm looking for, huh? But there's no one else here. Ow! Don't move. Enough of the charade. What charade? You, you've got it all wrong. Hey, quiet down, will you? I'm trying to keep you out of sight. Don't pull my hair. <laughs> You're from Rhodes Island. Huh? I am. You know about Rhodes Island? Um, are you one of the friends of the doctor made on Rhodes Island last trip here? Rhodes Island's last trip here? A friend? No, I'm not. Enough. I don't have time to chat. Show yourself before my patient runs out. My patience runs out. Get it, young lady. Just let me out. Ha! I am touched by the fact that you would go to such lengths to help me, Rosalind. But wasn't that a little bit too cruel of you? Uh, my, my hair, my mustache. Finally. Oh! What, so you two know each other? <laughs> I wouldn't say we know each other. We merely met a few times. Madame Dejenbrecher. What a name, though. It's been a while. I must have rather embarrassed myself. Save the pleasantries. Pragavon, Leon, Leon from the mountain needs you, needs to see you urgently. What? Leonis? See me? Hold on, it's Leon's... Leonis? Leonis? I don't know. Once again, another butchered name. <laughs> Is anyone else who's looking for me? Not you? He asked me to come find you. That's all. Why is he so eager to see me? Now that you mention it, I seem to have forgotten something. Hmm. You forgot Lily is still waiting for you. Right, Lily! Who's L Lily? No way you forgot your mistress. Mistress! No, not a mistress. <laughs> Lord Viscount, you may well damage Victoria's image if you conduct yourself in this way. The Viscountess and your daughter were to learn about this. Whoa, what a scumbag. Hold on. Um, damn it, bloody Asher. It's not what you think. Lily is... Ladies and gentlemen, we will soon be arriving at our terminus. Lake Silver Station. Please be sure to take all your belongings with you and alight via the exits in the front and back of each car in an orderly fashion. Thank you for riding the Sanctus Express. We <laughs> you haven't wasted too much time. But you'd best climb the mountain and find Leonis as soon as you get off the train. He's waiting. Maybe we should split up here, Mamochka wouldn't like me traveling with you. No, <laughs> Lily, Lily's not human. You're even going to badmouth her like that? No, 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 <laughs> even I'm cracking up now, my chest hurts. Uh, Lily's a burden beast. A burden beast. I see. Did I not mention it before? Trilby Asher, would you stop playing dumb? Do you expect me to believe your spies have never reported on my actions in Cherig? Sorry, but the name of the burden beast you nursed back to health is not important enough for me to remember. Ah, so he's not a scumbag, and he's not in danger? I thought he was a life or death thing! What got us chasing all of that? Eh, Rosalind, this has to do with my reputation! How much more time do you want to waste? <laughs> Worth it! 
worth the seven attempts? I'll put a counter on screen now. Don't just stand there like an idiot. The train is entering the station. Run all you like. Shut up, Gravel. What, are you gonna kiss me again? No, that's what I thought. Everyone ready for me to read? Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at our terminus. Lake Silver <laughs> Station. Located in the center of a basin, clear and scenic Lake Silver <laughs> is one of the gems of Cherry. Legends say that is that is the first tear shed by Cherangander. In winter, one can walk on the frozen surface and see into the depths of the lake. The newly built statue of Cherangander stands on the island at the middle of the lake, watching over Cherig and her people. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived. So it's all a misunderstanding? No secrets, no assassinations, no VIP on the train, no nothing? <laughs> if there's any VIP that got me on this train, it was you. Viscount Harold Craigavon, the renowned burden beast veterinarian who has become a household name among the pastoralists. Pastoralists? What a name. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Madam Dedenbrecher. It was hard not to make certain inter inferences from the blood on your gloves. Blood? Should I explain? I guess I could tell you if you really want to know. I do. Please. <laughs> Lily's birthing wasn't easy. What the fuck? This is a cool scene. It was premature. She bled a lot and I had my hands full. What? Premature? She bled? That's no laughing matter. How is my girl? I performed first aid. She just... But she needs a professional follow-up. I don't know why I'm reading so slow today. Leonis says he trusts you the most, Craig Avon. It's up to you now. I'll be there in two shakes of a beast's tail. Dot dot dot. You look disappointed. Were you expecting something else? Fine enough by me. I can live up to those expe expectations. <laughs> There's no need for that. So, what's the misunderstanding? Ah, oh, well, Lake Silver is a nice place, isn't it? Particularly on a sunny, clear day like this, when even the sm air smells particularly fresh. Do Victorians always talk about the weather when they're trying to change the subject? I must have heard this about a thousand times by now. Forgive me. We learned from a young age to use Victorian's awful weather as a conversation starter. Kindly refrain from besmirching the good name of Victoria, my lord. <laughs> and Bileto? Yeah! Hey! Why are you guys still standing around chatting? Is our little misunderstanding all cleared up now? Of course, of course. Nothing would have uh, happened if not for the... If not for some alarmists among us. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Whatever. As long as it's all cleared up now. Running up and down a train was fun, but I've had enough of eating dust around a under a table. I went ahead and had a look. A tour guide gave up, up me two maps. <laughs> Lake Silver <laughs> is just down the street from here. Should we go now? Well, dreadfully sorry, Rosalind, but I'm afraid I won't be able to keep my promise. There's a lady who needs me at her side right now. Lily's a burden beast, right? Knock some Victorian noble code word. Perish the thought. <laughs> I ain't fine. Go see to your Lily. I can take care of myself from here. Rosalind, what's that look on your face? You're such a kind, thoughtful girl. <laughs> Come, let's exchange contact information. Better not be Snapchat. <laughs> you must find me. Should you ever need anything, I am ever at your service. And I'll keep an eye out on your, for your father, handsome Cherik fellow, you said. Thanks for that, Dadushka. Alright. You guys had to get back to your chat. I'm gonna get going. Such a lovely young lady. So strong and cheerful, even after losing her mother. A handsome Cherik fellow? 
Oh, you heard? Rosalind came to Cherig to find her long-lost father. It's a touching story. I hope her efforts bear fruit. Her father? Is that what she said? Well, now that our misunderstanding has been resolved... Madam Dejenbrecher? I'm a huge fan of your work. Could I perhaps beg for your auto- No time. I'm leaving. Take care of Lily. Wait, Madam Dejenbrecher! Ugh. He's gone. The Black Knight does not seem to take much pride in Glory's past. Small one- Wait, where's Trilby? Why isn't he here talking right now? Considering the matter in which she was exiled from Kazimir's. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you were still here. I didn't want to inadvertently offend the Black Knight. Glad to know you're self-aware. It was my mistake. I should have been more careful with my words. But do you really believe Madame Dagenbrecker's reasoning? Dot dot dot. The Black Knight has ever been Silver Ash's loyal lieutenant from the moment she left Casimir's and followed him to Cherry. She has been in the mountains lately, training a new, a new unit of troops for Carlin Trade. We also have reports of unusual goods moving in and out of Cherig, involving materials of a sensitive nature. Your point? All conjecture at this time. But you have your suspicions to... <laughs> suspicions too, don't you? That's why you kept the young Rosalind's contact. Looks like you're... Your time in Victoria has instilled in you a pathological mistrust of others. What a shame. That is my profession, after all. I'll report today's events to the Duke. Exactly as they happened. Wait! <laughs> Allow me to remind you once more, my lord. You have a duty you are obligated to carry out. Do not fail her grace. This is not a sightseeing trip. Then what is it? Let me know! I need to know. Whoa, that was weird. I mean, Carlin Trades proposal some thought, Mr. Taylor. I understand, Madam Horton. I was taking to see you, to see our mines and factories. Are you satisfied? Okay, I accidentally skipped it. I have no complaints about your company, Mr. Silver Ash. But you're a businessman too. I'm sure you understand. I would have few reasons to harbor any doubts. If it was. Carlin trade I was dealing with. But if I'm not to deal with the government of Cherig, well, if I am to deal with, okay. But if I'm to deal with the government of Cherig, which we know little about, I do feel that more due diligence is in order when it comes to the project of this size. Ah! Sorry. Of course. I saw Victorian soldiers on the street a few days ago. There's no conflict brewing between Cherig and Victoria, is there? I assure you that no harm will come to you and Cherig. Why do I not why do I not trust them? Take your time, Mr. Taylor. Cherig won't disappoint you. Excellent. I look forward to a fruitful partnership, Mr. Silverash. You'll continue to serve as Mr. Taylor's guide tomorrow, Matterhorn. Attend to any need he has within reason. Yes, sir. But are we really going to work with him? You don't think he'd be a good partner? It's not my place to judge. However, he has found various excuses to put off signing the contract while here in Jerig, and went back on his ward more than once on profit sharing. I fear, indeed, he is a shrewd merchant. Jerig has no choice but to work with a shrewd merchant at present, while these same shrewd merchants have their pick of options. Why do they keep saying shrewd? It's a weird word. My job is to make Cherig their only choice. Sir. Go and check on Dejenbrecker's recruits. Have them escort Tent Mr. Taylor. Yes, sir. Who's calling me now? Oh, and Yotes. Yes. Look at that. You're using a communicator. I thought you didn't like these long range methods. I just don't like to be contacted. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> There's something you should know, NCOs. I ran into a girl from Rhodes Island on the train to Lake Silberna. Silberna. Did you enter into a new partnership with them? Weird. 
Cherix no cheese, Burden Beast accessories, Saintist portraits, all Cherix specialties. Get them here. Burden Beast blind boxes, limited edition, while supplies last. It's so lively here. What are they selling? Portraits of the Saintist? That's not what Pramonix would look looks like. Pramonix looks like. Now, now, girly. The Saintist personally approved this portrait. It's a real deal. Right. Whatever you say. I'll have some snow cheese then. Is that the most popular treat? I might have had some while I was little. When I was little. You're a local? You could say that. Should have said so. Don't buy the snow cheese. Huh? That's for tourists. We don't buy that stuff. The shaved cheese is much cheaper and tastes pretty much the same. Wait. Are you just ripping off tourists then? Hey, don't put it like that. Look at the packaging on the snow cheese. See how nice it is? That's what the tourists want. Something nice and classy looking. All I'm doing is making a few fran francs off the packaging. It's not like I'm selling inferior stuff. The cheese itself is first rate. Guess you have a point. I'll have some shaved cheese then. Can I ask you something else too? Is there a man in Cherry that everyone agrees is the, is the handsomest? The handsomest man, huh? Well, I'm a Palaroche, but I'm not gonna lie. Serencios has got to be the handsomest fellow in Cherig. And Sios, wait, Silver Ash? Yeah, the Patriarch of Clan Silver Ash. No, no way. It can't be. How about another guy? Anybody else? Uh, well, uh, never mind. Just a random thought. Forgot I asked. Forget I asked. Forgot. How about something else? That mountain by the shore of Lake Chilbrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
formally invite Rosalind, I'm not even going to try again, to attend the unveiling ceremony for Yuragander's statue that takes place in two days' time. Then you'll know that it's Cherigander is that this Cherigander is special. I don't know what's up with me today. There's no other like her. You sure are constant and well, I guess I'll look forward to it. Wait, I haven't given you the invitation letter yet. Why are you in such a hurry anyway? Oh. Man in the funny hat. Serious. Younger sister of the Brown Tail Matriarch frequently visits other countries on behalf of Cherik in recent years. Did she arrange for Rosalind to be here? I should find a way to eavesdrop. Sure, you've been standing in front of my stall holding that newspaper of yours for five minutes. I need you to buy something or move out of the way. Oh, pardon me. One burden beast milk tea. Aula, please. Hmm. All right, I guess that takes care of that bitch Rotato's job. What the fuck? Makes no sense. Why do I have to keep an eye on some kid? Even talk to her, no less. Gotta say, though, the girl looks slightly familiar. Russ? Are you sure you don't need my help? Yucatan? Just leave it to me. I got this. Let's go. I want Rotatus to tell me what... Tell me what the deal is with that Rosalind girl. Why do they know who she is? <laughs> what? First try on the third level? I still can't get... I still can't auto-run the second level, but I can auto-run the third level. Whatever. Come, Rosalind. Let's learn how to pray and ch pray to Cherigander. Close your eyes. Put your hands together. Or, what the fuck? Put your hands before your chest and call out Cherigander's name silently in your heart. Good, Rosalind. Your mama and papa's sweetheart, Rosalind. Mama could never regret giving birth to you, no matter what people might say. May Charagander bless. Why? Who is Rosalind? Charagander looks even bigger up close. So that's what she looks like. Hmm. Pray to Charagander. What did Mama just teach me again? Nah, no, I can't remember. I mean, it all happened before I was three. I should just start praying. Close my eyes. What do I do with my hands again? Stretch your right palm out flat and place it before your chest. In Charagander's presence, we close our eyes that we close our eyes that do not truly see and bow our overly proud heads. Drive stray thoughts from your mind and recite Charagander's name in our hearts. Come, child, after me. Okay. Leto closes her eyes again. Her vision goes dark, but her senses seem to vastly expand in an instant. Behind her, the old devotee, devotee begins to praise Charagander's name in his raspy voice. Charagander, grant us springs that quench our thirst and fruit that sates our hunger. Charagander, grant us ice and snow that frees catastrophe. Kind and gentle Charagander, watch over us and Charag. The sensation of wind brushing past her cheeks seems to grow with the chanting, the snowy wind roaring in her ear. A sense of familiarity, rising from a place that Leto doesn't know, takes her down memory lane. Charagander. I'm not your follower, and I don't need your blessing. But if you really do protect your believers, please protect my Wanchka. I wouldn't have come if she didn't ask me to. Hmm, no, that's not good enough. What? Charagander! Charagander, please protect my mother! She's a devout follower of yours! She told me how great Charag was! I'll see how great it is for myself! <laughs> the old man's like, What's that about? Is that what Charag prayers are like? <laughs> Whew! Okay, that's good. What are you doing, girl? Praying, of course. I mean, it's better to pray aloud, isn't it? Make sure Charagander can hear it. Uh, Don't want to leave behind any regrets, you know? 
Oh, and thanks for teaching me. <laughs> well, I suppose Chair Gonder is hardly one to be picky about petty details. No need to thank me. Cherigonder sounds like a pretty nice lady. Just like you. Batyushka? What the fuck? What does that mean? Letter removes her hands from her chest and takes one last look at the imposing Cherigonder statue before turning around to descend the steps. The, devote, the old devotee sees her face clearly for the first time. The visage before her, his eyes, under the sunlight, the curves of her cheeks and the height of her nose, the shape of her lips. A sense of familiarity washes over the old man. Oh, it's you. You're... What? No, it's nothing. I've seen plenty of tourists in my time, but no one who's done what you did. Really? Did I do something weird? What's your name? Rosalind. It's Rosalind. Rosalind. How old are you, Rosalind? Me? Almost 20. Are you Cherig? You can tell? You look like... Yes, you really do. Well, you called it. I was born here, but I spent my whole life in Ursus. This is the first time I'm back. I guess only half of me is Cherig. You grew up in Ursus? Ursus. Ursus. That's good, too. Yes. Why have you come to Cherig, then? Alright, stick to what you're doing. No, actually, that's enough. Too much is suspicious. The girl? It's a long story. I'll tell you over dinner or something. Talk to you later. Alright, satisfied? For now. Are you sure the Trilby Asher didn't find anything else? No need to be paranoid, Gnosis. The Duke would not stay put if things had gotten to the point that you fear they have. Don't forget the troops stationed in the foothills. Kragavon <clears throat> is no pushover. Trilby Asher showing up on the train indicates that they've sensed something. I have dealings with the Trilby Ashers. On the surface, they are all the groveling servants of the nobles, armed with nothing but silvery tongues. But we can't ignore the fact that they grew up in the embers of an empire at war. Karma catching up to the two of you? Maybe. To Karma catching up to the two of you, maybe? We're talking about karma, then you won't get far yourself. Of course I won't. Why wouldn't we suffer payback for delivering a young girl to a Victorian spy? What? She'll distract the Trilby Asher. That's why we need the Victorians to believe that she's important. Do not forget that there will be many eyes on this place, with Cherigander's statue complete and the ceremony about to begin. We must all be careful. I don't need you to remind me. Wait, they... So she's not actually important in any way, but they are... Like, making it seem that way so that the Trilby Asher will follow her? Weird. Okay. I wonder why. Now I'm super curious, and I hope that I can finish the event in time, because I want to know now. Relax, I'll be careful. It's not a game we're playing here, after all. The brown tails couldn't pull out if we wanted to. Or rather, if I showed even the slightest hint that I wanted to out I wanted out today, I'm pretty sure I would suffer an unfortunate accident tomorrow. So no reason to engage in speculation about the impossible. This is for Jaren. We ugh, can only go forward, not back. But we can't hide this forever, Gnosis. It's too big with too many people involved. I need to... So I have a, a new... So I have a, a new fidget toy thing. Well, it's not new. I've had it for a while. But it's like a cube that folds constantly. I can't use it while recording, though, because the crackling sound from the cube clicking will make the mic fuck up. So I I have to use the, the ring again. Too many people involved. Even if the Trilby Asher didn't run into the girl today, he might have run into a certain boy another day. He will find out sooner or later. And she was just better to have a plan, or even the full authority of the Satan's. Satan's. Again, what is wrong with me? And she was better have a plan, or even the full authority of the Saintus. And all Cherig won't save his hide. What? And if Victoria finds Carlin Trade to be more important, 
then we truly have no card to play. It's good for all of us that the Saintists and Sentenciodes have taken up different positions. <sighs> I guess I'd better cancel my family dinner tomorrow. Since when are you a family woman? Isn't that what Cherry has always been about? Family, bloodlines. Old fashioned, I guess, but the Saintists and Enciodes are siblings, aren't they? I knew it. I knew it. I see, I see. Your mother gave birth to you and Cherrick, but she brought you to Ursus while you were still small. You came back all this way paying, praying for the statue of Cherrigander and preparing to climb the mountain to fulfill your mother's last wish? I see. That's the story, basically. Good girl, good girl. Smart, brave, and handsome, too. Oh, shucks. Now you're just flattering me. I'm not. You're a blessing from Cherigander and your to your, from Cherigander to your family. Well, her, I would say that. I guess you could say Momochka was blessed, but it has nothing to do with my papa, who might as well never have existed. <laughs> well, your father, uh, you don't know who he might be, do you? It's strange. Momochka said I look a lot like my papa, and he's supposed to be the handsomest man in Cherig. I thought finding him would be a piece of cake, but could it be? Maybe my dad was actually pretty ordinary. Beauty was all in the eye of the beholder? Uh, of course not. That's not the case at all. Whoa, why are you so excited all of a sudden? I figure that's the most reasonable explanation. It's hard to explain. Well, I'm in no hurry. We can talk about it later. Are you familiar with these parts? I can't say I know everything, but I do know a thing or two. So you're familiar then? Do you know the best route up the mountain? Route up the mountain? I hear it's a make-out point or something. Do I need to buy a ticket or? No need for tickets, other than Carlin, the seat of the Saintists, all the mountains, and rivers of Cherig belong to the children of Cherigander. Who would have asked such a question in the Cherig of the past? This was a much quieter place back then. No sightseeing spots, no attractions, few tourists. Faith was strong in the people who respected the mountains, rivers, and lakes. It has become like this because Clan Silverash wanted to open up to the outside, and the Saintists chose not to intervene. What's so bad about opening up? Well, that's not for an old man like me to judge. Are you climbing the mountain today? Hmm, it's getting a little late. I'm thinking about spending the night somewhere and climbing up first thing in the morning. Any good hotels around here? I have a few spare rooms. If it's a uh, roof over your head you're looking for. That is, if you're willing to stay in my humble abode. Of course! Let's go! Thank you so much, Momochka. Always said the people of Cherig were warm and kind. Now, now listen, girl. Don't be so quick to accept an offer like that. You need to be careful. What would you do if I had ulterior motives? Why are you angry when you're the one who offered? <laughs> Don't worry. I went through a lot on Narcissus. I'm no pushover. Don't be a fool. How would you protect yourself if your assailant was stronger than you? I'm not a fool. Alright, I know you're worried about me. Actually, I'm not sure why, <clears throat> Why? but I just felt, well, what? I can't put it into words, I just feel... I don't think you'd hurt me. That's sweet. Oh, okay, what's in? Did you find the mark? No. I scanned the island with binoculars, but I don't see anyone. We're dealing with the master of disguise. He won't slip up so easily. Then why tell me to look? <laughs> Just in case. The mission is to follow the girl, make sure no harm comes to her, and avoid detection. Shigata? I don't even know how to say that. Shigata? I don't know. Still have a lot to learn about counter reconnaissance. But if the girl has encountered the former head of the clan, Paroche, and their Katarata is there too, hmm. What's that? What's that? <laughs> I'll take a look. Imitates, <laughs> imitates bird and beast cry. Oh, what a wild bird, just a wild bird and beast. 
Never know when a trick might come in handy. Ugh, my back. <laughs> Oh, it's the Thetis. Look, Enya, look more carefully. The statue, it's not right, is it? Doesn't look like Terragonder at all. Is that so? I thought it was all right. It's not all right. The face needs to be a little thinner and the body. That will do, Char. It's up to the people of Cherig. The Terragonder standing here is the one that they want to worship. You know there's not much that can change on that front. <sighs> no more sighs. Did you hear the girl char? The one with the loud voice? Of course I did. Interesting one. Kind of makes sense, you know. Not even Terragonder can read minds, if you don't pray out loud. Char. People's minds are such complicated things. Who can tell what you're thinking if you don't put it into words? You're right. So, will you heed the plea of your humble handmaiden, Saintus? This statue? Nope. And yeah, not even if you beg. <laughs> hey, more reading. Full house, straight flush. You little sack of shite. <laughs> You've been hiding cards, haven't you? Why'd I need to hide cards to beat you? Just sit yourself down like a good boy. Royal flush. God damn it! How'd you pull that one off? Your sleeve, Jack. Huh? How? How'd you catch that? Jack, you cheating bastard. Hey, if you didn't catch me, that's your problem. <laughs> you want a problem? I'll shove your goddamn head so far up your arse that Just shuffled already. Alright, shuffling, shuffling. I sure got some rotten luck getting stuck with you sorry a lot for this shift. Doesn't matter who you're on shift with. Judge playing cards anyway, and there's only a handful of fellows out here who won't try to cheat tre cheat you. I'm sorry, I said treat you. Go on, have a count. Okay, just make sure it's still recording. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. <clears throat> At least there haven't been too much to do today. You could say that again. Back when the old man said he'd take a sightseeing, I didn't believe him for one second. Now that it's been a month. I'd say I believe him. It's been good eating and good drinking. <laughs> yeah, it certainly has. It feels like my appetite's gone back to when I was just enlisted. Ah! What the hell are you screaming out for, Charles? You scared the crap out of me. Bloody hell, I had another nightmare. I dreamt that I got chopped in half by Sarkos' sword and all. Ugh. Thought it'd be something worse. Day of four yesterday, I dreamt that I got blown up by some originium explosive with, whilst out scouting. Right now, I'd like to shove some explosives into your gob. Well, hurry up already then. A guy nuttier than a freaking vampire on the battlefield is going to have a few screws loose that went out off the forefront. Well, what can I do? I can't control if I had a nightmare or not. Just think positive. Last time you said you were being minced. This time you said you're being chopped in two. Maybe it's a good omen or something. <laughs> God damn it. You're right. All right, enough moping. Grab a drink and come play some cards. Perfect timing, oh, really. Now that you're up, come take my over my spot for a few rounds. Why is something the matter? Not really. There's a few farmers at the bottom of the mountain that need a hand with their work, so I'm going to go help them out. Farmers? That family that gives us milk all the time, the Turiels. Oh, I remember them. Their daughter's quite pretty. <laughs> I see how it is, Lisburn. I'm helping out. Don't read too much into it. The hell are you lot doing? Everyone within 100 meters can hear you yapping away. You sure have some skills, turning the barracks into your own gambling parlor. <laughs> Didn't you say that we were just going to go sightseeing from the start, though? We're just following orders here. I told you, you can go out help. You can go help out the locals a bit for some goodwill. Let me think. We're more than just a bunch of yobs. <laughs> Have you been out? Lisburn's going to help out now. He's keeping mum. He's keeping mum. But I can tell that he's thinking of settling down here. Oh? Don't listen to this nutter boss. I really am just going out to help. 
After all, we came here to... All right, that's enough out of you. Just get going already. Who died and made you chief worry work, huh? A young lad like yourself really does want to become a family man? I'd say you're still a good egg. Yes, sir. You sure got a stink about you, boss. Still working on your veterinary, veterinary medicine out there? Save it. Lily, the Leonis girl, she gave birth prematurely. Didn't get there in time. All I could do was help with the postpartum care. <sighs> and then I ran into this one. Very unlucky chap. Unlucky. Another Victorian. A Victorian? The whole month we've been out here, I've... I, the whole month we've been here, I bet I've seen, if not a thousand Victorian tourists, 800 at least. Alright, I get it. You love taking a stroll down the street. Deal those cards out already. I'll deal. Charles had a nightmare again, boss. Did he? Let me see. It's fine. No use troubling yourself over it. If you lot die, then the, who's going to fight for me? We're going to fight? Shut your mouth for a second and hold still. Alright. Ah! Hmm. At least it hasn't gotten worse. Does it still hurt as much as last time? It's been a lot better since we came to Cherig. Hmm. I spent a lot of money greasing palms just to get this opportunity. If you aren't feeling any healthier, doesn't it seem that like I waste all that dosh for nothing? <laughs> Besides, it's not like there's anything else to do here except get better. <laughs> You're right about that, sir. This arm's been no good for a while, but you've already helped me a lot. If I ever lose both my arms, well, at least I can still carry a weapon into battle with my teeth. What use a soldier with no arms? There's no need to show off. You lads just need to remember that you're here to... Allow me to remind you once more, my lord. You have a duty you are obligated to carry out. Do not fail her grace. This is not a sightseeing trip. What is, are they there for? That's what I'm curious about. <laughs> Boss, you finally gone senile? I'm not the same as you simpletons who care nothing for your health. When you've gone senile, I'm still going to be as fit as a fiddle. <laughs> hey, we might not even get to live that long. Uh, forget it. For the sake of my retirement, this old fogey's willing to go all in. What are you talking about? I don't think a hoity-toity lord like you throwing your money around is going to fit in well with the locals, honestly. But nobody's going to turn down a sumptuous banquet. You go on and play your cards. Sure, you're not just looking for an excuse to drop a crappy hand? Let me see. Four jacks. Not great, not terrible. <laughs> oh? Okay, it's Ar Arctos. We haven't seen him in a while. Ha! Now that hits the spot. Ensuids really did send over special... Wait, send... That's would send it over specially. Said it would be given out at the bonfire banquet the night before the ceremony. That, uh, what was it called again? Carlin Manor's Snow Realm Spring, sir. They've been talking about it on television every day. Enough times that I've memorized it. But <laughs> it's all about, it's all just claptrap for the masses. I will say that this drink is exquisite. Very robust. I dare say it's one of the good things about NCO has done. However, it hardly holds a candle to your very own aged Harleroche Akavi. Okay. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Should we keep drinking this stuff, sir? Counting what we got from the brown tails, there's still three other drinks to try. Of course we'll keep drinking it. If we don't try for ourselves, then how will we know which is the best? Since the Saintist has bestowed the privilege of organizing the banquet on Clan Parleroche, Parleroche, this is a. Okay, I don't. I'm sorry, I keep like burping and hiccuping weird. This is, of course, one of my duties. Drinking is our top priority. I must pick Cherig's best spirits for this banquet. I cannot let the Saintist down. Alright, go get the rest of the booze up here for a taste test. Yes, sir! Guards, with me! Let's carry up those drinks. Uh, 
General, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, although the Patriarch did say that this is all in preparation of the ceremony just now, isn't this way too much booze? The boys are totally worn out. You're thinking too much. Completing Cherigander's statue is more important than any amount of booze. Ask the men to bear with it for a little while longer. Well, when everything's settled, I'll treat you all to a fine meal. Alright then. Palaroches. Palaroches. Could stand to be a bit more attentive. I didn't think infiltrating them would be this easy. Their former patriarchs. Oh, wait. Already brought Lurz Lind over. Next, I need to check what exactly Clan Paul Roche is up to, has up its sleeve. Moreover, all this booze based off the Arctaz attitude is it really all for the banquet? Yeah, another trail to follow. Weird. What's with the lollygagging? Come over and help out already. Yes, sir! But if the Paul Roches truly are keeping some terrible secret, Rosalind must surely be involved as well. Finding her has become a priority. Is this Asher? Is that Shroby Asher? We have arrived. Is this your house? These rooms are pretty big. Are you one of the low-key rich guys? You don't look it. Hardly. This is merely some family property. <laughs> look here, young lady. This house is built right into the mountain. When you begin to climb tomorrow, you can use a shortcut behind it. Got it. Thanks a lot, Batyushka. What does that one mean? I'm gonna look that up. Batyushka, meaning father. Oh, like a priest. Yeah. Well, duh. That's what he is. Oh. Okay. Weird. Uh, I should apologize to you first. Huh? But why, though? I invited you here out of my own selfish desire. But sure, Gondor, I should not have hidden this from you. Why are you all serious all of a sudden? I can handle it. Just lay it on me. Oh, child. There is someone I would like you to meet. He... Master? There's a real big guy yelling for you over there, Batyushka. He your son? He's certainly no son of mine. Give me a moment, young lady. Just tell me already! Ah! He keeps, like, cutting out the part where they're gonna say who she is. What are you doing back, sir? Am I not allowed back? That's not what I mean. It's just... Ugh. It's been a great time for you not to be here. It's not, it's not a great time for you to be here. Great time or not, you're in no place to speak of such things. How is Arctaz? He... Sir Arctaz, he... Out with it already. Speak clearly. Yes, sir. Sir Arctaz is currently making preparations for the bonfire banquet. Don't just give me the good news. What else? He's personally checking all the drinks for tomorrow. Right now he's sampling from those from other regions. Rotten boy. He said he would give up drinking last month. And now this? Ridiculous. If he keeps flip-flopping, how is anyone supposed to trust a word out of his mouth? The patriarch is doing this all for the sake of politics. Fully dedicated to the Saintess. Ugh. Sounds like excuses to me. Uh, <laughs> by the way, who's the girl? Oh, how rude, Gulo. The young lady is Rosalind, my guest. Welcome, Madam Rosalind. Master, who is Madam Rosalind really? Might just be me, but she looks a bit like Sir Ark. Shh! I'm not certain of anything yet. Don't ask too many questions just now. Gulo, bring the young lady inside first. And then. Whatever the Oaf Arctaz is, wherever the Oaf Arctaz is, take her to him. And don't forget to tell your minions to prepare a room and meal for her. Treat her well, or else. Yes, sir. Who is this old man? Order you out a soldier. Elder Devotee. It doesn't even tell you. Sorry to keep you waiting. No biggie. You guys finished chatting? What was it you were going to tell me before that big guy came over? Someone you wanted me to meet, right? The man I wish you to meet is inside the house. Follow this one inside. First, oh, your meeting with this man will make everything clear. All right. What about you, Batyushka? Not coming with? We will meet again soon, child. Very soon. Please come with me, Madam Rosalind. All right. Hey, Breton, your name is Gulo, right? What were you chatting with the old man about? 
Dot dot dot. <laughs> something you can't tell me? Yeah. Come on, Breton, say something. Making an X with his fingers. You really can't say? Yet another X followed with the constant barrage of X's. Ugh, fine, I'll stop bothering you about it. Anyway, as soon as I meet this guy, I'll know, right? I'm also real curious as to why you two keep staring at my face. What is it? Because I look like someone, or does someone look like me? Nah, it can't be. The way the old man talked about the guy he wants me to meet, it's like... That, it's not, well, no. Alright, calm down. A guy like you couldn't lie your way out of a fin bowl. <laughs> well, I'm not lying. You guys were stealing some real strange glances earlier. You're up to something funny. You're up to some funny business. I'm gonna come down with my fists. Aren't we going inside? Come on already. Ah, uh, Madame Rosalind. I knew it! Sir Arctas, Master has brought us a guest. Sir? He's drunk. <laughs> this is a fine drink. Incredibly fine. Oh, well, finish, finish this glass with me. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. This is supposed to be the guy the old man wanted me to meet? Uh, bearded drunk? Eh? What's this girl babbling about? I am Arctaz, Patriarch of the Palarosh Clan. How could I possibly get drunk on a sip of wine? Ha! <laughs> All the drunks say stuff like that. And here I thought, nah, couldn't be. My papa would definitely be way cooler. Your father's guest. <laughs> so I won't argue with you. Still. Come a bit closer, girl. Let me have a pro proper look. But what the hell are you trying to pull? I feel like your face is sort of familiar. You're... Really? Ah! <laughs> the old man steps inside, disturbing a thick layer of dust. The door barely hangs on its hinges and the floor creaks with every step. Under his orders, the room is not welcome to single guests in a very, very long time. With no residents, and no custodians, this forgotten room has fallen apart with age. Where did I put it? I think it was... Ah, good, here it is. The old man fiddles with the latch of the cabinet in the corner, removing something within it, from within. It's a plain, unadorned rock. Every edge painstakingly smooth, polished smooth, until it was perfectly round. Upon the rock is carved a blessing of Cherangander. The old man grasps the rock in the palm of his hand. Thank goodness. I kept it even as I never expected this day to come. Rosalind has grown up well, Tatiana. The old man remembers that day has also was also a winter's day. It was through this very window that he had watched that sad, silent parting. He had seen that young, foreign, faultless woman with her anger and disappointment that could slice snow a flame leave. He had seen that young, confused child carried in her mother's arms, unable to understand the reason behind her mother's furious face. He had watched them for what felt like centuries. Watched them until their backs faded into the bitter, white winds. So many years, there was so much time passed. I had planned to give this to Rosalind, but I never expected. Mark Taz did not want to see you two bear the blame. So I locked this room and told him that he just must not speak in your stead. And then it was I, for the sake of the clan Paul Roche, who exiled you and yours. If there is anyone to blame, Tatiana, then blame me. Now, the Paul Roche clan is in Arctaz's hand. Cherik, too, is not as she once was. I pledged to live the rest of my days a simple devotee, so that as long as I lived, I would keep the road ahead clear for Charagander. If not for this, if only it had been like this. I must be truly old now, daydreaming like that. By Charagander. By Charagander. Oh. Oh? Battle time? Oh, battle time! Fighting on her talent? That's crazy. Okay. Sir, it's me. Come in. Oh, courier? What is it? 
Viscount Harold tasked me to the, with delivering this letter to you. The Viscount? It seems like he really was quite aware of, him, of you shadowing him to the, his barracks on my orders. The blame is mine for getting found out. Will this affect anything, sir? It will not. You may continue. How did he find you? Yes, sir. That afternoon... This is Courier, right? It is currently 5 in the afternoon. Now recording today's mission. Things today are not quite... Not much different from past recordings. The infected barracks soldiers regularly perform drills in the mountains nearby. Well, I say drills, but it's mostly them trying to stave off boredom. The uninfected soldiers, on the other hand, have more freedom of movement. Thanks to this, they get up to all sorts of things. It's a bit of a pain to scratch that. Based on previous investigations, most of them simply drink and get rowdy at the tavern at the foot of the mountain. There are still four people keeping watch at the camp, three are playing cards, while one is sleeping. After the one who was sleeping woke up, one of the other left the one of the other three left seemed to be quite happy as he was walking away. It was to visit the Turials, I'd say he'd taken fancy to their daughter. These Victorians have been here for nearly a month. Even though I volunteered myself to scout them in the first place, the more I watch them, the more I wonder if they, there is even a, any point in monitoring them. They really do look like they're just here for sightseeing. Ah, uh, right. It looked like Viscount Harold had returned to the camp and started playing cards with the soldiers, but he is now nowhere to be seen. You know, a kind-hearted old man like me would call it a pity that you're out here alone on a mountain, Mr. Wise. Weiss? I don't know his name. Which is why I brought along a drink for you. Huh? <laughs> what a cocky bastard. No need to worry, old chap. Watching us every day must be the right chore. I get it, though. After all, there's a bunch of foreign troops stationed here. I'd be worried, too. And so your Sir Enciodes can't help but have a little disdain for our Victorians. For us Victorians. Go on, take a sip already. He'll warm you up. Sorry, I'm not great with alcohol. That's so. What a pity. I didn't have much taste for booze, either. When I was younger, I felt like I could do just about anything sober. But, but now I finally understand why drink enchants people so. Please tell me, Lord Viscount. What exactly will you do now that you've been... Now that you found me. I should probably put my headphones back on. I was simply hoping you could assist me in a small matter, Mr. Wise. Wise? Wise? Let's see. I have no idea. All right, I'll do that. Oh wait, right, log. Ah! Thank you for whoever told me how to do that. I don't remember who told me that you can go back. I'm awful with names, obviously, well, if you're watching this. Be sport and pass this letter along to NCOs if you would. All right, I'll do that. Eh, not gonna ask why. You've already found me out. I couldn't quite hide myself from your keen eyes. And pointing it out to me is so bluntly speaks volumes for your, about your attitude on the matter. I'll inform my master about that alongside this letter. Forgive me, sir. If only I had trained my scouting a bit more. There is not for to forgive. No matter what they say, in the end they are still Victorian soldiers. There is an objective gap between our capabilities and theirs. It is enough for you that you perform your work at your own pace. Understood. Moreover, it is as you said, that he wished to use you to convey this to me, is telling about his attitude. You have observed their barracks for nearly a month. Tell me what you were thinking of them. What are you thinking of them? Yes, sir. For the Victorian army, even set foot inside Turicum. Turicum? I don't know. We have already prepared extensively just in case. But we never actually used any of our contingencies. Contingencies, even. They rushed in as if... Tomorrow, they would occupy all of Charing, but as we brace for impact, we ended up in this situation. They mostly stay at the foot of the mountain with minimal activity. That Viscount, he deliberately set up a count 
uh, camp far away from any major town or city, so minimize disturbances to the locals. Their barracks are split up into camps for the infected and uninfected. They even put up a notice to inform visitors. According to some intelligence I dug up, he has even ordered his men to help the locals with their daily tasks. How should I put this? He truly respects his men, and he also respects us Cherics. And so, I think he's worthy of our respect too. Otherwise, you wouldn't have asked Ma Matterhorn to pass them medicine and supplies. Voice V stopped. I looked it up and it said, like, Vaz is how you say it. But the dude that was pronouncing it was, like, sounded drunk, so. <laughs> it's report complete, but NCO does not respond. The rhythmic sound of NCO's index finger slowly tapping on the armrest of his chair. That's funny. <laughs> I was doing this. The armrest of his chair clearly echoes throughout the room, like water slowly but firmly dripping from the caves. Eaves. Caves. This letter, what do you make of it? Ultimately, they've infringed on our borders in the name of Victoria, and now they have used me as a means to pass you this letter. I believe this was intended as both a wrap across the knuckles and a warning. Could it be, after all this, they can't actually contain themselves? Dot dot dot. You've always been fond of taking the negative tack. Apologies, sir. No, this is one of your strengths. You are correct, he deliberately sought you out so as to reveal his strength. But at the same time, it's unlikely that he would not know that you are my attendant. A man of his position could approach me directly and inform me of the contents of this letter. But he used you to pass it to me instead. Do you feel like this is etiquette befitting of a noble? And it's a very humble gesture. He is a strange man. He represents the will of Victorian Duke. Of a Victorian Duke, but that does not mean that every chess piece is a willing puppet. Sir, what exactly is the letter regarding? NCOs does not reply, merely placing the piece of paper inside the envelope within the envelope atop the table and sliding it towards him. It's an invitation? An invitation for me, alongside our Sanctus, to take part in a dinner party he's arranged. You and Lady Enya? Surely he doesn't... No, it couldn't be. If he really did sense something amiss, he wouldn't go about it in such a friendly manner. Find Matterhorn, and ask him to take one of the finest bottles from our distillery storehouse. Ah, on second thought... Vice. Vice. I don't know. Weas! No need to go to the distillery. Come with me to Silver Ash Wine Cellar. I'll fetch the drink personally. I mean, the old manor cellar? There may be wine there, but you only need to do as I ask. He had already revealed his sincerity to us, so it's my turn to do the same. <laughs> Politics. What in Cheragander's name is going on? Are they drinking together? I'm telling you, we Ursus can drink way more than this any day. Come visit sometime, he'll be my treat. He's clueless. <laughs> Very well, it's a deal. Drink, come, drink more. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Fuck. Glug, 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 glug. Now that's some fine wine. No, 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 it's not wine, it's honey. Man, Sherrick's own local Highland honey. <laughs> this flavor sure is something else. It's your lucky day, because I brought a few bottles of my own on the train. Ah, honey. Very so <laughs> sobering. This flavor is great. Stupendous. I Arctos. So to do to create so. Come down it. Huh? Eh, hey, girl. Why'd you turn all wrinkly? Buddy, you got it, wrong guy. I'm over here. Let go, useless son of mine. Let go, I say. Hey, kid. How come you're so, so strong all of a sudden? Don't tell me you don't like my drinks. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> well, that's no good. Wait here, I'll go get the best, bestest spirits. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> this dude is wasted. Hey, buddy. I already told you, you got the wrong guy. You, you two. Gulo! Gulo! I'm here, master. What is the meaning of this? Sir, I had... Sir, drank a bit too much, and... Once he saw Madame Rosalind, he invited her to drink with him. I wasn't able to stop them. Arctos, you besotted oaf! When he looked at Rosalind, did he... Did he really not come to any realizations? 
Not exactly. Well, what then? Spit it out already! When he saw Rosalind, Sir said that she looked a bit familiar, but I think he might have been too drunk. We waited for a good while, and he didn't say another word about it. Not a peep. And then? And then Madame Rosalind thought of something to lighten the mood. She got out some honey drinks she brought with her and gave some to Sir to try, and then, well, here we are. How did Arctaz get this far without learning how to handle honey drunkenness? It's his nature, I'm afraid. I don't think he could handle it, even if he tried. To be honest, he might have inherited it from you, Master. Glare. <laughs> uh, what should we do, then? What should we do? You're asking me what we should do? Wait until Arctaz is sobered up. Once he's a clear head, even he cannot deny the things that us two have noticed. When I see Rosalind, I see Arctaz when he was her age. I remember. He didn't even have his beard back then. Ha! <laughs> he was just afraid of not looking reliable enough to ploy. If he had really been reliable back then, it would never have come to this. But Yushka, you're finally here! Who wasn't reliable? What back then? What are you guys talking about? Ah, uh, nothing. Just some reminiscing. Hm. <laughs> Another secret you're keeping. All right then, keep your secrets. Here, you Chef, this is for you. I saved you one last bottle of honey. Let's drink. Very well. That's cute. Doesn't sound like this. Doesn't sound like there'll be any trouble from then. It looks like family reunion or something to me. I cannot rule out the possibility of them exchanging information via code words. We still need to watch them carefully. You, why are you loping around over there? Ah, master, a new delivery of drink has just arrived, and I need men to help me bring it all in. You may go, young Golo. Yes, master. Uh, I'll go on ahead then, first, first then. Yes, just go already. I'll make sure that these two don't end up <laughs> in any trouble. <laughs> I brought more drink! Oh. Wait, this much? <laughs> Did you see the whole entire cellar or something, my man? <laughs> the people of Cherig are never stingy when treating their guests. After gifting me your honey, it's only natural that I shower something of mine. I wouldn't want a girl like you thinking that I wasn't generous. Try this one for size. Since you have such fine taste, I've grabbed the rarest drink from my collection. I wouldn't bring it out for the banquet tomorrow. This is cute. <laughs> He's so disappointed. <laughs> 96%. Snow Realm Spring? The year's on the label, too. Oh, this looks familiar. I think I've seen this brand in the doctor's office. Ah, whatever. Time to drink up! Gulp, 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 gulp. <laughs> this stuff is great. It's got a tingle, but it sure goes down easy. Refreshing, yet not pungent. Yep, very fine. You sound just like one of those fancy som sommeliers, what the fuck? At the time, it was awful hard to get this drink. I had to grease a few palms and hide them behind my father's back to get my hands on this batch. <laughs> Why well, I had to keep it a secret. What, did your dad not let you drink or something? No, nothing of the sort. Us men of Cherig have been drinking since we were in diapers. Unlike those Victorians who fall over after a single drop. <laughs> uh, but this. Back then, it was considered taboo, especially for us Palerocious. But those times are long gone. Things have changed. Fuck. What use is talking about it now? Come, have a sip. Whoa. This bottle might be even bigger than. <laughs> oh, even better than the last. If it wasn't for the fact that we were such kindred spirits, I wouldn't give it to you. Even if you beat me to death over it. Well, he's your, she's your daughter, so I wouldn't give it to you. Even if you beat me to death over it. Well, he's your, she's your daughter, so gotta sample it nice and slow, real <laughs> slow. Look, you got it all wrong again, boss. I'm over here. That's that. There's a pillar. <laughs> Let me give it a try. Hey, why is this sour? Sour? How dare you? This really is sour. But why? Aged well at first, but. You have to take into account how it was stored. 
our storage methods back then were not as sophisticated as today, and after so long, there would always be a batch or two that went bad. Went bad? I would planned to give this out at the wedding reception and ask that everyone drink their fill. I thought... I thought I might share a glass with this with her. I... Oh. You're drunk, Arthaz. That's enough for now. I'm not drunk, I'm... I'm not. Hmm. Come on, give me that bottle. Girl takes a slightly sour, aged spirit from Arctaz's hand. She turns off her head and without the slightest bit of hesitation, raises the bottle and pours the liquid straight down her throat, taking in its very astringent notes. Ah! Ah, uh, and that's the prob that's that problem solved. It was a little off, but overall, it's still a pretty good drink. If you want my expert opinion? I'd say you could really grow that l to love that aftertaste. Young lady, you- Have you gone mad? Quick, somebody call a doctor. Nah, I'm good. You're good? It's long since gone bad, and you still drink it? Have you ever heard of food poisoning? I'm fine, really. I've eaten rotten bread and drank foul water out of the gutter before. Compared to that, what's this drink gonna do to me? Huh? Out of the gutter? Why would you even do such things, girl? I'd rather not talk about those times right now. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, you might not really get what the whole deal is here, but I can feel it out. You said this drink was pretty important, right, boss? I'll take that as a yes. Something as rare as that getting spilled away just because it's gone a little off sure would be sad, don't you think? Listen. Oh, come on. Don't give me that face. It could work for you if you were more handsome, but you'd have to lose the beard first. <laughs> hey, why aren't we drinking? Whatever boozy treasures are left, serve them up. Today, the three of us, we're drinking till we drop. Oh. <laughs> You're sure? I'm sure. Hmm. This might be an issue. You know, lad, you usually come full of ideas, but you're right mute here. Can't blame me for that one, boss. When a lord like you suddenly wants to throw a banquet, just freeing up the space for it took our men a no small amount of effort. Uh, it's simply for hosting two foreign dignitaries. Although it's a bit off for that purpose. <sighs> I understand. We've invited a chef from a local restaurant to come and cook, and thanks us and the locals being so buddy-buddy, we've also managed to get some top quality ingredients to go with. We're still stumped on drinks, though. These three bottles of Snow Realm Spring 1095 were the best we can get from the Harab... Hereabouts? Hereabouts? I don't know. Weird. Uh, what a weird word. This one, mouth feels pleasant enough, and the aroma is suitably complex. However, layering's a little bit weak, and the uh, acridity is somewhat unbalanced. It would be fine to offer someone the rank as me, the same rank as me, but our our guests for this banquet is far from appropriate. It's only at times like these that uh, your nobility shows, my lord. Well, I do have to work rather hard at it. Enough already. We all know that you're just a boozer who gave yourself the excuse that you're handling the lords and ladies. All right, enough lip out of you. Go back and help out or something. I'll think over everything else that's left. Boss! We've been here for a whole month, and we've seen that the Cherries, they really love their Saintus, and that's Ancio's guy, too. I know you keep saying we're just here as tourists. What do you think I'm up to? If I really want to do something, I would just tell you to get that ambush sorted before all this. That's what you said, sir. Sure, but don't expect the boys to come save your hide if something comes up. Oh, don't be a worry, Wart. It's bad luck. My mouse stopped working. If I had known sooner, I would have asked the missus to pack this, the ra that rare red wine. Rare red wine. That's a weird three words <laughs> we've got in the house. <sighs> oh. Enciods! Why ever are you sighing, my lord? Ah, Sir Enciods. <laughs> well, you caught me in something of a pickle. I'm the one organizing this banquet, but I can't quite find a drink fit for the two illustrious guests such as you. 
While working over that, I recalled a fine vintage in my collection back home. Give me a twinge of homesickness. I'm afraid I don't know where exactly you are. A Viscount of County Bar. If I recall correctly, County Bar is not too far from Toron. Indeed, they tend to follow the same trails. Have done so for quite a while now. If that is the case, then you and I were fated to meet, Lord Viscount. I lived in Toron for some time. That's right. I feel like we might have met at some banquet or other back in the day. If only we had recalled this forgotten connection of ours sooner in Serenciodes, we wouldn't have have had to be at each other's throats. Indeed. If I had known that you were such an interesting man, I think I would have made fast friends, my lord. I have met with many noble here in Cherig, but I believe that you might be the first to get homesick at the thought of some wine. <laughs> would it be remiss for me to assume that my lord has a family man? Eh, if my daughter heard those words, she would most likely die from laughter. In her eyes, I'm the most worthless father across all the lands. Relations always have a different view of things to outsiders. You're right. Every family has its own issues. I'm afraid that I have no solution to your longing for count county bar. But I do have the means to make you feel at home here. Oh? Oh, right. It's him, Matterhorn. My lord, please accept this as a token of my master's regard. Oh, it's the wine. This is... Snow Realm Spring 1072. I heard that other than the Snow Ring Snow Realm Spring batch that started distilling in the 90s, there were even rare bottles in the batches from the 70s. You're saying this is the real deal? Cherry's first distillery was established under my father's auspice. But after his passing in an unfortunate accident, his output to essentially stopped. I revived it after the founding of the Carlin trade. Thanks to our outdated aging techniques, most of the stuff from the 70s is completely undrinkable these days, but a few bottles from that era still survive. They were labeled as 1070s, and what few existed were kept in the silver ash. Oh, wow. He kept that in the cellar for that long? What you see before you is from that collection. Wow. Just from the hint of fragrance coming from the mouth of the bottle, I can already tell that it'll drive Victoria's greatest sommeliers wild. This is a mighty fine drink. If I drank any of this, forget about feeling at home. I'd want to stay in Cherig for another three years. If that is ever your desire, then of course we will welcome you with open arms. Not scared of a Victorian soldier, Sir Anciodes? If every Victorian soldier is as reasonable a man as you, what do I have to fear? I'm afraid you might have some misunderstandings about me, sir, good sir. Then it is natural for me to wish up wish to clear up those misunderstandings. Come, let us sit and discuss them. Ah well. The Saintess hasn't arrived yet, so should we really be sitting? Ah, the great Saintess is quite occupied with various affairs at the moment. There's no need to trouble her over this. Uh... It is as he says, were I not here, there would be nothing for with the two of you sitting down to chat. It would be clear that my approval in the end to Tony How. Is that not right, Sir Anciodes? The siblings... Great Saintess, I'm honored that you have deigned to grace this banquet with your presence. It has been quite some time since you first set foot in Cherig, Lord Viscount. In that time, I have heard of the goodwill that you have shown Cherig, and I had plans myself to reach out to you for our own little chat. Today is as good as any opportunity as any other. Today is as good an opportunity as any other. <laughs> it has been a while, Saintess. Serencius, you still have not answered my question. The Saintess is correct. It's just that you are the spiritual leader of all Cherig's people, after all. Every day you, <laughs> you must hear the hopes and prayers of supplicants and keep their faith in Cherig in their hearts. Nowadays, all the nations of Terra have heard tell of her, and one by one they set eyes on her, too. Uh, this, too, is yet another matter that occupies your attention. There's no need for you to personally attend this mundane matters of the nation. You tell a good joke, Sir Enciodes. The reason why Cherigondred attracts more and more attention is from the outside world is in fact because we take note of our people's hopes and prayers, and that we can work to get towards a better life for all of them. That being the case, it means that there is no such thing as a mundane matter of the nation. <laughs> it need only be a matter of concern to the people to be a matter of concern to me. I am sure that you would understand this simple reasoning of mine, Sir Enciodes. I understand this point. As a good friend of mine once counseled me, 
Whether in family matters or matters of state, if you keep if you try to grasp everything at play, it will oftentimes not go as you planned. And as a good friend once counseled me, whether in family matters or matters of the state, even if you cannot attend to every per thing personally, you must see things through your own eyes and do things with your own hands at least once. Do you hold family matters in your heart, Serencios, or matters of state? <laughs> what is that you wish to see, Great Saintus? What is it you wish to do? Ah, Great Saintus. Just before you arrive, Serencios gets me a bottle of liquor. Oh? Snow Realm Springs 1072. The drink's so fine, it's only a flaw is that it will upstage the main dish. Here's my gift to you. Are you afraid that it might steal your thunder as your host? As the host? Oh, hardly, hardly. While I am the host, I can't really call myself the lord of this place, can I? I could say that Saintus herself would be considered the star of the evening. Seems I have overset my bounds. If I may, Saintus, I have a proposal. Go ahead. I think we should use this bottle of 1072 as a drink for tonight's meal. What do you think? What say you, Sir Anciots? And 1072? No, 1072 is better. When our father placed these bottles in our cellar, he believed that Cherry Spring was just around the corner. But even after waiting for more than 20 years, our spring still not yet truly arrived. Now, if this bottle were a signal of the opportunity before us, that would truly be a wonderful thing. Elegant as ever, Sir Anciots. Now that the matter's settled, Char? Yes, Saintus? Take this bottle to the kitchen, if you would. At once, say. At once, Saintus. Is that to your satisfaction, my lord? Oh, I don't know what I just did. Well, since our guest of honor has arrived, uh, let's get this banquet started. Please, have a seat. Well, my fortune fun. telling isn't always right. Sometimes there's a lot of external noise that affects the outcome. Oh, shut up. Oh. It's a six star! Our slogan is long live the Penguin Empire. Are you our client? You can call me Exusier. I'm nothing like that Lupo Ice Queen. <laughs> I'm always down for some fun. Oh my gosh, she has a gun. <laughs> and then I guess I'm also going to see how strong I need to be for the next mission. I'm back. Lizburn, are you standing around? What are you standing around for? Nothing. Oh yeah? I remember now. Old Tyrael's daughter was cooking in the back kitchen, so you wanted some excuse to slip on over? Look at you acting like you're doing us a great service. She used to work as a chef in a nearby restaurant, so it makes plenty of sense to bring her on board. Whatever. More importantly, why is the food not ready yet? Hey boss, how come the food hasn't been served yet? Sorry about that. The main reason is we're a bit overloaded right now. Even though we've upped the kitchen staff, it's not enough to handle the workload. In that case, I don't mind lending a hand. There's no need. Who are you? I'm chief maid of the Saintus Char. Char? Char? Is it Jar? Jar Jar Binks. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> We're just a bunch of lowly soldiers. No need for so the formalities. Leah? Yes, madam? Split the accompanying serving servants into teams and have them take turns helping in the kitchen. Make sure the banquets proceed smoothly. Understood. But we couldn't possibly have you. There's no need to worry, sir. Though this banquet is hosted by the Lord Viscount, this land is still Cherig and... You are still all esteemed guests in the eyes of the Saintus. As the Lord Viscount was gracious enough to extend an invitation to the Saintus, it is only natural that we have servants lend our assistance as well. We servants lend. Additionally, pardon me if this may sound offensive, but it would be out of place for those whose hands wield weapons to carry plates. Mm. Calm down, Lisburn. The maid's right. We'd probably end up breaking a whole bunch of <laughs> crockery if we tried to help. I know. But if there's any physical labor that needs doing, you just give us a holler, alright? Oh, come to think of it, the kitchen could use some extra hands to help them carry some groceries. I'm not sure if... I'm on my way! <laughs> oh, he's in love! 
Thanks, madam. My pleasure. Now that things are settled here, I won't further disturb your enjoyment of the banquet. I'm back. Leah, I have one more favor to ask you. Can you see if the kitchen has these items? If they do, I'd like them to make an additional dish. I like a fruit fruit and cheese wrap. <laughs> Pulling out the old, old home cooking. But the saintess normally doesn't touch that stuff. Now, now, just listen to me. Carlin Trade's employees seem to be arriving one after another. That's right. The Viscount invited not only the Saintess and Master Encios, but also the elders of the Vine Bear Court, as well as the employees of the Car Carlin Trade. As extra extravagant as one would expect a Victorian Saint. Victor Saint Viscount. Victorian Viscount. The man's not all show either. He even invited Teriels, head ch chef of the Burden Peak Hotel. His foul temper isn't something that can be bought with money. Goes to show how well they've gotten on with our people during the month they've been in Cherig. Hmm? Uh oh. Chug, chug. <laughs> chug, chug. <laughs> My man just puked. Not bad, not bad. You mountain folks sure know how to hold your booze. We still can't outdrink me. <laughs> Who's up next? My man is plastered. Ugh, those men can get sloshed, even in a place like this. Not to mention, quite a few have already ended up under the table. Char, what should we do? Well... Getting on well is certainly a wonderful thing, but getting on too well can be problematic. This sort of thing, however, ends up being a headache for certain other people. Gnosis, the Shagata, are in position. I have them patrolling the front and rear entrances to prevent... What the fuck? One second. Okay. Sorry about that. I got called by a random number, and as soon as I picked up the call, it hung up. <laughs> I have them patrolling the front and rear entrances to prevent anyone from sneaking inside the venue. No need to be nervous. Valet. Valets? Send one of the teams to help in the kitchen. Understood. Care for a drink? If you dare, that is. This is some crazy strong stuff. Are we seriously doing this? As I said, up to you. Haha, <laughs> you got me. You've got guts, I'll give you that. Cheers. Immediately out. Pour me another glass. On it. You're, you're not bad. <laughs> Do you have a hangover remedy? Leah? Right here. Good. Huh? D director, enjoy your nap. Uh, yeah, yes. That one soldier with a stomach of an iron. Oh, shit. I just dropped... I dropped it again. Bro, what is up with me? You managed to drink him under the table? Yep. That's crazy. Lay off the alcohol for the rest of the day. Go rest. Thank you very much. Color me surprised. I didn't expect Carlin Trey's CTO to be a, such a good drinker. I can hardly tell from your face that you just downed two bottles of strong liquor. Just some useless tricks I picked up when I was younger. Did you frequently attend such occasions with your in your youth? Don't worry about it. The banquet will start soon, and I'll have Carlin Trade's employees help move things along. You're not going to join in the conversation, Master Gnosis? Not at the moment. It's their time now. Okay. Weird. Oh, <laughs> uh, you you too? Why are you such a tack why are you so taciturn today, Sir Enciodes? Is there something on your mind or has the coming to the banquet soured your mood? Your usual quips and retorts are nowhere to be heard today. I appreciate the Saintess's concern, but it's simply that sitting at the table same table as the Saintess is a terrifying affair, and I can only hold my tongue in her presence. 
I see. I did not think Sir Encios was a pious type, but I stand corrected. I dare not speak out of line. Oh, there are things in the world that even Sir Encios dares not to do. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> look how nice the weather is today. Perfect for the holding a banquet, wouldn't you say? Why don't you two go? Given the Saintess's high praise, there are naturally many things I am afraid of. I won't prattle on with the details, but take the ceremony of Cherigander's statue the day after tomorrow. For such an important occasion, all of Carl and Trey must be come together as one without a single misstep. <laughs> that being the case, I would recommend you be thorough and circumspect as well, Sir Encios. The completion of Cherigander's statue is the, of the utmost importance to Cherig. Not to mention, we are in the presence of the Victorian guests who are eager to congratulate us. There is no such thing as too much caution. It is as you say. The Saintess is very, very, well, very well versed in all things divine and the multitude of preparations made for the ceremony are impeccable and well thought out. In all respects, a true blessing upon Cherig. As for all other affairs, please rest assured that Carlin Trade will take care of the Vine Bear Court's concerns. Now then, it's certainly reassuring to see you two, <laughs> two of you so young and promising. This is hilarious. <laughs> Poor Harold. Oh. As a reminder, we're not you. <laughs> this is hilarious. I can't believe they're just arguing in front of him. As a reminder, we're not here to celebrate, but as to discuss a collaboration. Seeing as how you're eloquent as ever, you seem to have no shortage of confidence. This is great. You've been quite busy making a name for yourself, Sir Enciodes. Though I rarely go down the mountain, news of Carlin Trade's exploits are regularly reaching my ears. But please do not forget this, Serencios. For thousands of years, Cherig has relied on hard work and prag pragmatism from generation to generation to develop our homeland into what it is today, not utilitarianism and reckless adventurism. Silver Ashes will never forget Cherig Anders. Uh, ad admonition. Admonition? Weird of our people. Weird. However, the scientists must also understand that, along with the people of Cherig's hard work and pragmatism, what's Otto doing? Oh, he was doing some weird stuff on Hannah's chair, and then he just laid down to sleep. Is an indomitable adventuring spirit and desire to ascend the higher summits. Perhaps a little bit of the spirit is also what we need when it comes to dealing with external developments. I only hope that our, your enthusiasm does not lead to your head first into danger. <laughs> the young truly are so full of energy, but the Saintus is correct. Sometimes stability is in fact necessary. I invited the two of you here because I wanted to... I am truly touched by the Saintus's concern. Please rest assured that I will handle this matter and not betray your expectations. All things in Cherig must inevitably answer to Cherigander's will. Without sufficient faith, it is, is it not true that I would struggle to take even a single step? You're just as awful as you ever were. Ditto. Yeah, <laughs> you too. If you, if you have a disagreement, talk it through like adults. Don't go and ruin the peace. Let's move on and discuss our cooperation. Sir Enciodes, your brain is as hard and stubborn as the purest originum, originum ice crystal. The Saintist remains unmoving and speaks bluntly for the first time in a long while. I can't hold a candle to you in that regard, but it seems that even after all these years, our great Sorencio still has not <laughs> learned to retain its capital. So what does the great Saintist refer? Have you old ha have your old habits not flared up again? Taking on every bit of risk with no regard for the consequences? The greater the risk, the greater the reward. I hope you won't regret your choices later on down the road. Later on down the road. Nobody's going to sneak money under your pillow today. Indeed, that won't be happening again. No longer will I be woken by the jingling of coins, or have to buy candies and snacks on margin, and pay back thrice the amount. I never asked you to pay me back. Please, you too. Just one moment, please, your lordship. <laughs> they say together. Oh. 
fine. I suppose I'll drink to myself for now. That's hilarious. <coughs> Holy Saint to Sir Enciotes, I have no intention of involving myself in your private matters or affairs. But if the Saintess has her own thoughts about Cherry's present situation, then reciprocating the Duke's offer may be the perfect option for you. What do you mean? Oh. I thought my mouse died. It just didn't make it click. Holy Sanctus, might I tell you what I've been what I've found most impressive about Cherig? Please do. Sorry. I recall the time I paid a medical call to a herdsman. Leonez was his name. A young beast in his herd had gotten lost while grazing. I offered to help him search for it, but he declined and told me not to worry. He had me wait until sundown and left to have suffer, supper, and I so I waited. After finishing the treatment, I set up a cooking pot over the grass with him. We lit the pot, and he found a good piece of cheese. You shouldn't. You should have heard the sizzling sound it made when he threw it in. Sorry, forgot to take my medicine this morning. I was sitting at, to the to the side on a short bench, still thinking about the young beast, when I heard a high-pitched cry in the distance. Might be something you see all the time in Cherig, but for me, when I saw that young beast returning to the pasture at sunset, the way it found its way back to its mother's side, the two nuzzling against each other, what I felt at that moment was something I don't know how to describe. Old Leonas told me that burden beasts recognize the scent of their kin, especially falls, bulls, which are particularly sensitive to their mother's scent. Even if they get lost, I don't know what my mouse is doing right now. Why is it like glowing like this? Even if they get lost, they'll always find their way back following their mother's scent. That blood bond reminds me of the way that the people of Cherig view their land. It reminds me of the way Cherenciodes gave up Victoria in all her glory to return to Cherig. I see your lordship speaks very highly of Cherenciodes. It is true that he made many achievements thus far, but if you are comparing him to the young burden beast, Returning to his homeland thanks to his ties with his mother by the name of Cherig, I found the joke quite droll. It is indeed thanks to Sir Enciot's longing for his homeland that House Caster decided to fund Carlin Trade. Moreover, the Duke believed that since Sir Enciot's greatly treasured the Cherig blood flowing in his veins, he likewise would not come to despise the other half of his blood, the Caster bloodline. Holy Saintus, as I have previously stated, I am not here to stoke conflict, but at the inception of the Carlin trade, it was Castor who extended a helping hand to Sir Enciodes. And now that Sir Enciodes has proven his worth, the Duke believes that this is time to collect a bit of interest. It appears that a few pieces of candy will no longer be sufficient, Sir Enciodes. It's not so complicated, really. What the Duke wants is simply a show of sincerity. Her Grace wishes to see this goodwill from Sir Enciodes, from Carlin Trade, and ultimately from Cherig itself. A show of sincerity towards the Duke of Castor and towards Victoria. So long as the sincerity exists, then our future cooperation will only become more in intimate. And if we fail to express such sincerity? Harold puts down his tableware, then walks over to the window and opens it. The cold wind laced with the snow and ice instantly pours into the room. Even the burning stove is helpless to resist the chill. He quickly closes the window once more. <laughs> my apologies. The Saintess's question was so ins incisive, I found myself wanting to breathe a fresh air, breath of fresh air. After staying in this warm room for so long, I had forgotten how cold it was outside, you see. That being the case, your lordship could have simply entertained Serencios at this banquet. Why is my presence necessary? Well, you see, I've been eating and drinking remarkably well here. During my morning constitutional, my blood pressure has gone down even as my blood sugar was up a tad. I wouldn't mind staying here for another year or so. But you see, I find the Duke's incessant nagging quite bothersome. Nowadays, Carlin Trade became a pillar of Cherig, and the kinship between this great saintess and Sir Encios runs deep. I simply wanted to provide an opportunity for the two of you to sit down and talk things over. I'd like you to help me convince Sir Encios. I appreciate your lordship's candor. However, everything that has been that has a beginning must also have an end. It's true that Cherig uh, owes most of, much of its current standing to Carlin Trade, 
But if I, as a saintist, were to say that I know nothing of this, it would simply be avoiding responsibility. If you accept that I am the leader of the nation, then it must follow that I am also responsible for its con current condition. I cannot come up here and confidently proclaim that the ways of the past were wrong. Sir Encio always boasts about how he was one of the he was the one who chose Cherig's current path. However, to this day, everything in Cherig is the result of decisions that we have collectively made as a people, in which I am one, one member. Serencio himself has no right to rebuke Cherig, as she is today. And the same is true for me. I see now. It seems I really ought to try more of Cherig's food while I still have the appetite. Please come with me, both of you. Once again, I must thank you for your hospitality today, my lord. I hope my choice of dishes will suit you both to both of your tastes. They are traditional charred dishes that I specially requested Chef Teriel's prepare. Oh, there's no okay, that was weird. I don't know why. This cheese wrap it looks positively splendid. Cheese wraps. And there are even fruit chunks inside. Truly a traditional household dish. Dig it, my friends. Don't be shy. After you, Sir Enciodes. Very well, if you insist. That smell again. You still remember it? Of course. Gnosis should be here. Where is he? Sir, there are these Victorian soldiers earlier. Soldiers? It all makes sense now. It would be unbefitting of the Saintist to personally appear before Victorian soldiers, no? Do as you will. Don't worry about me. Now then, I shall not take up any more of your time, Holy Saintus. It really is that same smell. <sighs> At least a bit of s silver lining is the Trilby Asher. <clears throat> Sorry, one second. At least the bit of s silver lining is the Trilby Ashers can't accuse me of doing nothing. I've done what needed doing, and the ceremony is about to begin. I suppose it's time to head back. Oh, right. Can't forget to pick up souvenirs for the wife and daughter. And also... Ah! Second record! Jump scare! <laughs> Alas, it would be remiss of me to leave any regrets behind on this trip. Ah, there you are, Madam Dame Wrecker. Wrecker. I see you found yourself a lovely spot, clean and... Hey now, don't go. If you want an audience, go talk to Encios or Gnosis. I'll have nothing to do with your little games. Come now, that's no way to be talking. With all the delicious food and drink in front of you, would it really be kill you to exchange a few pleasantries? For example, shall we toast? Okay, nine dong. Oh, are you a woman who can't handle her drink? I'm much better at handling men who try to ply me to drink. Shall I prove it to you? <laughs> no, no need, I'll take your word for it. Oh right, Lily's in fine shape now, thanks to your timely handling of the matter. I've already managed for arranged for follow-up care, and her little ones are in good health as well. Leonis, Leonis, Leonis said to leave one of them for you to name. I'm glad things worked out. And I'll pass on that last part. I don't have much of a naming sense. Aha! In that case, why not let me do it for you? Never fear, naming is a bit of a science in Victoria, and I happen to have a bit of expertise in the field. The little one is a girl, so my suggestion would be to name her Olivia Turnbottom Michelle Craigavon. I put together a la my last name, my wife's maiden name, and my grandmother's first name, making her <laughs> the same as my daughter's. I've changed my mind. Her name's Dolor. Dollar? Dolor? Dolor? <laughs> but, but I wasn't finished yet. Madam D Dragon Breath. Her name is Dolor. But Olivia. Dolor. <laughs> all right, all right. I said Dragon Breath because that's what Hannah says. Or, um, it's a fine name for a girl. Healthy and strong, right? How do you say that? I'm probably butchering that awful. 
pronounce dolor. Dowler? Dolor. Oh no, I was right. Dolor. Okay. Even though I still think Olivia Turnbaum, <laughs> Michelle Craigavon has a bit more charm to it. Nevertheless, I think Leonis was quite fine of the name, fitting as it is for a cherry girl. Madam Dragon Dra Degenbrecker. Degenbrecker. I also have another favor to ask you. Presumptuous as it may be, please take a look at this. I'm afraid I'll be leaving empty-handed on this business trip. I would at least live like to leave a little memento of myself as a personal note. As I said back at the station, I'm a huge fan of yours, see? Would you be willing to give me an autograph? You don't seem like the type to obsess over night sports. You think too highly of me. Vulgar man that I am, far be it from me to avoid vulgar pleasures. Pleasures. Though the arena is certainly different from the battlefield, the victors all have something that elevates them above the crowd. It certainly is a fine pastime. I hope that you take no offense to me saying that. Oh, what's up, Otto? Oh, he's inside the green screen. As none is intended. That much is true. You say that, but you still refuse to give of this poor man an autograph, even as he holds this car out. card out. I've treasured this trading card for a long time, you know. It was a limited release from the first time you won the Major. You never released another card. It's a darn shame that I can't seem to win your favor no matter what. That aside, when it comes to naming, there is something I've been curious about, and would appreciate if you could shed some light on the matter. Of course, you don't have to answer if you find it offensive. Tegenbrecker, is that your real name? You're certainly brave to ask, Kragavon. I'm a man of few talents, but courage is something I do carry. What if it is? Just consider it scratching the itchy curiosity of your fans, madam. After all, every angle of your being has been under the spotlight since the first time you won the Major. The origins of the Black Knight, and where her path, path ultimately led her. Countless eyes have been following you. Which brings me to my next question, Madam Dre Degenbrecker. Is your contract with Carlin Trade about to expire? I do wonder if you'd spare me the honor of inviting you to be a guest of Victoria. No doubt the Duke would be more than glad to welcome your arrival, and perhaps we'd even be able to discuss new horizons of cooperation. Uh-huh. Is that all you wanted to ask? That's all you're here for. I've hurt you out. Now, if you <laughs> leave me in peace. I've spent a decade in Cherig. I'm one of her people, and I plan to live out my days here. Good enough for you? Ah. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I had my own speculation about the answer, but I must admit... It is quite moving to hear it from your own words. Why, you didn't even try to dress it up with more local flair. What? Why, you didn't even try to dress it up with more local flair. Weird, okay. True, I suppose you're dressed with a bit of color. Where'd you get that fur collar? Wow, oh, this is a souvenir from a shop. Oh, this is from a souvenir shop that I'm rather partial to. It's quite warm. All right, all right. It's getting late, and the banquet should be drawing to an end soon, so I won't pester you any longer. Though, I wasn't fortunate enough to win your signature. I do want to say one thing. I enjoyed your chat, our chat very much, madam. Madam. Please watch your steps, Sir Enciodes. Is he drunk? Enciodes, I've brought the car. Thank you, uncle. Are you returning to the mansion? Back to the office. Sir Enciodes? What he said. There are still some chores I need to take care of. Long time no see, Uncle Chester. Sanctus. Just call me by the name on the occasions, on these occasions. Enya, I... I'm so glad to see you safe and sound. Feeling is mutual. I'm relieved that you're in good health. Now then, I shall take my leave, Holy Sanctus. Sir Enciodes. Very well, my lord. Yes, Holy Saintus? All else aside, I hope you have a wonderful time in Cherig. Where the fuck did it just go? Bro, I'm dumb as fuck, I swear. I can't find it! That's sad. Hi, Otto. <laughs> what are you looking at, dude? My chat is being weird. What are you doing? 
Where'd you go? Why are you running through the green screen, weirdo? All else aside, I hope that you find have a wonderful time in Cherry. You gonna come up and join me? I'm picking you up then. Oh yeah. <laughs> My buddy boy. Thank you for your kind words. Char? Yes, Sanctus? Please have the maids clean the mess. Oh, there's no need for that. The good soldiers not only helped clean everything up, but even took away the leftover food. They said that they were going to bring it to the infected soldiers who weren't able to attend the banquet. This viscount actually seems quite respectable. It seems that's obviously playing the villain. Stop it. Don't try to drink the coffee, dum dum. You know better. Though I trust that something Interancios here can relate to. You flatter me, Saintus. It's getting dark. Be careful on your way back. You too. Aw, so they still care for each other a little. Saintus, did you need something else? In the name of Cherigonder, Cherig has arrived where she is despite or today, despite the gulf between us. Second, let me make sure. <laughs> you can barely see Otto, but cats. <laughs> hey buddy, what's up? He's being needy right now. Okay, let me try to do this with one hand now. What would Cherigonder think were she to look down upon her land today. Would she condemn us? Are you getting cold feet? Of course not. The miracle three years ago will forever be engraved in the hearts of all Cherig. Even I must admit that Cherigander indeed is the bedrock of this land. We are all but chil children playing atop her body. If so, that question isn't for me to answer. Perhaps it's not her f for her to answer either. Dude, what are you doing? His tail's being creepy. <laughs> All right, we're back. He's headbutting the mic. I don't... Are you purring? He is. I can go the rest of the way myself. Oh, really? Dot, dot, dot. It was just a minor miscalculation. Hold on. I need a moment. Certainly. No, not at the main door. Head around the side. What's the problem? Right, someone might see you? Someone might be working overtime. Who'd be working overtime at this hour? Me. And you too, probably. Are you complaining that I haven't given you enough time overtime pay? Alright, Gnosis, sit down already. Nobody will see the drunken and indecent behavior of the CTO. If you ask me, you're holding your own image too high of standard. You're a lot more talkative after a few drinks, Serenciotes. If anything, you owe me <laughs> Degenbrecker more overtime pay. Oh, no, don't knock shit off the desk. He actually owes me a few lives. Too lazy to keep count. The two leaders of Carlin Trade, squatting in the lobby of the company headquarters in the middle of the night to discuss unpaid wages? Gnosis is fighting on your behalf. Did the booze melt his brain? Okay, you're whipping me with your tail. Stop it. Aw. It's not like I sloshed for your sake. I got sloshed for your sake. What are you doing, creepy? He's so cute. Dagenbrecker looks over at NCOs, who only gives a shrug. What an embarrassment. Dagenbrecker hands the canteen of water she brought over to NCOs, and the latter naturally reaches out to accept it. The last decade has been countless such mem moments. Oh, This is also so cute, what the hell? It's weird seeing her be nice to someone, though. <laughs> Do you still remember Walden's? Who? The first time you had to carry me and Gnosis back? Oh, that banquet. Yes. Where Gnosis got where Gnosis got pissed drunk and you didn't, yet you were worse to, for wear because of it. Look at him now. His liver is clearly a lot tougher these days. At least he's not passing out all over the place. You sure this one's still conscious? Before you two start bad-mouthing me to my face, Bleh. can you bring me some hangover remedy? The man slumped over on the steps, does not lift his head, merely stretching his hand out towards the uh, ear-spirited friends. <laughs> Raise, Degenbrecker raises her eyebrows and takes a pack of pills out of her pocket and places them in Gnosis' hand. She watches him up the blister pack, 
with practice motions and swallow the contents along with a big gulp of water. After a while, she lets out a sigh of relief. That's a bit better, but this doesn't seem to be the same medicine I took before. It's not a hangover cure. It's a poison I made. <laughs> and see what's put me up to it. Yes, quite right. Is that so? Then why am I not dead yet? It doesn't seem like your poison's very effective. How dull. Are you too tired of this routine already? I thought it was pretty funny. It was more fun back when you actually believed it and tried to make yourself vomit. That's hilarious. That was a few years ago, but... <laughs> that was a different pill, wasn't it? It didn't look like the previous one. Riley sent it. He often goes drinking with the Victorians and says this one works better. NCOs, it seems that Dagan Brecker has become the most popular of us three among the people of Cherig. What? Why are you staring at me, dude? Notice the promotional pictures of the Black Knight hanging off the Burden Beast billboards by the station? Hand drawn, too. Oh, he just pawed my arm. Come here, dude. If you want petting, then sit in the lap and just sit here so I can pet you. Is that a problem? Of course not. I've become increasingly busy in the recent years and have neglected many things. Once the situation calms a bit, Gnosis and I really need to start going out more often. That's for sure. If you don't show your face in public every once in a while, people will start to worry about your private life. One popular line of speculation is that you've thrown yourself into work as you've become heartbroken over certain things. There are quite a few variations, too. Want me to give you a rundown? <laughs> <laughs> I pray you don't choke to death laughing and vomiting at the same time, Gnosis. If you could laugh like that all the time, our employees wouldn't be so afraid of you. <coughs> don't worry. Before I croak, I'll make sure to puke all over your shoes. So how did your discussion today go? Reaching any agreements? When it comes to matters concerning Cherig, there aren't actually that many differences between me and the Saintess. What about between you and the girl named Enya? The only problems we're talking about are those that can be resolved. If I had to do things over again, I'd make the same decisions every time. She'd never, st and she'd still never feel good about it. We all know that deep down. Say what you will, but you'll never tell that to her face. You're not much different, Gnosis. You're two peas in a pod, never saying what needs to be said to the people who need to hear it. Also, you should be playing dead right now. The lights of the office still shine bright in the night. The heating in the main hall is shut off and the silence spreads freely through the room, along with the cold. A moment later, the silence is broken by the sound of Gnosis retching. <laughs> Dang him, Wrecker. I need another pill. My head hurts. And a couple for me, too. I might be a bit tipsy. Both men stretch out their hands towards Titan Breaker at the same time. That unflappable attitude that someone there knows the truth makes Degan Breaker tingle in irritation for some reason. There are still many questions that cannot be answered. But at least here, right in this moment, there's no need to show off. No need for pre pretense. <laughs> They're slapping the shit out of them. Flaps their hands away. Huh? What? Uh, stand up. Go home already, if you're drunk. Don't squat here. There's a lot of work to be done tomorrow. Now go. Arctos. Ugh. What happened? What's with all the empty bottles on the floor? Odd. Why was I even sleeping here? Rosalind, you're a good kid. Arctas, you disgrace. <sighs> Dad? Hey, huh? What did you wake me up for? Get an old man nap in peace. No, hold on, I... Dad, when did you get home? Why didn't you tell? let me know that you were coming? What happened yesterday? How did we end up sleeping on the floor? Quit your yapping, it's giving me a headache. <laughs> Sir, master. I'm so glad you're both finally awake. Gulo, what happened here? The two of you got drunk and didn't even want to stop drinking, and our efforts to convince you to return to your rooms to sleep were in vain. 
I can only feed you two more batches of firewood. So I can only feed two more batches of firewood to the furnace so it wouldn't get too cold in here. Sir, do you not remember what happened yesterday? Hi. Right. Wait, let me think. Yesterday, yesterday. I remember. I was to prepare the banquet to celebrate the completion of Chara Gondor's statue. The Saintess asked me to select the best drinks Cherry had to offer. Uh, so I was tasting them one by one. And then after that, I don't remember much. <laughs> of course you don't. You were so drunk you couldn't tell people apart. You even tried to toast to a pillar while hugging it. At your age, what an embarrassment. Enough, Dad. <laughs> Enough, Father. Was I not doing what the Saintess? Doing it for the Saintess. Gilo's still here. Could you ease up on the scolding before I lose any more respect? I always taught you respect is something you earn from your, on your own. So why are you asking me, <laughs> me to leave any for you? Forget it. I'll bicker with you no longer. Yulo, where's Rosalind? She went up the mountain first thing in the morning, Master. What? She woke up early while well, both of you were still sleeping, and she said to let you sleep a while longer. I thought the same, so I didn't wake you. I guess it's fine for her to just leave like that. Perhaps this is Sharagander's plan for the Polar Rouches. They met. They didn't realize, so I guess this means that it's not meant to be. In indeed. What are you riddling about now, Dad? I vaguely remember a young girl coming here yesterday, but I didn't drink too much. I just can't remember what she looked like. You said her name was Rosalind. Hmm. Arctos, come here. I should not hide this from you. Same as you made your own choice back then. What should be done next is ultimately up to you. By Garagonder. Three generations really drank the night away. Even dragged me in with the other guards, too. Ugh. It's been a long time since I drank that much. I didn't get any business done at all. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it was him. Since going roundabout didn't work, let's just go head on. Judging by the direction, Rosalind probably went up the mountain. Where's the music? <laughs> ah. Sus. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is one of those snowy mountains. It's even more spectacular up close. Carrig's mountains sure are impressive. Ugh, I'm a little dizzy. Really went overboard in drinks last night. None of those guys are awake yet. Why didn't Doctor tell me how enthusiastic Carrig people can be? Should give them something as thanks when I get down the mountain later. Sheesh, it's freezing. The wind's pretty painful. If I remember right, you're supposed to climb up this mountain on your own to prove your fate to Karagander? It's really tall. But since I'm already here, I might as well try. That's funny. Oh my god, I have a tickle in my nose again, and it's awful. Huh? Oh. <clears throat> that was weird. The pierced air from up the mount The pierced air from up in the mountains? Sounds pretty good to me. Do you take cards here? Alright then. Give me two boxes. Send them to the Borden Peak Hotel, room 606. You got it! Whoa, Sophia, you're buying even more stuff? Did you buy four boxes of mountain spring water yesterday? How are we going to bring it all back? Don't be silly. Who says we have to bring them home ourselves? I'll send a box each to Mlynar and Margaret. Margaret! I probably don't haven't even bought any enough yet. Any enough yet. Carrig's <laughs> Carrig's water er, air and water are plenty impressive. The Black Knight came here a good long while ago, so she should be living pretty well now. Alright, enough of that. I mean, I hear you climbed Yerig's mountain by yourself as a show of devotion. Come on, let's get climbing. Then do men they do mention as much Jesus Christ. They do mention as much in the travel brochure. Let's see who can reach the summit first, Sophia. 
quietly. Why didn't you tell them we have a cable car that goes up the mountain? Ho ho ho! The tourists have their own ideas. Who am I to tell them otherwise? Fair enough. Seems like tourists are the only ones who like to climb these days. They're right, though. Come, let's go take the cable car. Really? Don't Karagond are seen as a lack of faith? Nonsense! Karagond granted us the convenience because she loves her people. Insisting on climbing would show a lack of faith in Karagonder. Huh? What do you mean, huh? You're all Karagonder's children. As long as you show respect to her, as long as you respect her and keep her in your heart, she'll protect all of us. Sweet tea. Whew. You can actually ride a cable car up the mountain? Why are the tourist spots the same everywhere? I'd better follow the locals. Even though I don't know what it means to have faith in Karagander at all, a Karagander must be protecting Charon. <sighs> Karagander must be protecting Karag, judging by those things are going. What? What? Judging by how things are going? Okay. Hey, old man in front. Can you tell me where to get the cable card tickets? Thanks for pointing the way. That's funny. Lazy. Oh, just pop my neck. Sir, please hold on. Who are you? What's with the getup? A reporter from Victoria, you see. Yeah, with a minigun. People praise the Karagonda statue. But surely building it must have been a waste of resources. I'm currently collecting some... Get lost. My son who works on the statue sends me money every month. And even calls me to tell me how good work is over there. You foreigners are just salty. <laughs> salty about how wonderful our Karag is. Then why hasn't he returned? He has signed some agreement, so he has to stay there. What was it again? Non-disclosure. <laughs> Do you need an NDA to build a statue? Hmm. I'm warning you, foreigner. Any more guff out of you and <laughs> I'll give you a taste of my walking stick. Huh? Where'd they go? Hmm. What is it built out of that's making everyone... That was a really pretty mountain background. Hmm. <laughs> Praise Karagander. Brave bird and beast, brave people. Karagander guides us to protect our homeland. <laughs> huh? The snow here doesn't seem right. Ow! Careful. Oh! There's a trap down there. You alright? Oh, Madam Degenbrecher. Where did this hole come from? That Riley must have dug it out to catch game. Many, many thanks. I would have fallen down the hole if it weren't for you. You're welcome. Do you have business on the mountain today, Madam? Anything we can help you with? I have plans with Riley, Leon, and the other guys to go up the mountain today. Just let us know if you need anything. I have a bit of work to do, but I'll be fine on my own. Are you an old Riley still drinking with the Victorians? Yeah. We've been <laughs> competing to see who can drink more, and it's a tie at the moment at the moment. Wow, but none of us are giving up because it'd be an embarrassment to, for Master Enciodes and the Saintus if we lost to those Victorians. Also, they just suddenly came in here instead of camp. What do you think is going on? I've no proper education, but even I know a sudden flood of people here. All hale and healthy, even, can't possibly be a good thing. That's why Riley and I were thinking we could keep an eye on them for Sir Enciodes with the drinking at the very least. So don't worry, we'll definitely win. Fine. It would be great if you could drink them until they puke. Just call me if you can't. <laughs> don't push yourselves. Did you decide to watch the Victorians on your own? <laughs> we thought it up with the other villagers. All of us agreed to do it. We've been living much better these days, and since we know how good things can be, we're not going to let anyone ruin it for us. But madam, I should be honest with you. Just don't get angry with me. Sure, go on. I just wanted to say, these Victorians we've been drinking with, we've come to know them pretty well over the past month, and brushing the other stuff aside, they aren't bad guys. They don't cause too much trouble, even when drunk. And sometimes, they come over to help with work. There's a guy with bones as old as mine. He only goes a little mad when he's drunk, but he doesn't do much other than strip off his clothes to try to swim in the snow. I saw his back then, 
It was in bad shape. I don't know what he has suffered, but it hurts to even look at. It hurts to think about now. Might as well tell you this. A Victorian Viscount has been come to join the celebrations. Has come to join the celebrations for Yergonder's statue, and had brought his personal army along. Most of them are veterans who have been fighting alongside him for a long time. Oh, there's no need to think too much. Just enjoy your drinks together. Ugh. I don't get it. What's the difference between a personal and regular army? But they did look far, far from young. And they did a few of them seem to have stones growing on their bodies. That should be a uh, stone disease I've seen in the news before. Or apathy. Most of the time, nothing happens when you come in contact with it. So you needn't be too worried. We should still take some precautions. You can go to Rhodes Island's office in the city or the newly built hospital for information on how to protect yourself. That we know, so don't worry, madam. But I am. I just wanted to have a chat with you anyways. I wouldn't be dare to serve Sir Encios or Sir Gnosis. Oh? You're saying I look idle? idle? No, that's not what I mean. I mean them sirs are busy with their big projects all day long, so it'd be no good to serve them. You help us out regularly, when even though you're so busy too. We know you're the, on the same side as us. You're one of us. One of you. Wait, no. I mean, those sirs are our people too. I, I, I'm bad with words, but you know what I mean. Am I wasting your time, madam? It's fine. There's something I need to trouble you. There's something I need to trouble you in the rest of the mountain for. Just say the word. Help me find a pretentious Victorian. A what? He wears a top hat, a black coat, and with the collar covering his face. Some gemstones, too. It's easy to spot such a conspicuous figure. What's this fella doing the sort of outfit in Carrig? Who knows? Probably something stupid. Alright, leave it to us. I'll send over old Leona's burden beast the moment we get any news. <laughs> Oh? Are you serious, Dad? The girl yesterday, she's she's Rosalind, my daughter? I knew it. I fucking knew it. I doubt I'm wrong. The girl just looks just like you and Tatiana, too. Her eyes... Or my eyes are still good enough. I'm not wrong. Really? My daughter? <laughs> I did say she was a good kid. Good stature and character, even. Wonderful. Rosalind. Rosalind. She looks like me? Yes, like me. I remember now. She has the same hair color. Her eyes and mouth are Tatiana's. Especially her eyes. They're exactly the same. So pretty. Time flies. Little Rosalind has already grown so big in just a blink of an eye. Wait, did she go up the mountain? When is she coming back? Will she come back? Arctaz, there's something else. We can talk about that later. I have to prepare some gifts for my daughter. I remember she loved baked sweet cheese and beasts too when she was little, so I'm off to buy some now. Tatiana, is she here too? Does she want to see me? Then I... I... Alright. No matter. I'll head straight up the mountain and give them to Rosalind. And then I'll ask her about Tatiana. Arctaz! What is it? I need to hurry! Stop right there! Criminal scum. Just stay. You need to hear this. Arctaz stops in his tracks from his father's yelling and an ill omen stirs on Coat and Trollby in his heart. Perhaps it's his hangover, but a sudden headache descends on him. His stomach seems to drop to the floor, and his back feels as if something cold is creeping up on him. Only now does Arctaz realize his father's back, which he has not seen in a long time, is slightly stooped, like a wilting tree, no longer tall and upright as he had remembered. With a dry and aged voice of the devotee continues, undeterred by Arctaz's panic. Rosalind told me she and her mother have been living in Ursus since they left. She was too young to remember anything of this place. She said she never knew who her father was all the time she grew up. And this time, she's not. She's here not only to see our Karagander statue, but also she brought back her mother's remains. Ill omens always seem to bear out. <coughs> the wind and snow roaring outside their home, the flames flickering inside the furnace, and even their indistinguishable breathing all seem to freeze for a moment. What? Remains? What do you mean? But, but Tatiana was so young, how could she... 
I don't believe it. How can that be? I heard it from the girl myself. What happened back then? It was Clan Paul Roche that failed mother and daughter. I carry the shame in my heart, but not regret. What about you, Octaz? I... Fine, it doesn't matter what you want to say. There's no point telling me. Your father is no perfect man, nor a saint. And certainly not the victim here. This old man is too old to hear you out, let alone offer any advice. I only wish to spend the rest of my days sweeping the dust in Karagander's feet. But you should think carefully. Tatiana, Rosalind. Sir, Master. Matriarch Rotatos is here. She says there's something urgent to discuss. Urgent. Oh. Oh, it's her. Ugh, the place reeks of booze. The ceremony's tomorrow, Octaz. Don't you drink too much and ruin it all. I'm in no mood to play with you. Just tell me what happened. You're not the types of men. Any social calls, Rotatos. <laughs> you sure know me well. Uh, fine, I'll get straight to the point, Arctaz. I came here to tip you off. I still recall that you married an Ursine woman, despite your family's objections, and even had a child with her. Something happened to the Silver Ashes, and soon after your wife left Cherig to with daughter in tow, this affair was kept within the Tri Clans, but it is no secret to us. <laughs> I see your nose is as sharp as ever. I'll take that as a compliment. I'm here to tell you about your daughter, the girl named Rosalind. What the fuck? Weird. What happened to her? You better not be taking advantage of the situation. She has nothing to do with our clan's business. I'm not here to settle any old scores, but her untimely return is really unfortunate. Do you know where she is right now? She's probably already in the sights of the Victorian spy. Uh oh. <laughs> Finally! But the cable car only goes up this far? And I have to climb the rest myself? Well, summon isn't that far away anyway. I could still see a few tourists earlier. But now there's no one else around. White everywhere. Sheesh, it's a little scary. Huh? How oh, unlucky. What was that? Ever since I came to Kerrig, not a single thing has gone smoothly. Who's that? C come out! Don't even think of scare me! Is that a hole? Who would be so bored as to dig a hole by the trail? No, this can't just be a hole. It's a trap! Sure enough, a trap indeed. Watch your step, madam. Also, if it's not too much of a bother, can I trouble you to pull me up? That's crazy. Okay, well, that was easy. <laughs> uh, grab my hand. <laughs> ah, all right. <sighs> we met on the train back there, but I never imagined you'd save my life here. How unfortunate, or how fortunate, for you to be here to lend me a hand. Who knows how long I'd be stuck in there otherwise. Thank you very, very much for your altruistic uh, uh, assistance, Madame Rosalind Tatyanovna Lorena. <laughs> What a name. Uh, well, wasn't much. Don't mention it. You definitely don't look like a local. So I'm guessing you're a tourist going up the mountain? Precisely. So why didn't you follow the main road instead of falling into a pitfall out here in the forest? What were you going to do if I didn't happen to pass by? I was merely attracted by the scenic view. I didn't expect to run into a trap like this in the snow. If you hadn't happened by... If hadn't happened by... Perhaps I would have stayed here for a while longer. I'd call myself first, and then before figuring out how to climb out myself. Wow, that was an awful sentence for me to read. But now, I see how fortunate I am. Hmm. Madam Lorena. Madam Lorena, are you going to continue your journey up the mountain? Huh? Yeah, I am. We could travel together for a while, if you wouldn't mind. I'd like to admire the view of Carrig's mountains from the summit as well. Sure. I don't mind. Let's go. We still have a long way to the top. That was... Riley. 
I just checked our traps and saw a pitfall collapse. Pitfall collapse. Thought we caught something, but when I took a look, took a look, <laughs> there was nothing inside. Guessing it might have escaped. You see the man who passed by earlier? Doesn't he look like the guy Terriels asked us to look out for? You mean the one Degenbrecher asked us to find? All dressed in black, pretentious looking, wearing a hat and hiding his face? No doubt about it. Come, let's hurry back and tell Degenbrecher. Hey, uh, say, I still don't know your name. Aren't you guys pretty particular? Particular about, uh, introducing yourselves when you first meet? An oversight on my part. You may call me John Smith. What a fake ass name. <laughs> or anything you prefer. John? The name John Smith. What do you think of it? it? Sounds right out of a spy movie I watched with the doctor. Yeah, that was definitely the name of the spy guy. I remember he had a really pretty sidekick too. So John, you... Never mind. Come up to this makeout point all alone it means you're definitely single. Fascinating coincidence, right? All right, <laughs> let's get back on track. I figure we still have a while to go before the summit. I heard it gets colder the higher you go, and it's pretty hard. To, it gets pretty hard to breathe too. So you tired yet? Need a break? Please don't worry about me. Do you need to rest, Madam Lorena? Nah, I'm good. Got some real stamina, huh, Mr. Spy? <laughs> John Smith? It changed his name from Trilby Asher to John Smith. Seems like you really deceived him. I fabricated no lies, Degan Brecker. There's no slipping your average falsehoods by a Trilby Asher collecting information for his duke. But I'm fully aware that these types usually know suspicion best. The heir to the Polaroche clan has secretly returned to the country is a reality he first discovered by himself, so he'll believe it. And will definitely be watching Rosalind Tatyanovna to Larina. Okay, I'm not gonna even try that again. Your guesses are always right. The girl's already on the mountain, and Rotados has contacted Arctaz. I hear tell that the Trilby Asher is also on his way up. He's hiding from me. No matter. Just make sure he remains focused on the girl. It's time for you to move as well. Fine. I'll treat it as a after meal exercise. However, after are you sure that the doctor won't mind you letting a Trilby Asher close to the girl? He's a spy, not an assassin. What's he at what he's after is information, not a life. Is that how you plan to explain it to the doctor? <laughs> the doctor, I shall offer my apologies. You certainly owe them. How I act is unimportant. <laughs> Rather, I'm more curious. Degenbrecker, you remember the doctor? Sharp's a good opponent. Strong, stronger than most of those clumsy knights. Clumsy knights. There's no harm in nothing. And Jesus, there's no harm in noting down someone who has the respect of a warrior like that and can also make you suffer. You're curious about the doctor? You could put it that way. All right, that'll chat there stops here. I'm going to work. Well, I mean, she already joined my team, so. Hurrah! <laughs> We're finally here. Whew. We must have climbed a few hours. I'm beat. No wonder everyone quits halfway. That was exhausting, though. The view up here is really pretty. Isn't that Lake Silver over there? <laughs> the Karagonder statue looks smaller than my thumb from up here. He's like, <gasps> <laughs> Lake Silver freezes over in the winter and resembles a pure clear gemstone when viewed from this peak. As such, the locals here believe the lake is a precious stone bestowed by Karagonder. Truly a view you can only see from this such a height. It does look like a gem. Oh, you can even see the station over there. Uh huh. There's actually plenty of railroads in Jarek, but the trains all look like toys from here. I wouldn't call this plenty for a country that's still developing. It might seem like a lot, but that's because Sil Lake Silver and the Karagander statue are here. There might be more roads around Carlin. 
There might be more roads around Carlin, uh, currently, but the operating lines will all pass through and transfer here. They will, won't they? Hey, John, you still with us? I need a favor. You help me see if there are two trees growing into each other, into each other around here? They should be old, with intertwining branches, and they look pretty strange, too. It would be my pleasure. Appreciate it. You know, John, aren't you curious why I'm looking for those trees? Or what I'm doing up here on the mountain? I molded over and decided to handle things the old-fashioned way. What? Fess up, and don't move. What is the meaning of this, Madame Lorena? You're not supposed to say that line yet. I haven't even done anything to you. Spit it out, though. You've been following me for ages, just following. What are you after? I don't understand. Quit playing dumb. I don't remember telling you my name. This is a misunderstanding. You know the Viscount Harold Craigavon and I have history together. It was he who told me your name. Oh? You think I'm stupid? I never told him my full name either. And you managed to climb up the summit without taking a single break. There's no way you could have fallen into a simple hunter's trap. Even if you did, you could have just climbed out. Anna and the girl. Anna and the girls always tell <laughs> me to think before I act. But I have to say, sometimes there's no use in thinking too much either. You're much more careful than I expected, Madame, Madame Lorena. So you admit it? John Smith is probably a fake name too, right? Too, right? Maybe you really are a spy. What if I said yes? You'd be pretty bad at your job. Because even though I could tell something was up, your accusation is absolutely correct. It's true. I've been quite careless, and life in Carrick has made me so. I have considerable freedom here, and there aren't many who pose a threat to me. Ha! Look at you talk. I'm warning you. You better behave, and don't move an inch. You're standing on the edge of a cliff, and there's nothing but snow under your feet. I just have to stop my feet to tend you falling, and I can't promise I'll catch you if that happens. Alright, Madame Lorena. I'll come clean. Yesterday. Victorian scum! Uh-oh! Arctaz! <laughs> Arctaz is here! You stay away from her! Whoa, where did, where did you come from? Uh, uh, wait! Watch your footfalls! The snow! What? Rosalind! Grab my... It's somewhat funny, but Arctaz is clearly charging towards me. Could Rosalind really have come here for something? No matter. He's coming and I can only jump. The Black Knight. All rested up? Not yet. That's not good. You'll be less fun in the fight. Hmm. Going straight into it? Problem with that? I'll get straight to my point too then. You convinced the Viscount that everything on the train was a misunderstanding. I was only half convinced at the time. But now, I know that even the stately Black Knight tells lies. The only That only proves that you don't know me at all. There's still time to turn around and go down the mountain for a nice lunch. I'm sorry, but I tend to throw myself wholly into my work. Let me still get Rosalind's a rotten girl. We don't want to play with her. She's a freak without a papa. Oh, that's fucked up. Rosalind's a rotten girl without a papa. I'm not a rotten girl. I won't let you call me that. Yeah, she hit us first. She's a bad kid. Go, let's get her. Get her. If you want to fight, you'll get one. I'm not scared of you. Damn, she's beating the shit out of some kids. I'm not a bad kid. I'm fine with just my mamochka. I don't need a papa. I don't need a... Well, that's fucking sad. <laughs> oh, that's so pretty. Huh. Didn't expect I'd fall at first into them. The trees. They were here all along? Two trees growing into each other. This has to be them. Okay. That should do it. Now that mom's business is done, I'll... Gah! Nope. Can't climb back up. Snow's too thick and the hill's too steep to make it back up with my bare hands. Uh, there's only this cliff here left to try. Oh, wait! Rosalind! Uh-oh. Here's the papa. <laughs> Get away from there. It's dangerous. Okay, okay, I'm getting away. You stay put too. You can't move your legs, right? Just take 
a rest and don't push yourself. Just a scratch. Not like I'd ever let you fall. Those Victorian bastards actually dragged you into their plans. I won't let them get away with it. So that guy is really a Victorian spy? He will... He didn't actually do anything to me. <laughs> It'll be too late when he does. I'd have beat him so badly he wouldn't dare to set foot in El Roche to land ever again. If only we didn't have such bad luck. Before he came out of nowhere, I was gonna about to tie the bastard up and teach him a lesson. Whatever. Let's just drop it. Back there, you. Ugh, I hate it when people take their sweet time beating around the bush, so I'll just ask. Why did you move to protect me when we fell? And that Victorian guy, what was he talking about? Something to do with who somebody is? Rosalind, I know you might find what I'm about to say hard to accept, but... Tatiana and I, your mother and I, met in the summit of this mountain. You and Momochka... You mean your... That's right, Rosalind, you're my daughter. I fucking knew it. <laughs> and then it switches to Tegenbrecher? Or Encio's... Oh, her! What was her name? Rotados? A most unusual guest. What business has you hurrying here today, Rotados? You must know exactly what it is, Enciodes. Are you sure we can fool that Victorian Trilby Asher with our bait? The smarter our man is, the more confident is in his own judgment, correct? That's for sure. But Enciodes, here's a warning for you too. Don't underestimate people. That Victorian spy seems to be pretty misled. He's chasing Arctaz's daughter, all right, but I don't think that things are going to keep going that smoothly. What if he doesn't go according to our plans? How are we going to handle that? You must have some sort of backup plan. Arctaz's daughter deciding to return to Cherig now is indeed outside the scope of our plans. Of course, I couldn't possibly think such an improvised plan would suffice to solve our problem. Sounds like you have something up your sleeve. Let me see. Why haven't I seen Gnosis today? The bodyguard always is at your side. I heard that from my sister and brother-in-law. She hasn't hasn't been helping you train your Chogata again. You get that here you got your information fast, Rotatos. For Gnosis and Degenbrecker naturally have their own jobs to do, and if you're here to see them today, I'm afraid you'll have to leave disappointed. I'm not looking for them. Although, I uh, yes. I had a piece of Good news for Gnosis if he was here. Oh? Nothing major. You'll know about it tomorrow. He said this before, but I personally remind you I'll personally remind you, NCOs, you'd better be certain of the things of the things happening below Terragonzer's statue. It's not just about one clan silver ash. You'd do well to remember that us brown tails also have a stake in it. It's etched into our mind. Into my mind. Whether it be the Tri Clans or the Vine Bear Court led by the Saintus, Rotados, you should hold a little bit more confidence. Whether it be you, being you, me, Gnosis, or even Degenbrecker, all that we do here is for Carrig's future. That is my firm belief. I mean, at least he's loyal to the country. <laughs> Trilby Asher! You're not gonna escape her again. Run enough laps yet? She's just walking behind him. Yes. Also, I must retrieve my words from earlier, Madam Degenbrecker. What's coming to your clever little mind now? The Black Knight indeed does not lie. A brazen misunderstanding on my part. I thought young Lorena was a key to the plans unfolding in Kerrig. Were it not for that, I wouldn't have the slightest intention of establishing contact, and yet so many clues have appeared. Madam. You did not come to block me from approaching Arctaz or Rosalind. You're here to deepen the misunderstanding, yes? Done talking. Smart people always talk so much. I don't get why. I can't be bothered. Now pick up your weapon. Let me see how sharp Victoria's claws are. No, no, no. I surrender. <laughs> is there any need for us to fight? This is a complete misunderstanding. You were right. I should head down the mountain for lunch. The Trilby Asher calmly raises his hands and walks past Duggan Brecker. But as his back faces hers, he suddenly stops moving. However, this is only a small little guess of mine, Madame Degenbrecker. To the best of my knowledge, Encio is not the one to act without purpose. If Madame Lorena is truly uninvolved, I believe he wouldn't use her as bait. She is certainly not suspicious. So could it be that the Palaroche clan is behind her? Could it be there's something amiss with the Palaroche spirits? Or rather, 
The transport route they arranged for the alcohol, Madame Lorena's appearance was an unexpected affair, and it is precisely because of that that you worry that once I meet her, I might just stumble upon Clan Paula Roche in the course of my investigation and discover something I shouldn't have. This is why you perform an entire show for me. Degenbrecher does not answer and merely raises her weapons slowly. The Paula Roches are in charge of transporting various resources from Kerrig, for Kerrig, and all transport railways in the country coverage and converge on the same spot. Lake still blah, 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 blah. To elaborate, what's important is the island is in the middle of the lake underneath the Karagander statue. Perhaps there are some secrets hidden there. Would an intelligence officer divulge his own answers? No. Everyone has their own strengths. For example, you'd be stronger than most of Victoria. However, you cannot control the subtle expressions you're not even aware of you're making. I believe my guess is correct. Degenbrecker wields her weapon with no mercy in mind, but the Trilby Asher is one step ahead of her. He dodges the blast waves and the snow flying everywhere, and her murderous intent as she leaps as he leaps down the mountain. Degenbrecker gives chase. Ooh! Some crazy shit's happening now. The Burden Beast observation car is about to depart for Lake Silver. Our professionally trained Burden Beasts can bring you to the every scenic spot and all the best views. Travelers who want to enjoy the spectacular vistas to on to on the lake way to the lake. To on the way to the lake. Okay. Don't miss the chance. I need to head over to Lake Silver. Give me your fastest burden beast. You'll have to pay extra for that, sir. Name your price. I'm currently being hunted by a sinister woman. So do me a favor, friend. If someone asks where I went, just tell them you don't know, alright? I've seen something like this before on those discs my daughter sent me. Whew. That's the one. Fastest girl I got. I need to take a breath, everyone. I need to take a breath, everyone, so I'm forgetting to. And don't worry, sir. My lips are sealed. Many thanks. The Trilby Asher nimbly jumps onto the seat of the Burden Beast's back. The beast begins to move and breaks into a run towards the lake. Foreigners are so funny. I'll have to tell my girl about this when she comes back. Have you seen a foreigner dressed in a black coat? It's really happening. Sorry, I didn't... Uh, Madame Deckenbrecher? You know me? Don't you remember? Why, well, my talk... Talk me? Got stuck in the quagmire while transporting goods last year. You happened to be passing by and pulled her out. Oh, right. That happened. So, you didn't see anyone right then? Wait. Hmm? The bastard actually called you a sinister... And I even let him borrow talk me. Oh, I'm going to teach him a lesson for sure. He picks up a transceiver. Talk me, stop, that's a bad guy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Burden Beast adaptability is not to be underestimated, but the crucial trait is its robust endurance. Perhaps it would serve as a strategic resource. Eh? The Burden Beast underneath him suddenly turns restless with impatience. Madam Dagon record. Talk me's over there. Thanks. God, have I been caught? Bloody. Ugh. Give up already. I'll be watching every, whatever it is you're up to today. Even if my only desire is to see the local sites? I know Kiarig pretty well. <laughs> I can't be doing this. Ugh. That's hilarious. I'm definitely learning how to ice skate today. You've been saying that for a month already and summer's already on its way. So that's to wait for a long, long time before the lake to freeze over. And that's why I'll definitely get it down today. Okay, okay. Sorry, I need to borrow these for a bit. But hey, my skates! Here's some money for a new pair. During his thorough investigation of Kerrig, the Trilby Asher has seen many locals skating on the ice underneath the warm winter sun. He's thought that an activity like this would be somewhat enjoyable and has wanted to try it if he had time. An opportunity he unexpectedly presented itself to him, but soon he discovers he made a gross misjudgment. Oh, um, thought you knew how to skate, man. He's obviously new, so unstable. Stable? Oh, I see. Gah, saw it. Move. Huh? Whoa, someone's flying in up from above. 
Stability. Balance. Right, yes, I've got it. With a loud bang, Dagon Breaker's attack smashes a gigantic hole into the icy surface. The trophy Asher dodges the blow in the nick of time. Wow, I got it down. How delightful. I'll definitely print up this for <laughs> after I return home. Of course, I have to survive the day first. He, he actually learned how to skate? I've never seen someone get it down that quickly. Hmm. Is there a spare pair around? Why don't I lend you mine? Thanks. Do you? I do. So fast. Of course you'd know how to skate. Like, come on. It was more than 20 years ago. I remember that winter was much... Okay, so, one second. Remember that winter was so much colder than in previous years. The snow never stopped, and the wind was almost strong enough to blow you away. The weather was so bad, no one would willingly go outdoors. Everyone stayed inside with their furnaces lit from night day to night. There was always tea heating atop the stove from for convenient pick-me-ups. The burden beast sheds were specially reinforced before winter came, and the beasts huddled together, hibernating in groups. Time teams seemed to slow down in Carrig that year. Every passing day felt like a slog to go through, and yet the subsequent days would bring the same wind and snow. I was still young then, and I just couldn't bear to live that way anymore. I snuck out with a few men in tow that day, the plan to hunt in the mountains, but the snow overwhelmed us, and there wasn't a single target to be found. I got separated from the others halfway and could only continue ascending the mountain with all the effort I could barely muster. And then it was the here. I'm at Tatsyan on this very spot. Oh, okay. Gah! What lousy weather today. Don't even have a single strand of meat beast hair on my hands. That's gonna call me a... Huh? What's that noise? Huh? Who's there? Enough with your tricks. Come out and face me with the guts. If you have the guts to... Out! As if responding to Arctaz's words, a snowball falls from the tree. Branch up high and hits his head. A clear female voice rings from above. <laughs> right on target. Hey, I'm over here. Why didn't you hide, you big dummy? Y you Me? What about me? You're a funny guy. Did you think that you'd be able to hunt in weather this bad? Young man, I'll give you some advice on account for your handsome face. You should hurry home. Arctos raises his head. The snow and wind gradually subside, and bright rays pierce through the entwined branches of the trees before him, casting fragmented shadows on his face. A vaguely female figure seems to pop up from a patch of soft snow. Snowflakes scatter all around as she moves. The young Tatiana smiles as she looks down to meet the young man's gaze below. Arctos suddenly feels his eyes go dry. The snow white he's so used to is suddenly so dazzling. The sunlight was so bright that day. Oh. They fixed the thing. My cat's been tearing this thing apart a little bit, so it's not even even anymore. Like even in the slightest bit. She's so bad. She's so she's so cute, but she's so bad. Lady the cat, not Otto. Otto doesn't mess with it really. Lady, on the other hand, is a terror. Sentis, please have a look. The main body of Karagander's statue is built by his brown tails. It stands about thirty meters tall, and the adamant <clears throat> adamant materials will be used to no risk of damage for the next century at the very least. Hundreds of the devotees volunteered to work together with professional craftsmen to carve out the statue's form you see today. So it surely is the most accurate reconstruction of Karagander there is. <laughs> Although everyone is arguing about whether Karagander should be humanoid or not, 
that Boris Arctaz even nearly got into a fight over it. But I guarantee you, from today onwards, the statue will be the most eye-catching attraction in Kerrig. Mm-hmm. Thank you for all the hard work. <laughs> God. The statue is the best symbol Kerrig can show to the outside world, and it couldn't have happened without everyone's efforts. Karagander will certainly be pleased as well. <laughs> Especially with you and your sister, Madam Skurus. I've heard the both of you have spent a lot of effort on the construction and practically stayed on site until it was completed. It must have been difficult. <laughs> it wasn't much, just doing our jobs. Besides, it's much easier than being forced to study. Study? No, no, nothing. <laughs> Well, then, uh, Green Satis, uh, allow me to give you a tour. Please follow me. That's funny. Saintus, preparations for tomorrow are complete. You should return to Mount Carlin. You are nagging me again, Kiar. It's rare I get to leave the mountain, so let me stay for a bit longer. Or are you trying to advise the... Saintus on how she should act, just as the elders do, Kiar. I won't ramble away like they do. Your gravitas <laughs> only continues to increase, and there is no one to stop you from descending Carlin anymore. Yesterday you came down to meet Encios personally. If this happened in the past, the elders would have already raised a swift objection. They merely fear that I, the Saintus, will have my personal inclinations. But it is precisely because there is no one controlling me that I cannot hold any bias. And I don't have any personal biases either. Whether the people here or in the eyes of others, I must represent the whole of Kierig as Saintus, and not any specific faction or clan. Saintus, even though NCOs and I don't actually have conflicting opinions on many matters, and can agree on many issues regarding Kierig, it doesn't mean we can all be as close as we were let alone treat each other as siblings. I can't do that, and neither can he. That's so sad. It also includes my own emotions, but it is not just about that. So I thank you for preparing our meal yesterday, Kiar. But you... You need not do that again. Enya. Is it really alright to continue like this, Enya? Even though you're representing Kerrig now, there are still many who only know the, of Carlin trade. Clan Silver Ash has already started to dip their fingers in every facet of the country, and will only continue to grow stronger in the future. I have some thoughts on that. What's important right now is to develop Kerrig as fast as we can. Some matters are just unavoidable, and or things I let slide. We still need entities like Carlin trade, after all. Besides, I'm fine with Enciodes keeping himself there for the time being. But won't it be dangerous to continue like that? That's why I have my own plans. <laughs> She's doing like a derpy face. Like the little three. You mean the new school you've been in charge of for the past few years? And the reforms over the Vine Bear Court? <laughs> it's fortunate I realized how many... So We have so many wise people here. Compared to a Keurig with the voice of the soul of Saintus or the single clan of Silver Ash, wouldn't it be better to have a Kerrig with a myriad of voices of Kerrigander's people? It's the same as prayer. Didn't you say that making your wishes out loud instead of keeping them in your heart would let Kerrigander hear them in earnest? I hope more people will get the chance to voice their hopes in Kerrig. This is what I wish for, my prayer to Kerrigander. Well, that's a good wish indeed. It will certainly reach Kerrigander. That's great to hear. Will you help me, Kiar? Of course. Didn't we agree as much already? I'm your maid, after all. Thank you, Kiar. Do you really want to thank me? Why not? Huh? Oh dear. They're headed this way. Kiar? Is someone headed our way? Yes, with an aggressive aura to boot. They're fast. They're heading here. It feels like a fight is about to erupt. Will there be any issues if it happens near the statue? Who knows? Anyway, you should return, Grey Saintus. We also need to send someone to inform Madame Sirius of our, as well. It'll be bad if you or someone else gets hurt. I see. What about you? I will say. If something happens, uh, it would be terrible if something happened to damage. 
<laughs> it would be terrible if something happened to damage Karagon or statue. So let me stay here to keep an eye on things and I'll make sure nothing big happens to the statue. Char. Hold on, you can't be. Hmm? Oh, they're here. I'll say no more. Saintus, I have to go watch them. Hey, Kiar! She's gone. She's definitely... Opportunity to do a little something to the statue. <laughs> She's gonna destroy the face so they have to remake it. Is she that unsatisfied with the statue's face? <laughs> oh, that's good! Oh, that's funny as fuck. Oh? Uh-oh. This part's easier to walk in without an as many trees around. Careful, the snow ahead is pretty deep. Hey, you, are you really my papa? I mean, Momochka said... Tatiana mentioned me? What did she say? Not much. I didn't even know I still had a papa until I was grown. Thought he might have died long ago. That's sad. I thought that there, that was the reason she never mentioned a father. And she never really brought up Kerrig before either. We've been just the two of us for all those years. I never thought... Really? Maybe she she still resented me. As she should have. After all, I was the one who let the both of you back down back then. I deserve her resentment. It seems Tatiana lived a good life, even without me. That's sad. Before I came here, she told me how to... So feels different in Kerrig. That's so sad. Sad. The snow you find on the mountain summits is different from the snow down here. She told me, Kierig is my home too, that even though I grew up in Ursus, I was born here. Tatiana, that sure is something she would say. She liked the summit snow so much, and always told me how different it was. It's a pity a thug like me didn't get it back then. <laughs> I don't get it either. But I remember she told me, I might have forgotten what happened when I was small, but those experiences don't just disappear. She always said, everything you've been through will always be shaping you as a person. That's also a true statement. Even if you forget it, its influence remains. She said the Rosalind of today is, has every stage of her life to thank. And even the little insignificant things that happened in between have also greatly contributed to who I am today. And that's why, even if she couldn't make it here, she hoped that I could at least know a part of me came from Kerrig. That's what she said, and that's why I'm here. Tatiana. When your mother and I first met here, we... You could say it was a mutual attraction. It didn't take long for us to fall in love. I hoped to marry Tatiana and spend the rest of our lives together. I really was looking forward to it. I've never wanted anything as much as I did to be with her. But thanks, that was no easy feat in Carrick back then. But why? If you liked each other, then just stay together. It can't get any simpler than that, right? Yes, you should have been. It should have been the simplest thing to do. But Rosalind, you don't understand Kerrig. At least the way Kerrig was two decades ago. We're still secluding ourselves in our little corner of the land, and basically had no contact with outsiders. You don't get catastrophes in Kerrig, and everyone just thought it was thanks to Kerrig under protecting her people. We believed the place was sacred, unlike the outside world where catastrophes were commonplace. I've always believed Kerrig back then was quiet and peaceful, but the way things are now, I have to admit, we were closed off and blind. Our lives were just farming, herding, and praying to Kerrigander. Outsiders were rare to see, and we weren't exactly friendly to them either. So Momochka, you know her best, I'm sure. Tatiana was so passionate, frank, ostentatious, osten ostentatious, <laughs> and didn't bother to fit in. She captivated me completely, but at the same time, she was too strange and too different for Kerrig then. Hmm. So, are you trying to tell me you held back because of that? You didn't dare to marry a foreigner? Wait, where did I come into the picture then? <laughs> where did I come into the picture then? You had me without marrying her? I'm serious, Beardy. You better not be joking. Rosalind, wait, uh, don't be hasty. It's not what you think. It didn't happen like that. Easy now. Then what happened? I... <clears throat> of course married your mother. Any, many objected to it, but it ultimately wasn't an impossible task. After all, the head of Clan Silverash married a foreigner too. My marriage would have been an embarrassment for the Polarosh clan, 
but I still managed to convince my father, our patriarch at the time, to go through with it. You met him already, Orzalind. It was him who brought you to my home yesterday. Brought you back home yesterday. Even though I was so drunk I didn't recognize you at all. I mean, that old man? Is my grandfather? Yes. I appreciate... Okay, just making sure it's still recording. I appreciate that he ultimately let us marry and kept it a secret from the outsiders, too. One of my biggest regrets is not inviting more guests to our wedding, but Tatiana told me it was fine, that she didn't care about the informalities as long as we loved each other. Nothing else mattered, as long as we could be together for good. And then, we had you. The days I spent together with you two were the best I could ever have imagined. But our good times didn't last long. The Silver Ash couple got into an accident soon after you were born. Kerrig was already in a state of turmoil due to the Silver Ash reforms, and there were many who regarded them as a thorn in their side. Most didn't dare to challenge the Tri Clan leaders directly, but attacking a foreigner in private was much easier to do. They said it was an accident, but truth be told, it was far from that simple. I don't know much about it, but I remember the doctor telling me that the Paula Roches are conservative. So, Clan Paula Roche? Must have been against the reforms, too. Yes. I'm not trying to lecture you now, Rosalind, but there are some who... Some things you have to have the right to know. Jesus. I just took my medicine, so I'm burping a lot. I'm sorry. It was beneficial for the Paula Roches to suppress the Silver Ashes then, and I alone could not have changed our decision to do so. So, we Paula Roches are the most devout believers and guardians of Kiaragondor, while the brown tails are the astute followers who make sensible decisions. While the Silver Ashes had gone astray and tried to destroy our faith in vain, putting Kerrig in danger, this was how our three clans were seen back then, and also the way the situation really was in Kerrig. And I, as the next head of the Paula Roche clan, could not harm the family's interests. There was not much I could do. And so you abandoned me in Momochka? I did not. I never abandoned you, and there's no way I would have abandoned Tatiana. But those people, would they be satisfied with a mere accident? The Silver Ashes were dead, and I married an Ursine woman. They didn't know how great Tatiana was, and didn't care for her affection towards Kerrig. She was just an Ursine woman in their eyes, an outsider representing Kerrig's doom. Rosalind, oh, I am a warrior. I've shed so much blood and have never feared anything, but back then... All I had were sleepless nights, because I finally came to no fear. I was afraid. The best choice I can make at the time was to have you leave, to go far away from Kerrig. Even if we couldn't see each other again, I, even if I couldn't be by your side anymore, for I knew the two of you could live a normal and peaceful life somewhere at least. Instead of running into any strange accidents, Somewhere I couldn't see, or even right under my own nose. So I wouldn't be left with just an accident. You... That's the story of me and Tatiana. Rosalind, I owe you and your mother too much. I, Arctaz, will never deny this. The warrior's weapon falls into the snow with a muffled sound. Arctaz takes out his poleaxe and throws it to his daughter's feet. Under the sun, it reflects both faces of the father and daughter on his blade like a mirror. Resent me. Blame me. I deserve it all. Berate me, or even strike me with this axe. I won't budge. But then, can you give me another chance, Rosalind? I don't mean to make this difficult for you. I just wanted you to know I still love you both. I did then, and I always will. My feelings towards you and your mother have never changed. So, if you're willing, Rosalind, could you call me father just once? Call you father? I, Rosalind, go to hell in your dreams. She's gonna beat the shit out of this old man, huh? R Rosalind, so you talked yourself in circles for a whole day just for that, huh? Didn't <laughs> didn't want to make things difficult for me. You even threw down your rotten axe because you're so sure I wouldn't use it to cut you open, huh? No, that's not what I. I don't care what you meant. It sounds so neat, convincing your family to let you marry, being forced to make us leave. Ha! Huh, you think I'm dumb? All I could think of hearing your story is how my watch got dealt with it all. You left her all alone in a hostile environment for so many years, and she even raised a kid for you. 
She will. This is so sad. I didn't mean to click that. She willingly put herself in danger, even with her life on the line. But you telling me in the end, all she could do was leave. This is a really pretty art piece for such a sad scene. And the sun is really bright. <laughs> Have you ever considered why she and Ursine had to endure being treated like that in your Keurig? My Momochka loved to go on adventures. She liked to try new things. She liked to explore anywhere she could. She could never stay in one place for too long. She loved making friends, loved shopping, loved to eat all sorts of food. Could your Keurig from 20 years ago even satisfy any of that? Do you care about any of these things at all? Why does it sound like you're the only character in your story with nothing else? You said she's passionate and she's frank, but I couldn't tell you we're talking about Tatiana. I'm not even gonna. Yevgenyevna Lorena at all. You're happy as long as you're. You're happy as long as you have your wife and daughter by your side. Huh. I'm blown away that you actually had the guts to say that. Tatiana. It was me. It was my. It's too late for tears. Do you know what life in Ursus was like for us? Living peaceful lives somewhere? That's enough for you? Bullshit! Do you know just how many people were talking behind our backs while Mamachka was raising me on her own? You couldn't. I grew up without a papa. Do you know how popular fatherless kids are at school? You were bullied? They dared? Save it. No one dared bully me. But listen, it had nothing to do with you. It was thanks to my fists. Even General Zima helped me more than you ever did. Ever since I was small, I knew I had to rely on myself because I didn't have a papa. I knew I had to count on my fists to sh shut shut up those cowards who only knew how to use their mouths. Do you know how many fights I got into growing up? <laughs> how could you even? Rosalind, I... D you don't have to speak. It's pointless anyway. I just wanted to tell you, I don't care whether you were compelled by Kirk's circumstance or were trying to bear whatever burdens you had. Since, you, since you've since you been missing from our lives for over a decade, there's no need for you to step up now. My papa failed to show up back when I was still wanted one. And now, I don't need one anymore. You're still hoping I'll forgive you? Still hoping to use me as a bridge to reconnect with my Mochka and have her forgive you too? Dream on! No, I wouldn't dare make such an unreasonable demand, but I, I just wanted to do something for you. No, hold on. Rosalind, what did you just say? Have your mother forgive me? But isn't she, isn't your mother dead? You're cursing her too? Who told you she was dead, huh? But didn't you say you brought her remains back here and you've been using past tense? Right, remains. Rem remains? Uh, hold on. Let let me check. Uh, I mean, what was it? I brought a, back a token of hers? Man, the Keurig language was just hard as hell. I know my pronunciation's a little off, but the tenses might be hard. But is that bad? Tatiana's alive? She doing well? Super well. She broke her leg in a fall right before our trip. That's why I'm here on my own. But what happened in Chernabog a few years ago? Forget it, you wouldn't even understand, even if I told you. I'll keep it short. I ran into some trouble a few years ago, and Ramochka ran straight into a catastrophe to find me. I was pretty lucky to get rescued back by Rhodes Island, but she contracted oropathy. She was in Chernabog when it was exploding? How could that... So where do you live now, Rhodes Island? Right? They can treat or oropathy. So, are you two staying with them now? Are they treating you well? I know the doctor there. Right, right. I'll get into contact right away. Give me a break. You can't possibly know the doctor better than I do. Whatever. We'll pick this back up later. Another word and I'll lose my temper again. What's important now is to find the way out of here. And it's no good to let the Victorian run around either. Actually, I came up with an idea that was going to tell you about, but you interrupted me. What? How do we get out? Over there. You stand on that spot. But Rosalind, that's just a cliff, huh? 
Of course I know that. Little stands behind the man claiming to be her father. She raises the leg again and kicks him in the back without a shred of hesitation. Artas, completely unaware, only has a split second to look at her as the startled expression before his figure slips and falls down the cliff. <laughs> ah! Rosalind, careful, it's... Oh. Damn, you're pretty loud. Stop yelling, you sound like I was going to end you. I took a look earlier, and the short drop wouldn't do much with all that snow below. What's wrong with you, Kierigs? Do you guys not do any snow jumping here? Ah, right. Hey, totally unhandsome beardy. <laughs> Don't forget to settle your child support for the past decade or so. I'll send the bill to your clan later. <laughs> that felt great. And now, hmm. I'd better tell the doctor and the rest of what happened here, just to be safe. <sighs> I was supposed to be a tourist here, though. What the hell am I doing? Oh, I got through. Doctor? Are you the here yet? Yeah, I'm fine. But there's something I need to tell you. Hey, maid. Everyone else has already scampered off. Why are you still here? Shouldn't you have left as well, madam? Serious? Scurious? I don't know. Do I really have to? Just because you tell me to? The statue is the fruit of everyone's labors. If anything happened to it, how could I break the bad news to them? Is it the fruit of everyone's labors? Or Enciodes? No wonder I saw the saintess hold you back just now. I think I saw her tell you something, too. You hardly sound surprised. I'm not an idiot. She looks completely blindsided. How, how could that possibly be? It's just that looking at it from her perspective, the best position she can be in is knowing a little bit, but not too much. And so she sent <clears throat> you to go for the last mile for her, huh? Well, what is it then? Oh, well, the people currently drawing close. One is Degenbrucker, while the other is the Trilby Asher from Victoria. A Trilby Asher? He couldn't... No, he wouldn't go that far. Did the Saintess ask you to stay just so you could warn me about this? Let's go with that. Allow me to look after the statue in your stead. <laughs> no, she wants the face destroyed. This ends here. Uh, sure enough, you are the Black Knight. I will not underestimate you. But that was precisely why you should realize that you cannot best me. Oh? I like the confidence. But my patience runs thin. The way you scurry and flit about has already started to bore me. My apologies, madam. I have not... I have been derelict in my duty, if you feel that way. However, if I may speak freely, Madam Degenbrecker, I feel no murderous intent in your swings. You were invincible during your days in Casimir's. Uh, the Black Nut that... The Black Knight... Nut. <laughs> the Black Knight that struck terror into the hearts... <laughs> into our opponents with a mighty blade. But now, you're reduced to using these edgeless toys. Oh. These edgeless toys will be enough to be for the likes of you. I only ever use the Lithanian Greatsword in competitions. The sponsors demanded it. The Greatsword wielding the Lithanian Warrior. The artsless freak. Call me what you will. It matters not. But it's time to cut to stance short. You seem to have forgotten something. The reason why I started using the Degenbreckers in the first place. What? Ah! The frosty bite of her blow stops his words when they leave his mouth. The frigid winds of Cherig stabs him. Cherig stabs him. The unfeeling mountain snows crush him. And the ice cold Degenbreckers slam into him with all the force of a glacier. There is no resisting such an attack. <clears throat> this is but a warning. There are many who wish to cause trouble for NCOs, and if I could crush them all dead, there would be a lot less trouble for me. But unfortunately, there are some people who much, <laughs> who are much more useful alive than dead. You, for example. <laughs> I see. I thank you for your mercy, Madam Dagenbrecker. These weapons, I use them for a simple reason. They have no edge, so it's much easier for me to keep men like you alive. If I were to use a little more force, with these blunt weapons, most would become nothing more than minced meat. That's how it's always been from the very start. Among those who could step up to fight me, many would be easily crushed. It does not matter if you are a caster of a caster of Lithanian or a knight of Casimir's. In the end, you are the same. Faith, ideals, grit and perseverance, firm determination. They all fall before sheer brute force. 
it's hilarious. Being broken too easily is so is its own complication. The woman who took her weapon's name looks down disdainfully upon the Victorian before her. He had been by no means an easy foe to handle, so it was up to her, and only her, to face him. But even so, it has not been particularly difficult to defeat him. The road from being a destitute, destitute, artsless nobody to becoming the Black Knight, three-time consecutive cha champion, was not an easy one to walk. Compared to that, anything that came after was only a trifle. Huh. <laughs> By your standards as the Black Knight, the only, the natural-born warrior, there can't be many who aren't considered fragile. Hardly. If you had been even the slightest bit more serious, I would have been put in a lot more effort. Unfortunately for me, as an intelligence officer, it is not in battle where I have to get serious. Is he still trying to run from her? Well, they've already climbed up all the way, this, all the scaffolding. These trilby ashers are skilled indeed. There's not a person in all of Kerrig who could scarper from the mountains to this island while getting hunted by Degenbrecker. Could there be many such people in Victoria? Truly, there are terrors all about these lands. Indeed, there are terrors all about these lands, and we must cope with them in our own way every day. I have a half a mind to find a replacement for myself as Saintus. Oh, perish the thought. Wasn't it you who sought to be the Saintus in the first place? You truly do resemble your brother in that regard. You both love giving yourselves things to do. I am nothing like him. Oh, yes. All right. He's very much like you. Then, is that better? Char. Yes. Do you still remember our agreement? Hmm? Which one? This is no time for jokes, Char. Yes, of course I remember. Karen Gonder need only watch over her people, nothing more. Yes. At the time, I had already begun doing some things under the table. If we depended on her even for this matter, then whether it was for it was him or me, our ideals would be put empty words and bluster. It's not quite so easy being a bystander, you know. I ask her only to be patient for a little while longer. Alright then. Although I'm not sure if she can even hear our little agreement. Anyway, I just came here. My mouth is very dry. One moment. Water. I just came to see if we could change the statue a little bit. <laughs> That's all. I can't believe you haven't given up on that yet. Oh no, we lost connection. This is one matter that I'm definitely not giving up on. <laughs> Whoa. That's so cool. She's just watching them beat the shit out of each other. Wow, I think the statue might be a bit slanted after Degenbrecker's kick just now. That Trilby Asher isn't half bad either. Him grabbing the statue's finger to adjust the balance of his body sure was surprising. <laughs> There's the real deal. What the fuck? Do you think they can help me thin out that face a bit? <laughs> I was far too naive from the start, thinking that it didn't matter that what I looked like on the outside made me not really care much about my appearance. After many interactions with others, <laughs> she's just like, like, I wonder if they'll knock down my face. <laughs> After many interactions with others, my aesthetic <laughs> senses changed alongside the people, and so we end up with the look I have today. But those drawings and those ancient tomes persisted all the while. I should have taken those books away from <laughs> Edelwee's clan when they were out of when they were out of the house. Who expected them to suddenly decide to build a statue for Karagander anyway? Those two sure climbed up to the top of the statue real quick. Ah, that's right. Shave the cheek on the side down a little bit more. Damn it, don't shave down the sides of her hair too. I quite like those. <laughs> From this angle, it doesn't look half bad though, does it? Where was I? Right, after getting to know Enya, I started to look after my appearance more. I would always go with her when she would sneak out for walks, recommending me various cute ornaments and trinkets. After who knows how long, I started to like those things myself. Hmm, maybe we can replace that lock of hair that got shaved off with a big piece of jewelry? I should write that down somewhere. Oh, wait. Must be tough being a Trilby Asher. <laughs> Must be 
<laughs> Top being a trolley Asher looked like she was about to jump down from the top of the head himself, but then Degged Maker sent him flying with a mean kick. <laughs> oh my god! She's still just there like, hmm, yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, this is so funny. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my eyes are watering now. Now that I think about it, <laughs> those other fellows that Degenbrecker fought, I wonder if they felt the same way as this Trophy Asher, knowing that you are not truly a match, but with other no other option but to struggle for your life. I'm sure if you'll have the opportunity to get out in one piece. Until finally you realize that there really is no other such opportunity. No. <laughs> uh, those with more mercenary motivations for battle are much weaker than him. Are you satisfied? Yes. You seem to be quite pleased with what you were watching us give the statue a light trim. Is it to your liking now? It's not bad, I'd say. Good. Where are you going? Despite the fall, he's not the type to die so easily. He'll get back up soon enough. <laughs> I'll resume keeping an eye on him. You're certain he won't best you next time? He was no match for you during that fight earlier, but I fear that he had a truly... He hadn't put his... Whew, I fear that if he had truly put his heart into it, he would have proven the victor quite easily. Moreover, there's hardly a guarantee that he's not bait, correct? I'll leave that sort of thinking up to NCOs. NCOs cannot be here at this moment. Surely you know be better than me. Allow me to take the lead. You? Or to be more precise, allow the Saintess. Yar buzzes this communicator <laughs> terminal in her hand. Did you get all that, Saintess? Allow me to take the lead. You did well, Dagenbrecker. My pleasure. We'll be coming to the bonfire banquet tonight. I'm afraid not. I'm not fond of busy parties. What a shame. What did you have in mind? I would like you to watch over the, a foreign envoy. I believe diplomacy will prove more effective than force in this case. He might not actually be a foreign envoy. He might very well be. All right. I am in your hands, Saintus. Hmm. <laughs> Derpy face. Uh, you know the exit's the other direction, right? I know. What is she gonna do? That's good. Woo! Should be able to pull through, right? Alright, stop rubbernecking. Clear the way. Let's think of a way to get him out of that hole first. Based on his clothes, he looks like some kind of foreigner. I don't even think... I don't think we... <laughs> I don't think even we could handle water that cold. Ah. Hello, Harold. Hey, mind if I ask what's going on here? Some poor fellow just flew over, our, flew on over here from the island in the middle of the lake, smashed a hole right through the ice. What? Shh. Uh, all right, coming through, make way. Excuse me, thank you. That's good, that's hilarious. Harold squeezes his way through the crowd, and the moment he sees what the bus is about, he can't help but laugh. A perfect circle has been punched through the frozen surface of the lake, and in the center of that circle floats a corpse. And so it fell on to him <laughs> to come to the rescue. Uh, oh, these old bones ain't spry enough to handle that. Excuse me, anyone got some kind of stick or, or the other on hand? He's a friend of mine, and I'm here to get him out of here. Uh, nothing like that over here. Maybe you can head over to the nearby finning village. Ask someone there if they can borrow a finning pole? Fishing or finning? Okay. No need. I've got something that can help. Nice, thank- Eh, Rogland! Oh. Hey, Dadushka. Fancy meeting you here. I'll lend you my weapon. Let's get that guy out of here. What does Slido use? Let's find out. Oh. Yeah, just stab him with that real quick. It might work. <laughs> Oh, cheers! We'll help too. It's the Trilby Asher. Using Rosalind's weapon, the people work together to dredge the corpse up and out of the hole. Looks like he still hasn't kicked the bucket. 
I probably shouldn't be saying this, but if he really had died, I would have had a whole lot of, of beast shite on my hands. Thankfully, the one who did this is the same idea, so they held back a bit. Let's get this fellow somewhere warm for now. Yep. She not realize that it's the Trilby Asher? Weird. Okay. I'm so hungry right now. Oh, shopkeep. Allow us to borrow your fireplace for a spell? Sure. Isn't this John? He should be up the mountain. How did he get his ass kicked down here? Up the mountain? You've met him before? Yep. I met him up there. And then what? Uh, no, nothing. It'd be a pain to explain. What about you, Dadushka? Where's Arctaz? Did they separate? Prob I mean, probably after fighting like that. What are you going to do with these next two days? Me? <laughs> I'm just here to clap at the Cherigonder statue unveiling ceremony tomorrow as a Victorian delegate. After that, I guess I'll head back home straight away. If I manage to find one last opportunity before I go, I'd like to walk about and buy some souvenirs for the wife and kid back home. Sounds like you've got a lot of free time on your hands, Dadushka. When you're young, you feel like you have a thousand and one different things that you need to get done. When you're on my age, you'll learn that some free time never did any harm. <coughs> ah, the dead rise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. How's it hanging, John? Madam Lorena and the Lord Viscount. Good, good. <laughs> I was just about to have a chat with my dearly departed grandfather. The hell happened to you anyway? Uh, let's make sure I'm recording, actually, because it was acting weird earlier. Okay. The hell happened to you? It's a bit of a long story. Are you getting along with your father? Eh, all right enough, I guess. Father, did I miss something? It's a bit of a long story. Uh, seriously, what happened, John? You've managed to become chummier with Rosalind than me. Right under my nose. Hi, Enya. Finally found you. Eh, Saintus? The Saintus? Omenix? Okay. Ah, oh, Leto, you're here too. Perfect. Me? Lord Viscount, I hope you remember tonight's bonfire banquet by the lakeside. The one that will serve as a warm-up before tomorrow's ceremony? I had heard that you had been having your fill of scenic tours of Kirig lately, and I feared that you had forgotten, which is why I decided to give you this little reminder. Of course I remember. Worry not, for I shall definitely be there. Will you be coming too, Leto? To the bonfire banquet? Sure, I'll come. I believe this Trilby Asher is a friend of yours. Yes, quite. As a friend of the Lord Viscount, naturally you too are a guest of Kirig. I hope that you will do me the honor of attending our humble banquet. Whatever reason could I have to refuse an invitation from the Saintess herself? Very well, it's settled then. Dirt face. Okay, what a character. That's fucking nuts. I'm gonna get one star probably, but I don't care, really. How long do you plan on standing here? He already knows of this place. He'll turn up sooner or later. And what will you do once he turns up? Kill him. Murdering a foreign dignitary is a serious crime, you know. We shall see. Why do you go so far for Carrick's sake when you're not of Carrick yourself? I am. I, is it still considered for Carrick's sake if it's NCO's ambition? Wow, that was an awful one for me to read for some reason. Who can deny that up till now? despite him having his own lofty goals, that there is a part of them that is for Keurig's sake. That sort of praise is probably what he would least like to hear. <laughs> I, you still haven't answered my question, you know. But NCO has once mentioned to me that perhaps Keurigander truly existed, I thought to myself that maybe one day I could fight those so-called gods with my own two hands. Now I see that it was simply wishful thinking. And why is that? Enciotes has already dropped that particular plan, for one. If he had stuck to it, do you think you'd face down a goddess who just might really exist? Perhaps. Here I can only find that sort of excitement during avalanches. If I ever had the opportunity, I would definitely try it. Do you think you will win? No. I have stood against the avalanche, but I have never once triumphed. I understand. You are simply in it for the challenge, and you consider the matters that are happening on this island to be suitable for that purpose? It's hardly as, as lofty as you think. This is just who I've grown up to be, nothing more. Very well said. 
You may head back now, Degenbrecker. You will not find your battlefield here. If that is what the Sanctus wills, then forgive me for being unable to comply. I will decide my own battlefield. And what if I said that that is what Karagondor wills? I will then wonder, why are you the one conveying Karagondor's will? I am the Sanctus is made, after all. So what are you trying- <laughs> what are you saying is- What you are saying is that the will of the Saintus is the will of Karagondor? Rather, that Karagondor supports the Great Saintus's opinion on the matter. At least, that is my guess. Hmm. She's getting suspicious. <laughs> ah, the trill be Asher. The Black Knight is no fool. Rather than searching all over for me, she will instead be watching over here. She knows that I will return, and return I must. <sighs> if only I can return home alive. He's kind of consigning himself to death a little early, huh? Hmm. If I had only guessed that this place would be the center of my worries. No, how could I have guessed? How could anyone have thought that the Enciodes had the brass courage to use an entire nation's faith as a pretense for his own schemes. He truly is someone that the Duke was wise to invest in. And that Saintus, is she really not aware of the single matter going on behind the scenes? What's going on? I still don't know! What the fuck is happening, guys? And Dagenbrecker? She couldn't possibly be quite so single-minded as to have missed the forest of truth. The tree? What? The forest for the tree. This is a rock? Why have you come, traveler from afar? I am but a man of steadfast faith. <laughs> Here to admire her visage. She tires and wishes to rest for today. Come back tomorrow. I heard that Karagondor welcomes believers from afar. Do you mean to say that this is no longer the case? The pi- the pious? Need not prove themselves, pious and not need to prove themselves, while the insincere, insincere need to waste their words. You are not to take a step further today, says she. And if I insist... What? <laughs> Back to where you started, bitch. <laughs> the trophy asher looks all about him. The main path by Lake Silver is bustling with activity today and oh most days and today's no exception which is why it causes no small amount of turned heads when he suddenly appears out of nowhere <laughs> suddenly he smacked himself in the face hard hey when did that guy pop up there look he's slapping himself for some reason think he's some kind of lunatic <laughs> the trophy asher takes no note of the people around him simply turning his body in the direction of the statue of Karagondor. In an imitation to those devout followers, he performs a quick gesture of prayer. Kiragoner's blessing be upon you. This was the first time he had done such an act since stepping into this land. After doing so, he turns to leave without a moment's hesitation. He had not yet noticed that, from not too far away, there's a pair of eyes watching his every move. Dagenbrecker isn't a very talkative woman, but so she probably won't tell any about this, would she? I don't think I went too far either, did I? Uh, I've said this before, but staying a spectator is harder than it looks. I bet it would be, especially when you have the power to be able to help your people constantly. She sighs once more, then turns, looking every bit like a woman grumbling about the troublesome requests of her younger sister before blending into the throng of people like she was never there. She just teleports him away. That's good. I like that. Stop right there. Huh? Hello? Captain? Vintner? Vintner? Who are you? Well, it's like this, see? There's going to be a banquet held by Lake Silver tonight, right? I'm here to deliver the wine. Wine? Oh, Vintner. Okay, like wine vintage and whatever. Okay. I heard the news about that earlier. Come with me. I'll need to verify this. All right, sure. Stand over there. Don't move. Pat him down. All right. Boys, I'm just trying to drop off some drinks. We really need to do this whole song and dance. These are the special circumstances. I appreciate your cooperation. Cooperation. <laughs> if you really are, <laughs> if you are, if you really are who you are, 
if you really are who you say you are, you will offer our deepest apologies later. Ah, I'm afraid that you two won't have the chance to do that. What? The vintner presses down on a device hanging by his waist, and the security cameras in the room begin to rotate wildly as if possessed. Gah! There's an enemy! Nice try. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> After the two shkazata fall for this vintner, <laughs> swiftly begins to operate the terminal. As he meddles with the terminal, the cameras in the corners of the room briefly halt before returning to their normal activity. From my earlier investigations, I knew that Kerrig managed to get a previous gen OS, but it's got two fatal flaws. I recommend you upgrade to the latest generation when you can. Naturally, if Kerrig were to become part of Victoria, we would provide one free of charge. Okay. He breathes a sigh of relief, but then immediately doubles over. <laughs> Looks like my wounds are about to reopen. The destructive power of the Black Knight is no joke. Yeah, I, I knew it was the Trilby Asher. She can hardly be everywhere all at once. That's her Kiragonder. I'll worry about that later. At least she didn't prevent me from finding this place. He stands up, ambling towards the nearby barrel of wine. The barrel is heavy, but as he draws close, it is immediately obvious that there is a distinct lack of scent of wine in the air. <laughs> What is stored in the barrel was not wine, but metal. I had investigated the amount of metal Kerrig is procuring, and at the time, nobody had any issue with the numbers. But if, say, the metal was that was to be used in the construction of the statue was not all put towards that purpose, where, then, did all the remaining metal go? And where is this metal in the barrels slated to go next? <laughs> I said that while the Black Knight's fearsome, she's not as strong as to cut through steel like butter. And I was right. He turns back to operate the terminal once more, and his fingers unceasingly type away at the keyboard. Various charts and diagrams continuously pop up on the screen above him. After a long, long while, he finally stands up. Anyways... Yeah, I knew it. There's still a few hours to go to the banquet. So allow me to give the quick inspection, NCOs. Are you really so much a fool that you would dare to stand against Victoria? That's crazy. She should have just killed him. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You saw your father, and then you gave him a kick. Yep, felt real good. I wasn't that angry to begin with, but once I saw that he looked what that he looked like what I assumed my papa would look like, I had a sudden urge to give him a real big kick. Haha, <laughs> atta girl. Speaking of which, I had the pleasure of meeting Patriarch Arctaz once when I was just arriving in Kerrig. But I haven't seen him since. If I remembered how he looked, you wouldn't have had to wander around willy-nilly to find him. Hey, are you trying to say that I actually do look a lot like him? Hmm. Well, I think about it more. Thanks to that beard of his, even if he had, if even I had been drinking with him yesterday, I don't think I would have been that easy to notice. What? Hmm. Well, now that I think about it more, thanks to that beard of his, even if I had been drinking with him yesterday, I don't think it would have been that easy to notice. I told him already that bearded look just ain't isn't in these days. What if he shaved it off? Eh? Oh, nothing. Don't mind me. Why is he so curious? Are you propositioning him? <laughs> hey, look over there. That's a whole lot of burden beasts. I'm kidding. It's a joke from my vampire series. Oh, the villagers from nearby are here too. I'm thinking that it might be a mighty fine night. Oh, it's from earlier. Eh? There's a burden beast bumping its head against you. Oh! If it isn't my lovely Lily. Oh, it's Lily! Haha, <laughs> that girl ran over the moment she spotted you. Good girl, good girl. Hey, Dadushka, this is the Lily you were talking about. This is the Lily you were talking about? Indeed, she was the first burden beast I met when I arrived in Kirig. And she has become, dare I say, my dearest friend ever since I arrived. Oh, aren't you a little cutie pie, rough ring? Oh, that's so cute! I heart Kirig. I'm special. This is so cute. I love this. Oh, shit! Sorry. Rough brang. Ooh, can I pet her? But of course, Lily's an affectionate girl. Affectionate homing. <laughs> I think she likes you. <laughs> Rosalind, it seems you really do have Keurig blood in you. Whoa, she's licking me. Do you want to ride her? Can I? 
It should be all right, right, Leonis? Oh, it's him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, kid. All right. Help me up a bit, Dadushka. Okay, grab onto my hand in one, two, three. Excited rumbling. Wow, Lily's really steady. I think I'll go on a stroll with her. Go on ahead now. <laughs> she sure is a lively little kid now, isn't she? You don't need to tell me. My daughter was the same at her age. Here for you. This is some of our best cheese. Just finished ripening today. I remember that you were going to back home pretty soon, so I whipped up this block just for you. I'd hoped I would see you tonight, so I brought it along just in case. I appreciate the gesture, but are you sure it's all right? Doesn't your family need the cheese to sell? Oh, I think nothing of it. You've helped my family and our burden beasts plenty. I'd say that I owe you for medical expenses. So, here, consider this cheese your veterinary fee. <laughs> Alright, if you insist. Couldn't ask for a better parting gift, if you ask me. Truth be told, when you first showed up, we were pretty wary of you. But after the, after a whole month with you, I feel like we're best of friends. So I'm not I'm not going to get too mushy with you. Just remember that the next time you're in Kerrig, 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 will always be <laughs> space at the table for you at my farm. I keep saying Kerrig like the coffee maker. I will. I really will. Ah, Leone. Leon? I'm just saying Leon. Fuck it. I should have started that saying that from the start, but... Are you acquainted with the Lord Viscount as well? Ah, Saintus. Yes. Harold here has become a right, right celebrity here in our little village. I see. I hope that you and your burden beasts continue to enjoy yourselves. Oh, please. Getting to meet the Saintus is plenty of joy for me already. This banquet sure is festive. Holy Saintus. Sorry, it's 2 a.m. Indeed. Though, there will be plenty of pomp and circumstance at the ceremony tomorrow. The populace at large will only be able to watch it via the news cameras. Which is why I arranged for this banquet. To allow all of Keurig to enjoy the holiday cheer. You truly are a great saintess. May I ask where the Trilby Asher might be? He's a bit of a somber fellow. Not a great lover of festivities. <laughs> I would hardly say that, my lord. While it's true that I'm not a fan of festive crowds... That has hardly anything to do with my personality. You, I'm afraid that I was observing Keurig's magnificent scenery and lost track of time. Do forgive me, Holy Saintus. I'm glad to hear that you appreciate Keurig's natural beauty. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's banquet just as much. Indeed I will! I keep changing the voice for the Trilby Asher and I don't know why. Oh, that's right, Harold. I have some wine here. Does your friend here drink? Come, let's have a cup or two together. I... The Trilby Asher surreptitiously shares a hand signal with Harold. It is a military hand signal indicating withdrawal. Terribly sorry, loans. I'm afraid the drink will have to wait. High pitched spraying. I'm back to Dushka. Huh? Where'd he go? He's in he got pulled away by his friend in black. John? No way. I do hope that you managed to enjoy yourself at tonight's banquet, my lord. I sure was up until you called me away. Good, because I do not think you will enjoy the next, this next step. Out with it! There's a secret underneath this Karagander statue at the heart of the Lake Silver. Soldiers really hate the word secret, Mr. John Smith. Isn't this your lot's job to figure out these sorts of things rather than ours? Unfortunately, I have no way of solving this particular issue myself. Not words I expected to come out of a Trilby Asher. I had run into a few obstructions. Wait, am I hearing you right? You failed? No. Though I am unable to ascertain what exactly is down there, the very fact that I am encountering resistance is proof that I am on the right track. Trilby Asher takes out a stack of loose papers from the inner recesses of his coat. Within the stack are photographs, assorted documents, and some handwritten notes. Harold takes a few to look at himself, and immediately, the smile on his face freezes. Goods loaded onto the wine transport carriages. The true flow of the Orion supply chain. Or or Orion. Uh, transport route. Itinerary. What? Itineraries. Duh. Bro, I swear I can speak English. 
All his intelligence points towards a single fact. Under the island, at the heart of the lake, lies in sealed secret. No, not just his, but the greatest secret of this entire nation. What is it? Just say it! She was spying on them. She's gone. I know. Allowing the daughter of a Keurig politician to hear that was not good. I'm a soldier. I only care about real battles. This is something that you intelligence agents should be handling. She barely even knows whose daughter she is. What can she possibly do? If this makes her recognize that it is brewing in the nation and make her cut her visit early, this is not necessarily a bad thing. She is, in the end, merely a citizen of Ursus. I am not one to make an enemy of that empire. Perhaps I misjudged you during our earlier meetups, my good Trilby Asher. You and me both, my lord. Perhaps it is a good thing that people like you and I are wary of one another. Some real words of wisdom you got there. My next words might not be those of wisdom you so adore. You cannot go home empty-handed, my lord. I know. I hope you truly understand that this is the price NCOs must pay her grace. He has crossed the line. Is that what you tell yourself to make it feel better? You're far better at that sort of thing than I am. Oh, great hero. Oh, great hero. The banquet continues. People gathered around the bonfire, singing merry tunes and dancing, welcoming the arrival of tomorrow. In their minds, tomorrow will certainly be a bright, jubilant, festive day, one that would compel anyone to break out into ecstatic dance and vibrant song. I'm probably the one, only one in the room who doesn't feel that way, thought Harold. He suddenly feels a little, a little chilly. The last time he felt such a chill was the very first time he set foot in this land. He felt like he, what he really needed was a bottle of wine. Perhaps a whole barrel. Harold, I've been waiting ugh, ages for you. If you were any later, I would have finished the entire bottle myself. <laughs> Look at me. Do I look like the sort of person to miss out on a fine drink? Come, tonight we drink till we drop. He's forgotten some of the finer details of what he did that night. Perhaps he danced a merry jig from his hometown by the bonfire. Perhaps he grabbed some unlucky fellow to sing some folk songs of Kierig with. Ah, that's right. He seemed to have spent a good time... A good amount of time discussing the finer points of Kierig veterinary techniques with a guardrail. How did he get to this point? Alas, nobody knows. At the very least, he remembered the way back to his bed. However, the distance between the banquet and the bar barracks is no short stroll. First, he had to follow along the lakeside path until it joined with the main street at the center of town. Along the road, he would run into many elderly folk talking a post -meal taking a post-meal walk and see children playing atop the ice. From here, he could see the distant statue of Kiragander, and all along the roads, there were viewing stations set up just for gazing upon it. They were bustling places filled with... They were bustling places filled with people at all times. Some prayed towards Kiragander, while others took selfies. There are times where, when two diametrically opposed ways of life will clash, but most times they will coexist in some sort of harmony. Such was the way that many things in this land. Continuing on, he passed through the main street, which got busier by the day. He distinctly remembered noticing that some of the stores that were there when he first arrived in Keurig had changed ownership. In a small alley close to the center of the road, there was the latest restaurant that he had fallen in love with. This restaurant had managed to meld together the flavors of Victoria and Keurig together into their dishes, and suffice to say, he was a big fan. The restaurant was run by a young couple, the wife of a Keurig native who had learnt the culinary arts in Victoria, meeting her spouse in the process. The two of them started a family, returning to Keurig to set up their restaurant, hoping that they would be able to have a better life in this flourishing land. After the alley, he had to cross a highway, still under construction, then a patch of woods, before arriving at the hillside where he could look out over the whole land, where a roaring fireplace awaited him. At the moment, when he stepped over the edge of the road onto a soft soil, he became quite aware of just how much further his destination has to go before considered being considered well developed.
but walking through the tranquil woods immediately put a stop to that thought. <laughs> Though he often jabbers away with the older men, the other men, other old men, whenever they met. Lately, he finds himself thinking back to the time of his youth, the golden wheat fields rustling in the evening breeze, his younger self running about within as though he were to, without a care in a world. Yes, without the single care in the world. As he walked across the icy ground, as he followed, as he found himself cloaked in a snowy silence, one thought came to the forefront of his mind. He was no longer young. Whew, you reek of booze. Boss, you're not going to get roaring drunk. If you're going to get... <laughs> okay. If you're going out to get roaring drunk, can you at least bring some back for your boys? Boss, look here. These damned burden beast blind boxes. We've gotten three full sets now, except the mystery variant. This has got to be some kind of scam by Carlin Trade. He pulls out a remote control from the deepest recesses of his room, constantly flicking through the various slides of a projector. Every single one has information regarding Kierig. Possible marching routes, the locations of military bases, the distribution of sentry posts, investigations of the Shigata. Within a week of him arriving in Kierig, all this intelligence was already neatly organized before him, and yet again and again he forced himself to stop thinking about these matters, to the point that he has managed to memorize most of it. He throws aside the remote control and grabs a collapsible chair close at hand, throwing himself deep into the embraces as he closes his eyes. Rather than looking at maps and military sand tables, he much prefers listening to the subtle sounds of snow falling on branches, making them rustle and creak under its weight. It reminds him of the sound of waves of wheat rustling under the moonlit breeze. Boss, what's the matter? Don't mind him, he's probably just drunk off his gourd. Let's get back to what we were talking about just now. I heard that the Leithanians want to build a new city, mostly to get foreign trade going, check out the preferential pol policies, the calculated returns for investments are unreal, but reality never goes the way he wished it to. Just like how his father always yelled at him to get out of the wheat field and to continue his training at home. Just like when his pipe stem loses a piece without him knowing. Just like how his la lost leg never returned. <sighs> the hubbub in the barracks fades away as his men all look towards him. His men. His lads. His soldiers. Everyone change to live ammunition. Then be on standby. At the break... At the break of... <laughs> at the break? At the break of dawn tomorrow, we begin our operation. Our target is the statue of Karagondar. His voice is somewhat hoarse. The rustling of wheat in the wind has stopped. Forgot that I didn't read the story. It's so calm, and then it's gonna go fucking intense. They say that Lake Silbernahers, <clears throat> Silbernahers is most beautiful during winter. Winter seals the lake in a case of ice, and from afar, it looks like all the world looks. It looks for all the world like a great. What an awful line! Great gemstone, revealing a most breathtaking beauty with a brilliant sunlight. But. But if you observe from up close, perhaps you will be able to appreciate its beauty even further. There is no gem so flawless, yet so adamant. Beneath the ice, it flows. its waters yet flow. Since when did you decide to take up poetry? <laughs> hmm. Does it, according to the directives of the Vine Bear Corps, we will follow behind the Saintus, walking from the ice to below the feet of the statue of Jaringarn. Jaringander! This is hardly what I would call a short stroll, and all sorts of mishaps can befall us while we walk. Gnosis, are you worried that the ice beneath your feet will might shatter? How very unlike you. You know that's not what I'm talking about. Many of the guests of ours who are here to attend will be watching us with keen eyes. Your plans for defensive maneuvers still lack accurate information, NCOs. We are not in what you I would call a favorable situation. Allowing that Trilby Asher to approach the statue of Karen Gonder yesterday was my mistake. If we have need of it, I can go and settle things with him right now. 
Barkori has already sensed ought, ought amiss, then acting now <clears throat> would already be too late. This terrible habit of yours of neglecting the bigger picture when you take action, forget it. You and NCOs are pretty much the same. I'm not asking either of you to change your ways. All I ask is that next time, please go out, go to the trouble of restraining yourselves just a little bit. You'll save me, <laughs> you'll save me from having to rack my brain and to find ways to clean up your messes. Duly noted, Gnosis. What do you think, NCOs? I have not the strength to casually cut apart a giant statue tens of meters high. Indeed. You merely invited the doctor over, who then proceeded to nearly ruin our plans is all. <sighs> I have no desire to listen to the two of you jibe and snipe at each other with your nonsense. Bitch! <laughs> I don't know why I was going to say that. Now, about the Shigata, responsible for keeping order. They will be posted at the island ahead of time. As for who is in charge of the reception of the Victorians, there are several merchants who will take care of that matter. Notice, Gnosis, you are far too tense. We have already completed all the preparations we can do. All we can do now is wait. And wait we shall. Spring is just around the corner. Is it me trouble? No, Arctaz! I still remember when the Sanctus descended from atop Mount Carlin three years ago. That's a Jaragonder. Jaragonder! Uh, sent us her blessings, and even the NCO, that NCOs couldn't help but kneel. I do not know if we will ever have see such miracles again in these days. Sorry. <laughs> I have heartburn right now, and it's making, it's making burp weird. Seems like seeing the sights of today has hooked up, has hooked up your old memories, my friend. But Arctaz, don't you think you've been wallowing in these memories for too often these past few years? Rather than putting your efforts into sarcasm, Rotados, you should care more about today's ceremony. I felt that something was off ever since I woke up this morning. Don't you think Kiaragonder's statue looks a little bit different compared to yesterday? You brown tails were in charge of managing construction, so you'd better think of a real good explanation for the Saintus. Heh, <laughs> no need to worry about that. Hey, Arctaz, why does your face look like that? Did that Troby Asher rough you up or something? Wait, does he have a bruise? He does! Is that what that is right there? <laughs> well, it's like you said, no need to worry about that. God, the girl's real feisty. Just like Titania. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> Not bad. That's funny. Hair in my mouth. And it's tickling my tongue. Patriarch, matriarch. Everyone is present. Good. Let the people below know that they can head to their destination. Designated positions and wait for now. The Saintists will arrive soon. If anyone dares to tarnish the brown tail name at this critical moment, I won't be showing any mercy. Understood, matriarch. Wait a moment. Yucatan. Why is it just you? Where's your wife? It's almost time already. Why is she not here? Russ told me that told me this morning that she had to do a few things. She wants to prepare a pleasant surprise for you, matriarch. I'm not sure if I should look forward to a pleasant surprise from her. What could possibly be more important than today's ceremony? Can't you pick a better time to give me a headache? I'll send her a message right away. Don't worry, Matriarch. Russ is very clear on what she should be prioritizing. I should have figured that you'd be on your wife's side. All right, all right. She's no longer a girl. Guess I'll just have to wait and see what this pleasant surprise of hers is. Anyway, if she's off doing some things, why didn't she bring you along? Russ already has someone helping her out. Everyone, the time has come. The Saintus arrives. Please lend me your ears. It has been three years since the Vine Bear Court has recognized those foreign foreigners who wish to devote themselves to Kiaragonder. Kiarag today is capable of incredible growth and development, but that growth rests on the shoulders of the good folk here today alongside the toil and devotion of all Kiarag's people. I believe that you all have seen the change that has come to Kiarag these past few years with your own eyes. Kiaragonder has given her people, her children, a challenge, and we have already given her our answer. Yet these past three years were 
merely the beginning. In the coming days, we will meet with more complex situations than ever before, and Kierig will see its fair share of trials and tribulations. However, I hope that we all believe that Kierigander has not abandoned this land of Kierig, and neither will she abandon the lives of those who live upon it, for she too, she so loves her people. This great statue of Kierigander will be the main symbol of the Kierig to the outside world. At the same time, it will become a vessel for all the love that her faithful show her. Hereafter, one need not climb Mount Carlin to show one's devotion to her. You need to face towards her during your prayers. It is my wish that the faith that you have in her is not constrained by the trappings of ceremony. I believe that true faith has taken root in the hearts of all of Kierig's people. Now, I ask of you to walk with me. Walk with me under the gaze of Kierigander, towards the foot of her holy statue, where we will pray for her to bestow her blessing upon Kierig. By Kierigander. By Kierigander. By Kierigander! The many voices of the lake that cry out Kierigander's name blend and merge together. The Saintess stands at the head of the crowd and takes the first step onto the ice. The frozen lake still burn of hers shines with like a flawless gem when looked upon from afar, but only once you stand atop it will you see that this gem is covered in chips and cracks. The ice is covered in cracks, wending, wending, bending and weaving across the surface, the endlessly churning waters beneath the ice surging about together. Under the dawn light, it is as if the soul of the lake itself was wandering un about in an eternal cycle. In the eyes of the people of Kerrig, such a sight was so beautiful as to be breathtaking. Why is it so weird today? Kerrig under Saintus steps across the cracks that seemed like they were carved by the biting winds, as if walking past a millennium's worth of Kerrig's bitterly cold hardships, as if walking past its endless winter days. Because now, spring has just around the corner. I need to find my fidget thing? Okay. It keeps me sane while I'm reading. How the hell are they not here yet? Are you kidding me? The communicator doesn't work. Didn't they say they'd be getting to Karagander last night? Or Karagander last night? So they definitely catch the train today. Uh, uh, calm down, Sirius. Calm down. Whew. Okay, I've calmed down. The Saintess needs to walk across the ice and to the island. So the ceremony won't be starting quite so soon. I've still got time. Think about, just think about the look on Rotata's face when this is all over. <laughs> I've definitely got the time right and punctuality is par on is par for the course on that side a little lateness is one thing we won't be too late now for I'm sure I think the train to Lake Silberna hers should be pulling into the station right about now all right let me see the train is arriving at why is it so late Madam Sirius, the train is a local that stops at every station. It's natural that it's somewhat delayed. I don't care if it's natural. I need that train here right now. I... Damn it all. I can't just sit here and wait. Get me in touch with the station master. I want this train sped up right away. If it doesn't... If it, if it doesn't need to stop, then it better not stop. Make sure it's going at full speed, too. But, madam, if we do that, it would be greatly inconvenience the passengers aboard the train. As long as they end up where they wanted to go, it should be fine, right? Eh, well, well yes, but no buts. Munch, munch. <laughs> oh, who are you? Here, madam. Get in touch with the manager of Bang Bang Burden Beast for me. Get them to round up every single one of their free Burden Beasts right now. Anyone waiting to get on the train at the station that it passes, get them a Burden Beast to take them wherever they want. Yes, madam. Madam Sirius, is this really all right? You got a problem with it? Right, thanks for reminding me. We need to prepare a small gift for everyone already aboard the train. We'll call it a token of apology for dis <laughs> disrupting their journey. Use the souvenirs that you sell on the trains for that. All expenses can go to Clown Brown T No, wait. Put it all on my personal account. Understood. It shall be done. Declines. <laughs> I hope that's enough. No, it's definitely enough. For sure. Our card declines. Ooh. Intense music. Faster! Don't forget what we're here to do. In the back, keep pace. Yes, sir! Halt! Gather up! 
Form up. Y sir, reporting in. Second squad in formation, sir. Very good then. And third squad? Sir, reporting in. Third squad in formation, sir. Very good. Jack, have your squad bring up the rear. I want constant vigilance. Don't overlook a single enemy. Yes, sir. Good. Keep things spirits up. All squads, forward march. They answered that time for me. Is it going to be Harold? What are those Victorians up to now? Are they holding weapons? Surely not. Aren't they here to attend the ceremony or something? Have you ever seen them line up in formation like that before? Must be all just for show. But I've got to say, I don't think they've got the same look on them as they did before. By Karagonder. Karagonder protects us from harm. Reporting in, sir. We finished scouting ahead. The Sanctus has already started leading everyone to over the island. Are all men prepared? Yes, sir. All troops in formation, ready to commence operations at any time. Good. Keep them lined up and await my orders. Lake still burn a hers on a winter's day. Truly one of Kiarig's most beautiful sights. Who would have thought that the next time I clapped eyes on this wonder would be under circumstances like this? you become much gloomier these days, Harold. Have I? <laughs> you know, as they say, soft days make soft men. Lisburn, after a whole month of R&R, &R, you're still able to swing your sword around? It's much heavier than I remember. How about you, Charles? It's a battlefield for Victorian soldiers. Not much else I can do. You're right. In the decades since I joined the army, never have I met finer soldiers than you all. Am I right, Charles? I think I'm going to puke. But what else can I do? Give the orders already, Harold. Forgive me, my friends. All right, orders incoming. Everyone, forward march. Under the guise of building a statue for their goddess, the Kiarigs have been secretly transporting military goods under our noses. We will let them know the price of trying to make a fool of Victoria. Mission objective. Destroy the statue of Karagander atop the island. Yes, sir. He's my favorite character. What? The train won't be making further stops? Are you certain of this? Okay, understood. What's going on? Why didn't we stop at the station just now? I am truly incredibly sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, our train has run into a small operational issue. Until we arrive at the station at Lake Silbernahurs, the, the train will be increasing in speed and will not be stopping at intervening stations. Not stopping? This is unacceptable! I meant to get off at, for sightseeing at the next station. Me too! I was going to go and visit the local markets too. Why ever can't you stop the train anyway? We offer our deepest apologies for this inconvenience to everyone. As compensation, we have prepared for all passengers a gift of a token of our apology. All passengers may freely pick a souvenir of your choice from our store aboard this train. Whether it's specialty cheeses or a burden box blind burden beast blind box, it's all free of charge. Oh well, if there's compensation, I suppose that's alright. Ah, oh, that's right! I ask all passengers to note that there is a limited amount of gift wrapped mountain ice water, so if you would like some, please come as soon as possible. Alright, alright, no need to go on any more than that. Okay, sure, speed up the train. No stopping at the stations, whatever, just give me one of those su super expensive limited edition waters already. Hey, no cutting in line! Give me water too! Tourist traps. Twelve dollars for a bottle of water. They sure are lively today. What could possibly be so as urgent as to rush this train to Lake Silberna hers? Is it that delivers some mystery goods or perhaps people? Either way, I believe I win this hand. Dagan Brecker should have shanked your ass. The trains <coughs> The trains here have all been handled, madam. As for your orders, the premier train <coughs> next arriving at Lake Silberna hers is now running at top speed. <laughs> But are you sure that the guests you invited on are aboard that train? Of course I'm sure. It's just that if we happen to be wrong, no way, they're definitely on that train. Monch, Monch, I must ask, do you know how many, how many new relay stations we built in, holy fuck, why can't I read suddenly? How many new relay stations we built to ensure a smooth signal across all of Kiarig these past few three years? I, I'm afraid I'm not quite sure. 
Well, you've just returned to Keurig, so I suppose it's natural that you do not know. So listen up and remember this. In Brown Tail territory alone, we've built five of these top-of-the-line relay stations to ensure that the signal never breaks. That many? Yep. We also called in some professionals, courtesy of the doctor from Old Island, to help out. Just to make sure that even amongst our man many mountains, our communications will never be blocked. So what I'm trying to say is that theoretically, as long as it's within Kiari's borders, there shouldn't be any sort of communication mishap, aside from some special places. Special places? Heh. <laughs> Can't figure it out. There could it possibly be the private rooms on the train, madam? Oh no. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Bullseye. Uh it's it's the private rooms on the train. More specifically, the private rooms on the premier train from the foot of the mount Mount Carlin to Lake Silberna hers. That train has a special order from Victoria. As for the tra other trains that we have, they use that train as a prototype to copy. I mean, to study how to manufacture our own. The walls of the private rooms are <clears throat> that original train are inlaid with materials designed to insulate, to isolate the occupants from disturbances from outside. So naturally, they will cut off communication signals too. The other trains don't have this feature because, uh, because it would have just drastically inflated construction costs. I get it now. So what you're saying is, in determining if our guests are in Keurig already, the very fact that our communicators can't reach them tells us that they must be in the specific train's private rooms. That's amazing, madam. I'm learning so much about the trains as well. <laughs> Anyways, Keurig is... It, Keurig as it is now, and Keurig as of a few years ago, couldn't be more different. I'm not going to ask where you've been these past few years, Monch, <laughs> and I don't intend to pry into what you've been up to then. I don't even really care about why you didn't go back to that Gnosis either, but if you really want to be my assistant, then you'd better get used to the modern day Keurig already, and you'd better not think that I'm still the same old Russ from three years ago, can you hear me? Yes, madam. I'll do my best. Glad to hear it. Eh, why is there so many people outside? Hey, wait, aren't they... the soldiers? Get back. I said get back. All of you. Not a step closer. You, what the hell do you think you're doing? How dare you try and pull this stunt under Kiari Gonder's gaze? Don't even think about trying to ruin today's ceremony. Jack? That's you, isn't it, Jack? What are you playing at? You, you've just had a bit too much to drink, right? A word of advice for me. Today's not the time to make a ruckus. Go tell others, Jack, quick. Enough. I'm under orders to shoot dead the next person who steps forward. Ah! You know, back when you first showed up, people said that a bunch of foreign soldiers showing up in Keurig couldn't be up to any good. I didn't believe them. I even spoke up for you guys. Seems that I was blind this entire time. So this was your real purpose? Ruin our ceremony for Keurigander? Strike us down? Keurigander will not forgive you for this. You invite her wrath upon yourselves. Let her try. We were punished enough as it is a long time ago. Hmm? Those are Victorian soldiers. Something's not right. They have their uniforms on. And they've got their weapons out, too. Looks like they've been... There's been some sort of commotion outside. Please, hide yourself, madam. The black-haired girl is about to subconsciously hold out her arm to protect her employer. But before the words can even leave her mouth, Sirius proves to be a step ahead of her, covering her mouth with her own hand and pulling it into a corner. Shh! Don't say a word, Monch. We need to stay hidden. Those Victorians, didn't they say that they were here just to attend the ceremony? Hmm. I guess they finally showed their true colors. This operation of theirs seems pretty big. That bitch, Rotados, wouldn't know one about this trouble yet, would she? Madam, they have a whole squad of Shigata stationed there. Alongside Degenbrecher from Carlin Trade. If trouble reaches them, it probably won't last very long. Yeah, you're probably right. And with Yucatan there, my sister will be safe. Madam, allow me to escort you somewhere safe. I'll go with Sister Yucatan as well. No, I have to stay here and watch them. If things get even more heated here, at least I can stop them for a bit. Look, don't worry, nothing's going to happen to me. Even if I do get fine, found, considering... I'm an envoy between Kerrig and Victoria for multiple cooperative business ventures. I doubt they'll be to have the stones to mess with me. Adam, don't look at me like that. I already told you I'm not the same as I was three years ago. Okay, listen up, Monch. I've got something you need you to do. 
Yes, madam. You need only say the word. That NCO definitely has some sort of contingency plan up his sleeve for those Victorians. Considering how big his commotion, this commotion's grown, I can only suspect that something's gone wrong, and with the deployment of this men... Munch, I need you to investigate things for me. Go check up on what's happening over there, and if you get the chance, making the Silver Ashes owe the Brown Tails a favor would be pretty nice. Understood. I'll get it done. What? Something under my face? Madam, you really have grown. Who asked you? You're a lot younger than me, you know? Stop acting like you're the big sister. Really, you should be treating me like the big sister. Can I really call you sister? <laughs> but we'll discuss this later. Alright, get moving already. Yes, madam. From time to time, Degenbrecker thinks back to ten years ago. Back then, every winter she would accompany Inseodes all across Kerrig. That young man who had just returned to his home country was not yet the deeply experienced person he was now. Still quite underripe, he had to do many things himself, rushing about to and fro. One could say that he was hot-blooded, or one could say that he had ambition. Ambition. Deckenbrecken remembered that in the winter of that year, Enciodes brought all his plans and stratagems that he had devised in Victoria back to Kerrig, where he single-handedly founded Carlin Trade. Of the few people who could be called his confidants, she would have just barely been there within their number, and thus she found herself staying in this cold, snowy land. If you were to ask her why, while she has long gotten used to the bitter chill, she does not actually like cold weather very much. Casimir's winters were cold indeed. Those days she would make her way through many matches of the majors in winter. This made the KGCC very unhappy. But whether or not her opponent was happy was never in her mind. Going back even further, Lithanian's winters too were cold. Was Kerrig's winter not colder than Casimir's or Litha Lithanian's? Degenbrecker stamped her foot onto the icy surface, frost crystals breaking loose under her step. Thinking back to the old times, I remember that year when we had first arrived back into Kerrig from Victoria. We had crossed the Lake Silberna hers as well. <clears throat> Back then, it was because all the roads had been snowed out. With no railroads, recognized shovels, or vehicles specially designed to handle snow, we were barely able to maintain a handful of flat main streets. Under such a heavy snowfall, and with Carlin Trade only barely having started up, goods piled up behind the snowbanks, blocking the road, and the trade routes stagnated. We were on the brink of coming to the complete stop. In the end, it was you who helped Leones gather up the burden beasts, and by using them to carry those goods across Lake Silberna hers, we were able to alleviate the particular crisis. You talk too much, Enciodes. I assumed that you would have shown more solemni sol solemnity <gasps> in light of the ceremony. Come on, make take it as an opportunity to babble about old happenings. My apologies. Some things are simply too unexpected in the moment, and so it is hard not to constantly bring them back to the forefront of one's mind, especially during interesting times such as these. Who would have expected that the great Black Knight to be so proficient at riding a burden beast? And Seodes, what? If you are curious as to why I know how to ride a burden beast, then you need only ask. I learnt it when I was young. In Lithanian? In Lithanian. There is ever the opportunity. I could bring the both of you to do some sightseeing. It's not a very exciting place, so don't expect too much. How is it compared to Kerrig? It's not as good. Kerrig is nowhere near as cold. This is the first time I've ever heard you give such an idealistic assessment. That's enough out of you. Alright, we've arrived. Everyone, please come forward. With Karagander as our witness, the ceremony shall soon begin. Let us pray. It appears that some of our more excitable guests can't wait for their cue. Just who is causing the clamor there? God, I didn't need this pain in the ass right now. Yugaton, why the hell isn't your wife here yet? I just got in contact with her. She says she's nearly here. What do you mean, nearly here? Listen, you get back in touch with her right now and tell her to get here. 
her to go to the moons or something as far away as possible. Just don't come over. What is going on over here? What's we'll all the commotion about? Sir, those Victorians don't look as friendly as they usually do. I saw that they've got some pretty big weapons on of some kind. They look real enough to me. I knew that they were going to stab us in the back. Let them come. It's a good thing I told Palaroche boys to be prepared for this. Hold, Sir Arctos. But Saintus. Saintus, Sir Enciotes. The Victorian troops have broken through our guard and who are maintaining order. They draw near. Send out several squads and prioritize the safety of any commoners about. Yes, Saintus. Harold, my boy, why? They have made their move. It appears that there are several squads of their own lined up to approach us. And at their head is that Viscount. What's the plan? We're a wise in Matterhorn. We haven't received any news from them since last night. They should have been watching the movements of the Victorian army very closely, and an operation of this size would have been prompted to report by now, unless they had no way of sending that report. But we're Victorians, even, even as they bear gifts. Despite my belief that I had managed to establish a strong relationship with Viscount Craig Avon, it appears that we do not have not been able to move his heart from its course. This is no time to stand around licking your wounds, Gerencios. They're already far past the point of pretending to be friendly with us. They are professional Victorian troops. Whether using drone arrays to bombard us or hiding their casters in the crowd, their ruthless eff efficacy is clear. This is still what they consider pressure. They have not begun to use force just yet. And I assume that you have some sort of plan for this? We cannot allow them to disrupt the ceremony. Not only will the Vine Bear Court and the Three Clans suffer a drastic blow to their reputations, they will lose the trust of the people of Kerrig, alongside the respect of those outside its borders. We would be caught in the truly dire straits. Not exactly the easiest task, indeed. You seem sound concerned, Enciotes. We must not allow a true war with the Victoria to begin. We need only wait until the next person, the next distinguished guest arrives. But at the very least, we cannot allow them to get any closer to the statue of Karagander. But they're pretty much here already. I'll go stop them. Now that's that was not the time. Good time for jokes. They've got at least two thousand troops out there. How exactly are you going to fight them alone? It will be easier than me having to handle you after a night out, Gnosis. Like I said, this really isn't a good time to joke around. Who do you think? Out of the many people that he knows, Enciot always calls first. <sighs> You're going to get yourself killed. If you don't want me to be killed, then you should put in some more work, Gnosis. Degenbrecher. I'm sure you're already aware of the risk at hand. I need you to hold them back, at least until we have settled our arrangements here. At this time, Carlin Trade, no, Carrig cannot assist you in the slightest. This is to be the sole work of the Black Knight. Are you able to do it? Heh, <laughs> this wouldn't be the first time. You all wait here. What a badass, what the fuck? It's not good to hold your anger in, Gnosis. The two of you have talked it over already. I'm not one to make a fuss. At least while Degenbrecher holds back those Victorians, I can send out men to find Weez, Wise and Matterhorn, as well as our distinguished guests. If they arrive a bit sooner than expected, things might start to be looking up for us. I'll leave that to you then. News of what happen is happening here will spread fast. I should be bracing myself right about now, so that I can deal with those beasts who saw fit to bear their fangs. Hark, they come. Halt! Everyone, gather up! Get back into formation. Yes, sir. This fog's mighty thick. Strange, have the Sugata not made their move yet? Why are they just watching from all around the sides? Sure, our operation might have caught them with their pants down, but surely they're going to put up some resistance, right? Don't be so quick to dismiss them. The head of the Silver Ash Clan's one wily fellow. Uh, Kerrig can't afford to go to war with Victoria, but us? We could pretty much just take crap to top their holiest of holies. It's a really funny thing, diplom diplomacy. The way things are now, I don't think that they've got any room to play defense at the moment. Well, you won't know until you give them a poke. Let some other men advance for now. It's so if the Saintists or Clan Silver Ash still don't react, then we continue with our original plan and prepare to bombard the statue of Karagander. 
Understood. Huh? Wait. Looks like there's some movement on their side. No, that can't be. They've only got one person over there? It's her, the Black Knight. Of course, it could only be her. Although I had guessed that this sort of thing might happen. Seeing the real deal with your own eyes, it's enough to make a man's heart drum with excitement. A lone woman holding back a thousand soldiers. Wow. This really is right out of one of those night novels. You're joking. There's no one person who's got the strength to resist a whole army. The Zay Zayadins can't. The Silver Lance Pagasi can't. Not even one of the Devil's Royal Courts could. We've seen this sort of thing for ourselves, Harold. I know. Of course I do. You might kill us, but you won't kill any more. But do we really have to pay this price to get what we want? Our army is a machine, consuming an unending amount of fresh meat just so that the it can lurch forward once more. Right now, huh, there's just well, us old boys left. Can't bear the cost of it much longer. You know me, Lisburn. I've always been a bit of a miser. And a miser's heart weeps for every coin lost. As long as they keep bubbling up to the top of my mind, I can hardly sleep soundly at night. We're soldiers. We've got no choice. You're right. It's all for Victoria. Send the order now. All men, prepare for war. I'll take the lead, and I'll bring along my top brass to meet the legendary Black Knight face to face. Yes, sir! Hey, Harold. I'm not going to stop you now, but I've got to ask. How's it feel having to face down the Black Knight that you like so much in the ring? Not great. Reminds me of the one time during my youth when I was getting teased at one of the Duke's parties. I ended up drinking an entire cup's worth of sh straight shots at once. <laughs> A lot of bitterness, a lot of burning, and a lot of retching. <laughs> Enough to make you faint. But I will say that I also felt a bit of excitement. Harold Kragavon looks towards Carrig's endless snowscape. All about him, frost blanketed the icy surface of Lake Silberna hers. Mist gathered in the air, and in the distance, the statue of Karagander loomed, her face fuzzy and indistinct. The chill extending all about her feet made people feel as though they had truly entered the realm of the snow god. The frozen surface of the lake looked as though it was a great shard of rock sugar covered in icing. In this unreal, dreamlike environment, these men wearing their valor on their sleeve stood up like a sore thumb, and across from them, a vague silhouette appeared within the dense fog that lay thick in the air. Their adversary walked forward, step by step, treading atop the ice and snow towards them. It felt as if, with every step, she commanded the strength to stop a thousand men in their tracks. This is as far as you go, and you will go no further. If you wish to watch the ceremony, you may watch from here alongside me. I'd be truly honored to have you accompany Madame Degenbrecker. By all rights, I should accept your kind offer, but... its most trusted partner, her grace is very concerned about Kerrig's development issues and has given me the orders to approach the base of Karagander so as to show our good faith. Concern? Concern armed to the teeth and carrying cannons as if it was a very rare sight indeed. Force of circumstance. I do hope you understand. Lately, there's been a most unlawful force at play. Wantonly moving prohibited materials about Kerrig under the guise of constructing the statue of Karagander. According to our intelligence, the stronghold of this force happens to be exactly under the holy statue of yours. And so, her grace was so concerned about this issue that she commissioned me and my men overnight to investigate. A likely story. It is, in the end, her grace's intent. Who could say that if there truly is a such dangerous power underneath the feet of Karagander's statue, but if the great saintess and Sir Ancios were to meet with unfortunate accidents, It'd be far too late for regrets by then. Nobody would like to see something like that happen, am I right, Madam Degenbrecker? I don't really care what you say. And naturally, what we do here is none of your business. People of Kerrig will handle their own issues. We don't need outsiders to order us about. Ugh. I'm afraid that that's that then. I'm truly sorry it came to this, but this is where I must carry out my duty. Also, please excuse my curiosity, Madam, De Madam Degenbrecker. But well, considering you managed to hold your tongue so well while I jabbered on, you don't plan on causing to delay us, do you? You talk far too much. Huh. Well, when you're at my age, it's hard not to be a bit of a windbag. But as for you, Madam Degenbrecker, 
As I have now learned, you're not the sort of person to indulge in mindless chatter. That is so fucking cool. Hmm. That's why you overly chatty smartasses. That's why I hate overly chatty smartasses. This is so fucking cool. Thought I just heard a noise. The woman says no more, slowly unsheathing her long sword breaker from about her waist. The scraping of metal lets out an ear-piercing shriek, ending with the sound of it burying its point into the ice, a sound that induces a trembling in the men that none are able to stop. To me? It's like, I keep like wanting to go on, sorry. <sighs> sorry about that. <laughs> it's just, this is such a cool picture, I don't know. Since they got the intended message, there's not much more need for words. This manner is more to my tastes. I'll say it again. You will go no further. None may enter. Watch out! She's beating the shit out of these guys. <laughs> Next. Ah! Coffee. Reporting in, sir. With Colonel Harold's support, we brought all our contact current casualties back to safety. However, as things stand for us, we'll still we still don't have a way to strike the enemy where it hurts. Charge! Make use of your arms. The enemy is one soldier. Surround her. But, sir, wouldn't it be better if for us to divert around her? She's an army of one. She's got no hope of holding us all back if we widen the front. You gormless idiot! Was that meant to be a revelation to me? Then why? They didn't give you eyes in your head for nothing. You saw that at what our men <laughs> on Karagander's doorstep were attempting, didn't you? All of them as smart as you. Off to break the perimeter from somewhere else. Compare that to the rest. Are they in this near bad state? True. If they break off, she hits them real hard alone. <laughs> Sir, you're not telling me. Private, I don't know what the hell I could be telling you. Duck! Gah! My hand slipped. Done gossiping? When in hell did you get here? Just now. <laughs> if you were counting on a dozen men there to stop me, then you really weren't ready for me. Monster incarnate. A few dozen will do the trick, then surely a few hundred will. How about over a thousand? You'll learn. In the face of a real army, there is no one army of one. Clench your teeth. What? Keep your mouth shut when I hit you. You don't want to bite your tongue. A better slice of coal <laughs> wind slices through. <laughs> One against two thousand should be a pinnacle of despair. Her golden eyes tell of no such qualms. Stern, and still and steady. She is the predator without dispute. She is the ruler over this battlefield. Light the affairs of what Miss Degenbrecker dare to even begin to scorn her, and you two are an affront to her. You best hope <gasps> your own life is meant as little to you. Steady now, De Madam Dagenbrecher. If my subordinates have cooked up, cocked up talks with you, then it falls to me to apologize in their stead. Oh, you? And how long can you shield them for? Well, <laughs> my, I suggest until I die a soldier's death? <laughs> I'm no match for you, my, <laughs> for your namesakes. Clearly, I've not the horns to lock with you in the fight. Do you recall, Madam Deckermarker, when I asked you about your name? I no longer see any time with the present. Might I be elucidated? You have the guts to stall him with me? <sighs> Two of them might can spare a word in no man's land. It is it is done, you know. It's the done thing. I barely even remember my real name. You can pretend I never had one. Plenty of people in Lithanians ruined streets were without a name or a home. I'd heard tell of your Lithanian birth, but never would imagine that to be your life story. I once read in the dailies of how you pil pilgrimed home there. Oh my god, I keep burping. 
Adulation of the masses, dinners with the upper crust. Throw a trophy at a burden beast and watch them love it too. They don't tell the difference. Don't let it fool you. It's not a place where I names change anything. No one's going to ask you when you're down in the gutter of the wastewater. Yet now your name with such power. Power? Not exactly. It was a sunny day. A Gendarmerie patrol rounded up anyone with no place to go on the corner. One of them was carrying a strange weapon I'd never seen before. No point, no edge. No fine combat technique, no deep method to it. No simpler way to bludgeon. No part was anything to mention. I watched as he took that thing to anybody who tried to resist and caved in their skulls. From that moment on, it's been clear to me what I have. Not a code or a creed or a technique. Nothing that sounds nice out loud. It's violence. So that day, I named myself. I am what I wield. Huh, there's a Minoan school of thought. Minoan school of thought where they hold violence and victory as sisters. The two are inseparably close. They make one another. I'll look at you and I could be convinced. My mouse stopped working. Madam Dagenbrecher, if you're the violence in the flesh like you say, then who exactly is your victory dedicated to? And finally, one last little quibble from me. Though, I do think that it may not be worth much in me asking. That Gender... Gender Mare, eh, who first enlightened you, was victory a sister to him too? I did like his Degenbrechers. Good to use, but broke too fast. Just like you, Kragavon. Your arm's almost gone. Huh. Hush. Hush, hush, Madam Degenbrecher. Spare me the truth. I do happen to be command of my own regiment. A little dignity, if you please. Were the clock turned back 30? No. Tw just 20 years ago, I'd only be too glad to be your opponent. But as it stands, and though I hate to admit it, the reality is all too obvious. I'm one of the old ones now. You don't look it. Haha! <laughs> you think so too? Then <laughs> I take it back. See, I've been telling them all, my mind's as sharp as ever. It's just this blasted prosthetic leg. The socket always stings on rainy days. Less talk. How long until you give up? How long until I give in is hardly important. What matters is, Madam Daggerbrecher, how long until you give? You can try me and see. Is Karagondor gonna reveal herself and protect everyone again or something? Now both sides have made their move. It seems Degenbrecker can still bear out for the moment. Harold is saving his strength and his bombers and casters are all but smelling the roses. You, your wine may not have been wasted after all, Enciodes. What of Weiss and Matterhorn? I've sent a team of Shigata to find them. Given what reports have returned so far, the two were likely taken by surprise. Viscount Craigavon wouldn't place them in mortal danger. That takes sen senility, and he has none. Uh, we can only hope. Our people are en route. Are en route to the station to stand by. We'll send us. They'll send us a word immediately once they intercept. May it be that our guest arrives on time. What of the merchants that have contacted you? They don't be too daring for now. Gnosis, pass the word for, onto the Saintus for me. You can save that step. I'm right here. If you have something to say, say it to me in person, Serenciodes. Saintus, the Silver Ashes are disgraced to have allowed such a spiral of events on ceremony grounds. Once the ceremony is over, I will personally take myself to the Vine Bear Court to apologize to you, Saintus. But for now, I fear the ceremony will have to be postponed for another while. As it should. Your message is loud and clear, Serenciodes. If there is anything I can do, I ask you to continue to come to me directly. And to not exploit my own conscious... Oh, right, I put it in my pocket. I keep, like, fiddling with my own fingers and it hurts, starting to hurt. And not exploit that my own conscious but force me to see you first. Saintus, praise, by, <laughs> praise thy benevolence. But you and the court devotees must be prudent right now. After you res resume resume this <laughs> ceremony yourself, Saintus, this that will suffice to appease the people. Degenbrecker's strength needs no introduction. A promise from her is exceedingly rare, and in the event she makes one, it's never broken. I think we should give her our full confidence. Is your confidence that Degenbrecker can f fight one against a thousand, or is that she has the disregard to die valiantly? In perfect 
service to your schemes. Degenbrecker is ahead confronting the Victorians, and I know her mentality. She holds that, her own reputation aside, the slate with Kerrig can still be wiped clean should anything go wrong. She, wait, did she tell you this herself? She defends Kerrig's dignity as one of her plain, ordinary citizens. Citizens, citizens. Saintus, do you believe that I bluntly ordered her? Provoked her? Even I might say she's changed some. Thus, I've trusted her this once. I've gambled on her. Had I not, you might have... You might have watched the affable ghost count lose his life to a few panicked tourists. We gamble for a best-case scenario. Gamble. I've always considered the success or failure of anything to hinge on one's own grasp, and not entreaties of to gods. Nothing goes unaccounted for. I put all the chips down. I see it through. Win or lose. I've never complained about it. But, Sir Enciodes, unclasp your hands. You've proved yourself. I I ask you pray for Degenbrecker, Great Saintus. He's actually worried for her. Where's Matterhorn? Weiss! Wake up, Weiss! Oh, it's the courier, yeah. Matterhorn? Where are I? Shit! The Victorians are cha changing it up! Their goal can't be that simple! We have to contact the master! G his. Uh, stay still, Wiss. If they manage to. If they even manage to subdue and lock up both you and me, then our squad's people can't even escape either. I've tried, but brute strength, brute strength alone isn't going to free us. It's light outside. It looks like the day is. It's already day. Where are the Victorians? All gone. Unfortunately, they've probably swarmed the ceremonial grounds. Matterhorn, help me out of here. What do you need? I hide a razor in my shoe's upper. If you can just take it out, Matterhorn, and toss me it. Don't be insane! What are you using that razor for? In your position, do you not value your hands? I have to try. The master gave me this mission, and I can't... I couldn't complete it. And if that's forced him into a passive situation, then I... In any case, even if I'm too late and he doesn't need me, I'm still going to redeem what I isn't lost. I have to make up for my disappointment. I suppose you're right. Matterhorn heaves his body around, laying his hands over the curve of Wace's boot. But what follows betrays Wace's hope. He doesn't toss the razor over, but instead pinches the paper-thin tool of murder between his fingers and with great effort strains and slashes the rope over Wace's wrist. With his tenuous grip, the blade slips down between his fingers and cut into the pulp. Vivid red blood trickles down the wrist. Matterhorn! Your hand! It'll be fine. It's just a scratch. You were going to do the same thing, weren't you? You do have a point, Weiss. The master is expecting us. We can't leave him waiting too long. Just give me one moment and I can get this rope cut. Matterhorn. Um. Hmm? Who's there? Oh! It's her! Monch! <laughs> I'm not your enemy. Sorry, you two were having a moment, weren't you? Monch? Didn't you leave Carrick? About that. Well, I'll explain in full later. Madam Sirius sent me out to scout. That's how I found you all tied up in this Victorian camp. Who are the others? I already set them free. Anyway, both of you, get going. The Victorians kicked off a battle at Lake Silbernahurs. We need to be there as soon as possible. Damn it, she can't hold for long. As if I can sit here and look on. You get back here, Arctaz. Do you seriously think that you have the monopoly on righteous anger, Arctaz? We wish we could step in. If your eyes are shot, then try using your brain. Your acting will definitely ruin things. Souping behind others so I can feel sorry for myself runs counter to the Parallel Rouge clan's blood. I can't bear to see this. Bear to see it, you baby. Someone here is having a harder time watching it than you, I guarantee. Ten years that Degum Breckers live in Carrig, hasn't she? Just to be some sacrificial pawn here? If today NCOs can't settle all this, then no amount of achievement, no spoil for Kierig, could ever convince me to lend him an ear again. I'm far from the grand actor the rest of you would be. I cannot be as calm as you, any of you are. And it's a little too... It's too little too late for that. All you and I can do is believe in her. Dagenbrecker, the OP bastard... I wouldn't be arranging treatment for your wounded hands, then. 
Remember, to hide with the gloves. What? Hide it with gloves when the time comes. Also, I imagine the Shigata report lines with your gut. We can't count on Degenbrecher lasting much longer. She's no longer evading. She's acting how she used to in her Kazimir's competition days, only afterwards. Afterwards, as she fled the assassins with you, she amended that habit. Any lack of care by her at that point, and you'd die sooner than she did. Quite. Still, no word from your end? None. My investigators already returned. <sighs> They're sure your guest boarded the train in question to say, Lake Silbrenna hers. If anything, it should have been arrived just as the ceremony would wound down. As it is, I'll still take some time until the train arrives. It'll take some time for the train to arrive. I see. No, sis. Never have I feared any wager. Every step I, I take, that I've ever taken, I've staked it all. This time is no different. I know. I believe myself to be sufficiently prepared. And yet, I find my patience is made of poorer stuff. Thank you for calling me what, telling me what's on your mind. And I know what you want to hear me say. I'll say it for you. If you want to ensure the Black Knight's life, or you don't believe she can last until the end, then give the order now. I can tell you there are still odds of success. The archers and casters at our call are best of the best. Blow up the lake's surface, create confusion, and draw the civilians and soldiers both into Midwinter's icy pocket. And so, it's, the decision lies with you. Whatever you do, I will support it. But whatever you do, you carry the consequences in kind. Those consequences are no simple political game. You might fail to even bear them. That I can determine for you. One quick question. If it were you, then the Great Winter Swim would already be in full swing. Ha. Let's trust in Degenbrecker. Trust she won't fall. Degenbrecker is such a cool character. I always thought she was cool from all the parts that I've read. At some unknown point, the first wound appears on her body. It lies about her shoulder, a slash over her suit, an imperceptible trace of blood drawn. Compared to the kinds of wounds she's used to, this one's not even worth mentioning. Degenbrecker falls, fells the few soldiers about her. Ironically, the subtle sting only sharpens the heady mix of fear her eyes strike into you, it makes her movements that much more steely cold. The second wind wound is brought by an Originium Arts. An average caster means nothing to Degenbrecker, but the numbers advantage mutates the nature of Originium's arts of efficacy. The casters among the troops cast behind their human wall, fire, ice, thunder, burst forth in unison with staggering momentum. Degenbrecker flings her weapons, running one of the caster's soldiers clean through, while she stubbornly approaches through the full length of their arts range and plows straight into the soldier's midst. Midst. That puts an end to the death display. The third wound comes from an artilleryman aim a third ballista volley at her. An opponent armed with to the teeth is no fear of Degenbrecker's, but with limbs less than free the, and ballista pestering her in spades, it does get a little annoying to cope. A shell slips through and lands a scorch mark on her abdomen. Her skin is seared in an instant, but hardly any blood comes. That's good, all things considered. Degenbrecker is under no impression she'll lose. She's just not too sure how she has enough blood to last much longer. The fourth wound, the fifth. She loses track. Counting them as pain. It's not enough. Again! Er, Lisburn! Charles! Withdraw Lisburn into the rear! You staunch his bleeding. I'll be right there with first aid. Yeah, Degan Brecker. <laughs> She's giving out. Now's our chance. Charge! Ha. Huh. As long as I can still move a finger. Ah! I can handle any of you. Madam Degan Brecker. Surely you're reaching your limits, too. If you really meant to fight us out and out, you wouldn't have drawn out this situation in the first place. Fight like this any longer and I fear death will come for somebody. Isn't that exactly the kind of war you Victorians make an art of starting? The only difference here is, your opponent is me alone. Harold, you're a soldier, and I am your enemy. <laughs> and kingly put, Madam Degenbrecker, but I don't believe for a second that you're blind to it. 
Carlin Trade's private operations were ferreted out by the Trilby Ashers, and I don't think the Duke will rest on her laurels about it. That <laughs> is Enciode's problem. This is very last chance they're leaving Master Enciode's. He need only bend an ear to the Duke. He only need part with that sliver of that cake. Be it just 30% of what we proposed, I could still take that back to the Duke and try, for heaven's sake. This was never even a war you needed to win. Oh, stupid. Who do you say who do you say that as? Your window dressing. You're a tourist. You're a burden beast vet. Have you been at leisure for so long you've begun to believe your own lies? No. You've never forgotten who you are. You hate war. Absolutely. You abandoned what real power was in your hands. You took what men of yours synthesized. Sympathized. Sympathized. Not photosynthesis. You left the ma maelstrom far behind and fled to Kierig. To a land where you thought war could never really happen. But you were still a Victorian inside. No. It wasn't even something you had to remind yourself. You might say that. I am a Victorian soldier, madam. That much is ordained, and I might loathe it, and I might flee it, but I can never solely Victoria's interests. Good. I'm the same. Is she the same as the Vic this Victorian? They don't seem very identical. She's Lithuanian born, Casimir's raised, and only then came to Tkarig. They don't need to know her name. All they know is that she's born to fight solo, a victor of the night competitions, the only one to ever win three years running. Turn the clock further back and she's a freak cut off from original arts, a pariah in Lithuanian. Gaining and losing any of those things is a dead simple. Is dead simple. They bore her to death. But now, what she has isn't so easily lost, and she has no plans to lose them. Now, they are the same. This dull chat <coughs> ends here. I feel all too sorry for you, Madam Dagenbrecker. Oh, would that would that we hadn't come to this point? But if you wish it, then I choose to respect it. I must stress at this closing hour that I am, through and through, your fan. The show you made is best seeing each opponent dazzled like nothing else. This and this alone, I ask you to believe. I cannot be lied. Ha. Huh. Noted. It's my honor. Riddled with scars, she raises her dragon breaker, Degenbrecker's once more. Just as she did in her first appearance before them all, Degenbrecker's point stabs into the ice. The mist, constant over Lake Silbernaher's parts. A subdued gargantuan rumble sinks in her enemy's stomachs. There comes the fine sound of ice cracking, and it's deafening. Time to end this. Order to all units! Stop her breaking the ice! Regroup ASAP! Put the black... Put down the Black Knight of Casimir's! Nothing. It's not in here. Oh, and it's not here either. Well, that just leaves... Excuse me, sir, the train is speeding up. If you must wander, then please watch your step. Oh, right, you haven't received your complimentary gift yet, have you? What... What is, I ask, would you like? As compensation for your journey's delay, your purchase is completely free this time. No need. But, sir, it's a free gift. Then I give this gift to you, madam. Uh, but that's not... Take it. Now, excuse me, if I could pass through... Uh, all right. Thank you. Huh. Uh, uh, oh, what in the land? What? My legs are a little wobbly. Bruh. He's got the riz. Now, only the last cabin remains. After all, this time running around, I'm ragged. I could retire. Now, when Lind Lindinium's still you're finding its footing, refinding her its footing, her grace would never let me. What will I find behind this door? 
their Keurig defense hidden until this very moment, very deeper than even their covert transport routes. Whatever it is, it's a shame. It's a shame Silver Ash will never get to meet his... Uh... <laughs> what the fuck? Huh? What's up, Panisco? <laughs> Sorry, we've got no seats left in our cabin. I think you want to try someplace else. Uh, actually, I can just leave. <laughs> what is this? Do you need something, Panisco? I'm not kidding. We're full in here. I mean, you can see. We're bumping shoulders just trying to look around. Yeah, that's why I'm saying I can absolutely just leave and find my own seat. I'm not kidding either. Y you guys seriously don't gotta sit in a cab with me. Don't be like that, Mr. Spokesperson. You and us, we're invited together, aren't we? It was all one letter. And this cabin perfectly amount of room for us all to sit. <laughs> they look after you on the way. And with us around, the safety problem is no problem. Safety's not my problem here. Yeah, no. I don't think it's perfect, it's is the thing. You guys get to sit on the benches and I have to dump my butt on a table. Apologies, excuse me. A spokesperson for what? I see, I understand. I must be dreaming. Casimir's campaign nights and a KGCC representative spokesperson sat in the same private cabin on a railway car. So this is the defense Silver Ash plays. How bold, how well and truly typical of the clan head's style. Your Grace, I can't say that it was for lack of trying, but while duties might call me for, to fight a gaggle of campaign nights at once, I think it's a little out of question. More than a little. I guess your job's not easy either. Ace? Oh. I was like, what the fuck? Stay calm. Just passing through. That uniform. This is quite the surprise party. What is Rhodes Islander doing here? <laughs> You'll have to ask my boss. The two casters lackey. Any questions, Mr. Bellingham? Many happy returns, Doctor. And we have Rhodes Island operator here. It seems the dossiers were right. We still haven't full stock of your company's many faces. Still, that aside for now. No surprise could be more pleasant meeting you here, in all sincerity. I come with open arms this time. After all, I'm not even out. I'm not even out of this disguise, and you recognize me by bit. Rose Island, you, yeesh, doctor, a little help here. You'll see. Oh, who are you? Hmm. So, our stop's coming up. We gotta get the tech packed, doc. Oh, where are you guys? It's Leto. Doctor, maybe we ought to bug the conductor to go a little faster. Hey, it's you. Rhodes Island and Columbia's Rhine Lab. Well, well, well. I see it's no coincidence. You're all here, then. Oh, jeez. I guess someone knows me already. Doc, Mr. Sharp, Leto Bomb. Aren't you gonna introduce this Hatsy guy to me here? What is going on? Char, I'd like to know, would Karen Gonder bless the woman waging such a bloody battle for the statue though she's born from other lands though in Karagander she has oh so little faith <laughs> that's a very easy question Saintus the term Karag simply means one who lives there who adores this land who finds a home in this nation it's no matter whether Karagander recognizes it if a person identifies with it from the bottom of their heart well who can deny that yes no one can deny that. Even she. Not even she herself. She's a, a Kyarig. She already was. Kyar, come with me to meet our visitors. Our Victorian guests have come to partake in the ceremony. At Saintus, I have to make an adequate response. The music's nice. At the very least, I can't go without saying hello. I'd like to stress the danger of this, but very well, Saintus. I mean, come on, they have a, she has a little old god next to her. What, is, what are they going to do to her? Matriarch, Sirius is back. She is? Some nerve being late. Wait, no, I told her to keep out of this. Why didn't she come here? Who's saying I can't come? And I didn't just come. I brought some special guests with me, too. 
Is this let's bring guests timing to you? You make a language out of inane, you silly sister. I am not being silly. Oh, Enciots. Indeed, Madam Sirius is and is deft and wise. I find her admirable. Rotatos. You'd do well to finally raise your opinion of her. What the hell is this, Enciots? Madam Sirius, the guests have arrived safely. Good, bring them all in. I'm out. <laughs> Master, your guests are here already. You're who? These are my guests I invited. You're Madam Sirius of the Browntail Clan? Very pleased to invite us to be a part of the ceremony. Sirius, is this your pleasant surprise? Uh, duh. Let me introduce you all. We have our campaign knight from the Adeptus Sprawildly, the Kazimiers, here to celebrate the erection of our statue to Karagondor. I sent an invitation, especially to the Adeptus. That was not an easy invitation to make. So they're my guest. It's just a coincidence, Madam Sirius. I cannot lodge you enough, load you enough, that, what, that you were able to invite a campaign knight. My guest of honor, meanwhile, would be this fellow. Welcome, Sir Spokesman of the General Chamber of Commerce. Hello to you. I'm taking it you're Mr. Silver Ash? Good. Good to meet ya. Good to meet ya. And hello from my company. Thank you all for the effort of inviting me to Kierig. Fuck! I dropped it again. The scenery here is... The scenery here in Kierig is supremely beautiful. I believe your company and mine will absolutely end the day here with a partnership we both love. Oh, and don't mind me, but I gotta say, I think I saw some mad fight out on the Elverson Lake the whole way here. And kind of uh, familiar too, like one guy, I mean, those combat moves, they bring bells in my head. Oh, sorry. Excuse me if I'm talking too much. It's uh, a holdover from the old job. <laughs> right. I'll be careful not to say too much that doesn't work towards us working together. No, Mr. Mob. I'm in need of your exact talent right now. Come again? You need? Yes. Right now, this is very moment. Please, come with me. I'll have them cast sound amplification arts. May I ask you to loudly proclaim that Carlin Trade and the cor corporations of Casimir's General Chamber of Commerce are about to sign an agreement. The Casimir's Sherig Gerig will become a trusty partner. So we had a plan all along. What's that noise? It's not anyone splashing into the ice water. It's not cries for help. It sounds like someone's loudly saying something and then people are all about her stumble into disarray. That loud voice, but whatever it's saying, she can't tell clearly. Her field of view narrows and dims by a fraction more. The sounds almost turn to fuzz in her ears. She can't feel her own limbs anymore, but she can be sure that she still has a grip on her old companions, her Dagenbreckers, because she knows her body is still acting on reflex, striking down every person that comes near. It's just too loud, too loud. How could someone talk this noisily? Why has the crowd gone? Did someone branch, breach her line of defense already? No. The wild beast's doling eyes of gold suddenly flare a light. As long as she can stand, she will allow absolutely no one past. Brecker, Madam Dagenbrecker, stop fighting! Gah! You've lost too much blood, Madam Dagenbrecker. Come to your senses a little. Ah, ah, ah! So keep flailing at this rate and you'll sink us both into the lake! You were not fighting? No more fighting. No more. Goodness. However much the Duke wants to slap Kierig in the face, we can't be sh showing Casimir's the hand in the process. At least not now. Kept between Victoria and Kierig. One might still call it the Duke's personal Silver Ash grievances, but the moment you bring Casimir's into it too, things become far, far less simple. Are the gourmands of Casimir's already inviting Carlin Trade to the table? With such distance between them, and in such short order? What a talented young individual. And I know the Duke won't approach me for deciding to stay my hand, spiffing excuse. A good half of my men you batted into the lake, Madame Dagenbrecker, was a backbreaker to scoop them out again. If we'd kept going like that, I'd need another pair of arms to treat you all. I'd say you need them as is. <laughs> I take no criticism from anyone still hacking up blood. We're done. 
Well and truly. Okay. NCO has pulled it off. She did what she needed to do. That's all Degan Brecker hears. Now, madam, stop there. The lives we live, they always tend to be out of our hands. I wanted to retire eons ago myself, but I have to keep my own men, my all too often down and out brothers, in mind. With this, it finally ought to be my turn for once, hmm? And in light of the fact that your faithful fans been beaten black and blue, could you give me your autograph? You're still in the mood for that? This card. <laughs> Do tell? The first time I won the major, they wouldn't leave me alone until I agreed to a photo shoot. After that, I never agreed to do another one. They were too boring for me. I see. No wonder the Black Knight's Trump card. What the hell? No wonder the Black Knight's Trumps always come in those same poses, edition after edition. Dagenbrecker accepts the pen Harold holds out to her and writes her name. Dagenbrecker. Take it. You'd better not have anything else for me to sign. Ah, madam, where are you going? Do you need some quick treatment? My first aid's excellent, you know. Dagenbrecker lifts her head to look to the dawn. In the distance, two figures walk, approaching her. She still can't make them out, but she knows who they are. It's like Kiaragander on high is gazing down on her. Someplace as high as the sun. No need. I'm going back. There's people waiting for me. She's being accepted by no, her people. My fortune. Yeah, we're back. Ugh. Uh, I... Is it over? Did we win? Ouch! Good, at least you can still feel your arm. Now get up if you're still alive. Ah! Take it easy, Charles. Enough fooling around. Harold has enough work to do without you adding to it. Get to the lakeside if you can still walk. Patch yourselves up if you can. I need a vol few volunteers to help me carry the ones who can't get up themselves. I'll come with you, Jefferson. Just say it. If you don't want that leg at your fingers anymore, we can, all have, we can have Harold make a new one for you. Gods. Gods wounds. I can't believe everyone's still breathing after all that. What a bloody miracle. <laughs> Guess she really was holding back. Could it be Kiara Gonder's protection? Isn't it... The other way around? A thousand against one, and she's still breathing? Maybe it really is Karagonder's protection. It's not. Karagonder is kind and watchful, but this result is not the result of her power. That no one lost their life is a miracle that we created together. That's what I believe. You're the saintess of Kierg? Your words honor us more than we deserve. What are your instructions? I wouldn't call it instructions, per se. Just an invitation to attend the post-ceremony banquet, as this is as is the place of the host. After, aren't you here in Keurig for the celebr ceremony? I thought exile would be the best case scenario. We're allowed to participate in the banquet? Would you rather be here for the banquet, or admit that you're here to, for military operation and go to prison? Fair. <laughs> uh, go on, be my guest. <laughs> Checkmate. Oh, this is fucking hot! Oh, shit, that's hot! Saintus, everything is ready. The banquet can begin at any time. Thank you, Kiar. Th why thank me? No particular reason. Just wanted to thank you. Kiar is will become a better place, Kiar. There will come a day when people from the outside will know more than just Carl and Trade. See more than just the snow, mountains, and valleys. They will know that there is a country here by the name of Kierig. A respectable country with its own unique culture and customs where its people will live in prosperity. Sounds great. Are you sure you don't need a little help, Enya? Without that, you wouldn't have any rainbows. Kierigander's blessing reaches into the heart with because of how precious it is. We ask Kierigander for a miracle every little thing, then what's left is not religion, but reliance. When you start to take something for granted, that's when you stop respecting it. Okay. Things are fine in the way it is. Let's just hope that Kiragonder doesn't get angry at me for thinking this way. Ha! Don't worry, Enya. Nothing makes a mother happier than to see her child start to walk on its own two feet. That's sweet. Come on, switch to Harold. Enciodes. Okay. I'm done, Mr. Silverash. 
This is my first outdoor speech. Are you sure it's, this is going to work? It was perfect, Mr. Mob. Your voice was filled with passion. No one could have, <laughs> no one could pick a flaw in it. Even though you declined my offer to have someone magnify your voice with Originum Arts, the amplification device that you used to perf use performed above and beyond expectations. Is this your company's new product? This amplifier? No, of course not. It's good, but the market for amplifiers is cornered by a few big companies. There's no place for us there. <laughs> uh, forget I said anything. I've heard about corporate competition in Casimir's. You didn't say anything that I didn't know. So, what is it that you're using? A gift from a friend I met on the train. They probably thought it was just a toy. Who could have thought that it would come in handy when Mr. Silver Ash would made that abrupt request? I see. Mr. Mob, Carlin Trade would very much love for your cooperation. Would very much love for our cooperation to extend beyond this one time. I'll have someone take you around Kerry for the next few days, including tours of the mines and factories. Please accept this as a token of my sincerity. I believe Carrig will not disappoint you. Hey, it's Leto! They stopped. They really stopped. It's like you said. That man in a suit opens his mouth, and both sides stop fighting before long. I thought we were in for a real fight. Didn't Silver Ash tell you guys to get here quick? But it was all over in an instant. Why did the Victorians and the Carrig stop fighting as soon as he arrived? Because he's a spokesman from the Casimir's General Chamber of Commerce. Ooh, is that really important? Oh, wait, I know. The important thing is that he's from Kashmir's, isn't it? Victoria wants to bully Carrig for its own interests, but they have to be careful when it comes to Kashmir's, who's also here for her own interests. I think something like this came up in one of Anna's tests. So, is this why Silver Ash contacted you and Milosis? You're his backup plan? We don't need it now, though. Uh, you're learning. No wonder you're in such a hurry. Stuff like this is a pain. But how did you know that the man in the suit was a spokesperson for... Hmm. For what again? You know him? Uh... His appearance has changed, but his voice hasn't. Appearance. Voice? I guess his voice was pretty unusual. It was really loud. I don't know who how he did it. I can hear him from all the way here. All the way from here. Oh, yeah, Doctor. Did you give him something at the station? A little toy that <laughs> that closure made. Just a little help. Really? Somehow, I can't help but think there's more that meets the eye. Oh, Mulesies. How do you say that? That is such a weird name. Mulesies is chatting with someone. Should we go over? You have people you know here too, don't you, Sharp? I'm working right now. The one who invited me is probably a little too busy right now. Taking in the view here isn't such a bad idea. Uh, sure. I'll stay with you. I don't think that's going to work. There's someone waiting for you there. For me? Who? Oh. Him. <laughs> Are you not going? Well, there really isn't anything I want to say to him. Ah, this sucks. Sorry, Dr. Sh Sharp. Give me a minute. I'll be back soon. I whacked my ankle against something earlier, and it hurts really bad right now. Rosalind. You got something to say? Spit it out. Otherwise, I've got places to be. Wait. I just wanted to make sure that you're safe. I couldn't come find you in the chaos. I'm fine. The Victorians weren't looking for me. Even that Troby Asher guy is no match for Sharpen the Doctor. That bastard's still after you? I don't think so. It didn't look like he was at fear for me. Well, he's lucky he ran away. Sharp and I would have given him a nice little beating. Don't underestimate a Trilby Asher. I don't like their methods either. But the Trilby Ashers are a big deal. Him? Didn't seem like he was anything special. That's because NCO's has Degenbrecher to keep him around. Keep him down. A warrior does never underestimate an enemy, Rosalind. Alright, you done then? I gotta go. Wait. Three, two... R Rosalind! I spent a lot of time thinking about it last night. I was weak back then. The days with your mother were like honey. I couldn't keep myself from thinking about her. I couldn't keep myself away from her from the be very beginning. I dragged you and Tatiana into that mess, but abandoned you when I couldn't handle the pressure. You were right to yell at me, Rosalind. Whatever I say now won't be anything more than an excuse. For more than a decade, my memories has tried to justify it. It whitewashes the memory for a man too weak to face his own weaknesses. 
so that he can continue to feel safe, continue to run away. He lied so much, he even fooled himself. It's my fault. I deserve to be scolded and scorned by you. I can't blame you for being disappointed in me and Kierig. I let you and your mother down. I'm sorry. There's one thing I want to make clear. Momochka never said anything bad about Kierig, or any about my papa. She even taught me how to pray to Kierigander, even though I never really believed in it. Momochka only ever said good things about this place. Tatiana, she doesn't hate Kierig? Why would I lie? I told you, didn't I? She said my papa was a really handsome dude. Of course, I'm having doubts about that now. Hmm? It was before I started with, in with the beard. Tatiana didn't say she liked my face. Wait, why did she tell you all this? Could it be... Could it be that she doesn't blame me? Stop. Don't get too ahead of yourself. Don't count on others people not blaming you if you know you're wrong. But it's exhausting to live with hatred. You under underestimate Momochka. If you thought she would spend a decade hating you and Kierig, you're not worth it. Y you're right. It's not worth it to live in pain for a man like me. It's all for the better. Good. You get it. I didn't know my papa was, and now I do. Who my papa was, and now I do. But that's all there is to it. I don't need recognition from your family. Paul Roche business is none of my business. I'm the daughter of Tatiana. I'm not going to say it. Lorena. <laughs> Oh, what's with these names? Tatya Novna Larina, codename Leto. It was Tatiana who named you. Rosalind rolls more smoothly off the tongue than Paula Roach. What? <laughs> okay, sure. Leto. Not bad, not bad. A nice code name. At least you have taste. Oh, yeah. This is for you. A bank account? Child support for all these years. The amount is in the back. I rounded it down for you. Please make the transfer at your earliest convenience. Ch child support? I said it yesterday, didn't I? Living expenses, tuition, medical bills, emotional damage for a deadbeat dad. It's all there. Gotta go. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, Rosalind, the, the currency conversion might take some time. I'll, I'll find someone to take care of it as soon as possible. Rosalind, please, can I see Tatiana one more time? Just once in your dreams. Is this your will too, Karagonder? The matters of the world are beyond a mere mortal's ability to predict. Master? Why are you standing all the way up front? There's nothing to see in particular. Just passing by. You said you just came, became a grandfather the last time you came to pray, Lucas. Yeah! My son's daughter. Good thing she looks like her mother. <laughs> that foreign woman my son insisted on marrying. From, what's the name? Syracusa. Fierce woman, that. Well, at least the kid got of mine got to take her. Were you against the marriage? What's the point if the young ones are in love? I might have said a word or two in my younger days, but now just let them be. You said you wanted a warding stone for your granddaughter, didn't you? Hoping that some of Kierigander and the Saintess's blessing would rub off, you know? You can have this. This mark. The stone blessed by the Saintess herself? That's too precious for someone like me, Master. Take it. Consider it a welcome gift for your granddaughter that she comes into this world. I'll pray to Kierigander that the children of Kierig can grow up without illness, pain, and so or sorrow. Bye, Kierigander. Bye, Kierigander. This is a good res- Oh! It's gonna be goofy! Good resolution. Woo! That Black Knight is definitely more than just a name. I think she wasn't even trying to kill. A little too much for old, my old bones like mine. Sure, your injuries. Just a scratch. Don't want to miss the Saintess's banquet, after all. It's not every day I get to be called Sir by you, though. I think I just lost my appetite for... It's the Trilby Asher, isn't it? <laughs> my condolences concerning your appetite, my lord. I will report the facts for your performance in Keurig and the changes in the situation to the Duke. Suit yourself. I'm confident that I did nothing to displease her grace. Well, you, Trilby Asher. The waters of Londinium you could muddle, but Kiara gives you a little room to maneuver. No need to worry about me, my lord. I have complete the mission assigned to me by her grace. Oh? Kiara is not worth devoting too much time and effort to, but there are elements that require the Duke's attention. You mean... 
We thought it was Carlin Trade or Keurig's geographical advantages as a natural fortress and commerce hub. Seems like her grace is truly grounded. Her visionary? Are you here to visit the true form of Kiragonder? Of course. Her grace wants to know whether Kiragonder truly exists in Keurig. In times of crisis, will Kiragonder really help our people? Interesting. And your conclusion? I do not recommend that the two confront Keurig militarily at this time. <laughs> Seeing that Casimir corporations that publicly entered into a partnership with Carlin Trade, I also ran into a Colombian scientist on the way here. Force is not the smart plan. Winning is easy. Making money is hard. We're not Ursine. It's not worth it. It's not every day that we agreed on <laughs> with each other. Did you hit your head or something? Like you, I'm a pacifist. Yeah. Just talk like you normally do, please. <laughs> it saves some time and effort, my lord. Yeah. Are you familiar with this little trinket? A burden beast blind box? They're all the rage right now. Why would you buy this? Well, that's not the important. That's not important. Open up and see what's inside. I've got a full set, but I'm missing the limited edition secret version. No one knows what the box holds until it's opened. The mystery is what makes it all alluring. All alluring. <laughs> Alluring, perhaps I shouldn't open it. Well, are you going to open it or not? I'll have it if you're not going to open it. I'll open it. He got the limited edition. Huh? What's this? What did you find? Let me see. Mother of mercy! This is Frozen Crystal Burden Beast! Secret limited edition! What kind of luck is that? I've been opening these boxes since the first day I arrived in Kerrig, and I've never gotten this one. By Sharagander, this is not fair. Kobe Asher, we're both in her graces employ. Do you think you could... I'm afraid not, my lord. I must stay in Carrick for a, a while longer <laughs> after submitting my report. Thanks to you, I just realized that collecting Burden Beast accessories isn't such a bad pastime after all. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, as soon as he said, what is this? I, I had a feeling. Can you stand? Not dead yet. I'll be fine in a few days. Good. Gnosis? He went down first. He says he's footing the bill tonight. He has a lousy taste. Pick for him. Okay. You've been walking around the circles there for ages. You got something to say? Out with it. I'm thinking about my debt to you seems to be keep growing from Casimir's to here. One that I don't want to see a way to repay. You're afraid I'd jump ship? It would be a big loss. You want to repay me? Name your price. Gnosis will find a way. Forget it. All I did was follow an arrogant young man to these bleak, frozen hills ten years ago on a whim. A place where the temperature hovers around freezing on the warmest days. Life here didn't turn out so to be so bad, so I started doing what I could. What does any of that have to do with you, NCOs? I guess you're right. You stayed for the land, not for me. I didn't think I would hear it from your mouth, though. And don't put on that act about owing me. Tell the truth, what are you thinking? I'm thinking there will come a day when people from the outside will know more than just Carlin Trade. See more than just the snow mountains and alley valleys. They'll remember the name Kierig. Don't get too excited. You may have won this round, but at the end of the day, you've just gotten yourself even more tough customers. Should I thank you for bringing Kajimirs back to me? And see how it stays silent for a moment, then picks up a broken piece of ice from the ground and points it at the sun. The ice is dauntingly cold. Dauntingly cold. Dauntingly. What a weird ass word. Cold. But it glitters under the sun, almost glaringly. Yes, Kajimir's has come. Columbia is coming. Things will only get more complicated. You can't eat win every time. Have you ever lost? No. That's too bad. You must never have met an opponent like me. Oh? Come with Gnosis to the Shigata training grounds. I'll take both of you on at the same time. One hand tied behind my back. <laughs> Gnosis is not actually bad with uh, not is actually not bad with the sword. You're in a good mood. It's all done. Three years of perseverance have borne fruit at last. We broke things wide open. Caster is no longer an ex existential crisis threat. But the independence of Kierig is no longer a pipe dream. In other words, you've drawn the attention of both arrogant Victorian nobles and unscrupulous Kashmir's merchants, soon to be joined by scientists with no qualms about moral or ethics. Even more people will hate you for bringing even more chaos to this country. Let them. 
I don't care. All I care is... Excuse me. Are you the Black Knight? Yes. So it's true. The Black Knight is in Kyrgyz. Is it... It's really the Black Knight. This makes it all worth it. And you. You're the president of Carlin Trade, aren't you? I've been a fan of the Black Knight since I was five. Can I get her autograph? That's up to her. Do you want to sign for these young folks, Steckenbrecker? Fine. The campaign knights eagerly call out to their comrades. A little line forms on the ice. It's like one of those many small fan meet and greets on the streets of Kazimir's. The campaign knights give Degenbrecker their cards, and Degenbrecker writes their, her name on them. NCO just chats with the knights every now and then, playing the part of a good host. It is all very natural. No one has the slightest complaint. Eventually, the knight leaves. The knights leave. Satisfied and calm returns to the ice. That's funny. The campaign knights, I know, aren't that excitable. Our partnership with Casimir's has just begun. The Adeptus Casimir's wouldn't have sent real campaign knights. This is just the brown tails spending their own money to invite some use over for a sightseeing trip. And it probably took the Black Knight's name to get them to agree. <laughs> How do you feel? Maybe I'm not. Di I'm no different from the Casimirs that you hated. You're just another chip in my hands. All of it is the same. Be it your identity as a Black Knight, Casimir's exploitation of you, your martial strength, and your value as a soldier. Do you find this unacceptable? Now? I've gotten used to it. <laughs> I want you my cookie a little. We made the flattest cookie ever. <laughs> Whoa! That's so cool. It's so pretty. The artwork is always so beautiful in this. Let's once again welcome our friends from afar. The doors of Kerrig are always open to so those who come in good faith. Let us remember the friendships forged today. Bye, Kerrigander. Bye, Kerrigander. Bye, Kerrigander. Bye, Kerrigander! Thank you for the invitation, Sanctus. Your Ulysses from Rhine Lab? It warms me up that you still remember me. The mountains and rivers of Kerrig that I saw long ago, along the way are awfully pretty. I'm sure we'll have a great partnership. Ryan's lab partners Carl and Trade, Miss Mooselsees. <laughs> but you're the one calling the shots in Kerrig. Building a launch pad of, on Carl and Trade is a big deal. Silver Ash has stressed the need to get the Sanctus' blessing. Blessing. I have heard about this from Serencios. Carlin is the spine and the body of Karagander. I must say I have reservations about such a massive project taking place there. Saintus, Saintus. Excuse me. What is it, Kiar? That launch pad that they're talking about. It sends things into the sky, right? They build it here. Does so it mean that I... Or Karagander will get a few cannons on her body? Cannons. Car, do you think Karagander would object? Object? Why? It sounds so cool. You should say yes. <laughs> oh my god, it's so wholesome now. Lisburn, what happened? Those wounds. It's nothing. Oh, it's her! Freya, yeah! He was in love with her from like earlier in it, and then he would always go down to help her. Was it a farm or was it like a bar? I don't remember. I have something important to tell you. What is it, Lisburn? I, I, I love. I heart snow. The, the knitted words on your clothes look so nice. The snowy mountains are so beautiful on a fine day like this. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. She was disappointed in that one. Ah, uh, damn it all. The Burke ran away from that? I should shoot him for desertion. <laughs> Keep it down, Jack. Did you all peep on me like this? Day back in the day when I proposed to my wife, come now, Harold. This isn't personal. We do this with everyone who proposes. Is Lisburn really going to propose after a fight like that? What does he have to lose after a fight like that? She says yes. He gets to bury his bones here. She says no. He gets closure and returns to Victoria. 
It's going to take him the better part of a year to recover. <laughs> you have a point. You idiots. Why didn't you call me over to help? Are you going to let your brother propose empty-handed? No ring? Fine. But not even a flower? It's all ice and snow here. Where are we going to find a flower? Make an ice flower, then. What do you carry your weapons for? Nothing shows sincerity like a handmade, like handmade stuff. What's well, what the ladies like? Don't you understand? Well, you're in a better position to understand that than any of us. Right, Harold? Ice flower, eh? I'm sure there's someone back home who would be very interested to know. Wait, wait. don't run your mouth in front of my wife. I've never given an ice flower to any woman other than Lily. It was just an example, really. <laughs> Bro, are you cheating? I didn't expect to see you here. It's my job to protect the doctor. Same old story. Came to spar? Care to spar? After you've fully recovered. We can do it after hours. I'm still in Keurig then. Alright. How many people do you have who are better than you? I wouldn't mind making the trip myself if there are enough of them. And then I pulled Degenbrecher. <laughs> use the use the to commentate. You used to commentate the night competitions. No wonder your voice sounded familiar. Maybe I watched the match you were recovering. Thanks for the compliment. Not that I much right. Not that I have much to write home about other than my voice. I didn't expect to see the campaign knights here though. The ones in silver armor. They're so cool. I invited them here. And you too, Rosalind. You're a guest of mine as well. Enjoy the hospitality of Kerrig. I must thank you, Doctor. Thank you for accepting the invitation and your little gift to Mr. Mob. It was quite helpful. You had a plan even without my help, didn't you? Uh, save it. I know you always had a backup plan. I uh, would have involved more effort. Under the circumstances, I'm plenty thankful to just to speed things up by a step. I hope you're happy with our hospitality. Don't you think that you can hook me with an invitation letter next time? Was it you who invited Ryan? Or I thought Rhodes Island was the extent of your manipulation. Uh, let's see this one. Looks like you still remember our game of chess three years ago, Doctor. Our relationship has changed over the last three years. There's no need for this level of caution. You can take part in the credit of the, for the festivities, festive scenes before us. Come, ally. I will be happy to be your guide. Guide. If you would like to see what Keurig is like now. As we could do worse than a shore leave. What? I'll be your guest then, so to speak. One more thing. Next time, if you want me to bring someone... If you want to bring someone with me, just say it. Are you surprised that she didn't come? As an ally, I'm sure you understand what I mean. Clifford is doing fine. It's just that this was on short notice, and she happened to be away from Rhodes Island. If she's busy with her own business, send the invitation earlier next time. I'll do the first one. She'll come back to Carrig next time. She said she'll give you a surprise, the Pearl you. What? Okay, I'll just that one. Glad to hear that. It's a shame that she couldn't come on such <clears throat> an important occasion, but if she continues to climb, then whatever peak she reaches, she'll hear the wind of Carlin trade from the top. That's sweet. Rotatos? You shouldn't be here now. The absence of the head of one of the great houses at the Saintess's banquet will draw unnecessary attention. Sirius will take care of things. If there's anyone who shouldn't be here at this time, it's the CTO of Cardinal Trade. I'm sure the director of Ryan Lab has many things that she wants to discuss with someone on a technical position. NCOs will take care of her needs. We want Ryan's lab technology, and they want Carlin's elevated terrain. But eventually, this is a business deal. That's more of NCO's dis domain. I guess you're right. I'm thinking that NCO's must have a dozen contingency plans for today's incident. He put up a good act of being worried, though. Don't it fool you? Uh, that's the kind of person he is. I'm not surprised. But there's one thing that you're off the mark about, Rotatos. This is the rare occasion that he didn't put up an act. Yes. It's not like him. Not sufficiently profit-driven. Too much risk. Yet the best outcome has achieved by everyone. Where are they at? You hear that, Gnosis? It sounds like metal coming together to form a monster. I've listened to the heavy noise of construction for long enough. Project 1 is near completion, from what I've heard. You heard right. But for all the effort we committed, even building Karagander's statue as a ruse and building the base underneath Lake Silberna hers, 
for all the time we put in, the effort it took to hide it all. One battleship is all we managed to build. Wow. That's crazy. We can't hide it for long. Even if Victoria lets it go this once, the world will eventually figure out what we're doing. That's why we don't need to hide it on purpose. Just try not to draw too much attention. I'm sure you realize why Victoria stopped. We must develop as much as we can now, while all the powers are still working in balance. This is the only way out of for caring. Hope it all goes well as you say. Speaking of which, Rotatos, yes? I heard some rumors. Are you really going to call the Project One ship the Walnut? Heh, <laughs> <laughs> why not? That silly sister of mine came up with an interesting idea this time. She said that when she has her own kids, she'll tell them that the ship is their older brother. <laughs> Cute, isn't it? That's funny. That's crazy. Oh, is this Rhodes Island? Rosalind? I'm sorry I couldn't come with you to Kerrig this time. You took the box to the top of the mountain, didn't you? Momochi- Oh, it's her mom! You can trust me. You went out again. The doctor told you to stay in bed. That's her mom? That's crazy. I didn't know it was going to show her. I guess it makes sense that it did, but still. Just taking a walk isn't fine. All this fuss over one broken bone. I'm getting suffocated. Stuck in a hospital room all day. It's because you weren't careful when fiddling with that jetpack. It was fun, wasn't it? I want to try it again sometime. Did you have the cl the chance to try out rock climbing while you were in Carrig? No, I didn't. You really should. Next time you have a chance. It's fun. I'll take you on an adventure in Sargon. Once my legs healed, Sammy sounds Sammy sounds good too. <laughs> I can't wait. That's crazy. That was so much fun. For me. That was a lot of fun. Um I loved this event. It was wholesome, it was sweet, Doctor, it was serious. You know how busy your schedule it was is today, so yes. So much fun. <sighs> and I reckon it won't be Thank you for watching. I enjoyed this series, this part of the series so much. I'm going to put the lake, or the rights of Lake Silberna hers into its own playlist. So if you ever want to rewatch it, it's all be in the same playlist together, away from the rest of the Ark Knight stuff. And as I do the side stories, I'll probably be doing something similar to that, putting it all in its own playlist, of course. Lakes, the rights to Lake Silberna hers was amazing. That was so much fun. It wasn't super sad, but it was still had its sad parts. It, I don't know. It was just super good. I loved that. And clearly a lot of you guys liked it too. And I'm glad that you also enjoyed it. That's it for this video though. So if you liked it, like and subscribe. I'd love to have you guys around. I'm going to start the side story probably as the next part of the Ark Knight series. Like I said, if you want to join the discord, we have some active members in there now. It's really nice to talk to some people in the community. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And also, it's been very helpful when it comes to learning more about the game. Because you can talk to me directly without having to go through the comments. I also have the Ko-Fi. If you want to support, hop on over. And uh, if not, go over there and just follow. You can check out the thumbnails early for the videos if you just do that. That's it for me though, so you better have a good night. And bye bye